Hi, I would like to invite you to Patreon or to the official website where I upload over 250 chapters of various books, including content not permitted on YouTube, and where most of the updated or completed audiobooks for the latest releases are available. When I arrived at the opening, the crying Itachi was jumping away and Sasuke collapsed onto the ground. I was still far away from them but I could see them as clear as day thanks to marking them on the map. Itachi went away, and I had only a small window of time. I ran to the boy who collapsed to the ground and opened his eyelids. He was collapsed because of the torture and chakra exhaustion. But two blazing red eyes were looking at me back. I quickly removed them from their sockets and placed them into my inventory, before I killed the boy. His name and red bar vanished as he died. So long, Sasuke. When the red dot indicating Sasuke vanished, I left the Uchiha compound as fast as I could. In no time at all, I arrived at the house and slipped into my bed. Holy shit. That did happen, right? Right? My heart was beating like a galloping cubie in my chest. No one saw me. I am sure of it. I planned this for months. Hokage wasn't spying with his jutsu. If he did, he would know Itachi wasn't alone, but he didn't. It meant he wasn't watching. Umbu was also pulled from there, Root might be close, but not too close. They were waiting for it to end to collect their eyes. I did it in time. I don't see any red dots on the map. So no one is targeting me. No one is after me. No one saw me. After reasoning with myself, I calmed down and laid on my back. I opened the inventory and skipped the useless stuff. There at the bottom was a pair of Sharingan, one with two Tomo while the other with one. Sharingan, I type bloodline limit of Uchiha clan. It is regarded as one of the three great dojitsu, the others being the Byakugan and the Rinnegan. While its powers originated from Kagaya Atsutsuki's Rinne Sharingan, its independent form was first manifested by Indra Atsutsuki. The pair has the incarnation of Indra and bestows the ability of Amaterasu on the left eye, Kagetsuchi on the right eye, and Susanu on two. Can be implanted. The fuck? Can be implanted? I looked at the last sentence while the use button was blinking. I absentmindedly brought my finger to press it, but at the last second, I stopped myself. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Hell to the no. Sharingan. I don't need that sick eye. It is a curse that is what it is. I don't want it. No. No universe, no gods, no to everyone. This is the second time I was offered this, but no. I don't fucking want Sharingan. No, 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 no. What is this? asked the formless soul, drifting in the darkness. Where am I? What is this warm feeling? I am, feeling it in my heart, not in my skin. This feeling is beyond physical. This secure feeling, this warm embrace is akin to a hug from a mother. I feel great. Hey, you. A voice jerked me awake. I opened my heavy eyes and looked at the man sitting across from me. He had blonde hair covered with dirt and mud. He was wearing a blue uniform. His eyes were looking at me lovingly. His hands were chained. Finally awake. I tried to turn my head to look around. I saw a carriage pulled by a strong-looking horse. It was easily pulling the carriage carrying six adults and the coachman. Its muscles were defined, and its eyes were red in color. It didn't look from earth at all. I lastly looked at the warm embrace holding me tightly. There I saw a beautiful woman with purple eyes and blue hair. She was looking at me lovingly just as the man did, nay, even more. I felt my heart tighten. I felt fear and helplessness in her eyes, hidden behind the unconditional love. Who are these people? How can they love me so much? I thought as I gazed at my body. Unsurprisingly I was in a baby's body. Wrapped tightly by cloth, and hugged by two fair arms. My mother's arms. There there, baby. Mama will feed you pretty soon. The woman holding me said while looking at the other captives looking at the woman with pity and lust. She unwillingly pulled out one of her milk jugs and covered it with my face. We were trying to cross the border. The man across from me said while hot liquid filled my mouth. I tasted, nice, I guess. 
It was my first time tasting breast milk. Well, obviously not the first time, but it was the first time I was cognizant enough to remember it. Walked right into the shinobi ambush. Same as thieves over there. Damn you, tree huggers. Lands were fine until you came along. Said the man sitting next to my father. Guards were nice and easy. They haven't been worried about you. They talked while I was having a weird sense of deja vu. The conversation to some extent was too familiar to my ears, and the words. Tree huggers. I felt too familiar, but my mind was fuzzy. I couldn't remember where I heard those words before. While I was busy with the vague memories I was trying to hold on to, the carriage stopped at an opening. I couldn't see much because my head was still pressed onto my mother's embrace, but I could still hear some of the conversations. Have you caught them all? Asked an authoritative voice. Yes, sir. We caught them all, answered another. I tried to look but my vision was covered, and I could only see legs and feet. Most were wearing sandals while one of them was holding a cane. We were lined up in a single row. The thief was in first, while my mother and I were in third. Father was just in front of us. There, two men were standing in front of us, one holding a piece of document. His face was covered with a mask that looked like an animal that I couldn't tell, while he was wearing grey clothes. There was a short sword on his back, and on his tight fastened knife holder. Step up, Ichijo Neakane. Man with the list said softly. His voice was void of emotion and cold. Japanese? I thought to myself, as the man in the front row shivered in fright. You are making a mistake. I am not a traitor. I am just a thief. The man shouted in panic and ran away. I am not a traitor. Halt! Shouted the man beside the list holder. But the thief was fast on his legs. He ran away at a fast speed. Put him down. Shouted the authoritative voice once again. With the order, a few waiting at the side removed star-shaped blades and threw them. They arrived at the thief and killed him in a matter of seconds. Anyone else feel like running? Asked the voice, while no one answered. Wait, you there, step forward. Asked the list holder while looking at my mother. Father tried to hide her from his back, but the one next to the list holder pushed him to the ground. Stay. In. The. Line. My mother stepped up while shaking in fear. She was holding me tightly in her embrace and patted my back to assure me everything was fine. But it wasn't. Everything was fucked up. Who is this? He asked as he pointed at me and all of a sudden the world froze. My soul left my body and floated in the air. A silhouette of a grown-up teenager appeared in front of me. He had blonde hair and purple eyes. His skin color was tanned, while his muscles were lean. He looked handsome and slim. Before I could wrap my mind around what was happening, a list appeared on the side of the teen. And a line on top of his face. The line said, race, body, head, face, eyes, brow, mouth, hair the sideline was showing a list of names. Atsutsuki clan Uchiha clan Senju clan Uzumaki clan Hyuga clan Sarutobi clan Aburame clan Inazuka clan Nara clan Yamanaka clan Akimichi clan Kamizuru clan Yatsuki clan Fuma clan Ketsuma clan Shikuta clan Yuroko clan Hashigaki clan. These are. I gasped as I looked around. Finally, I saw the people around. When I looked at the authoritative voice for the first time, a shiver went down my spine. In my soul form, I was scared to death. Danzo. The man had a distinct figure. Wrapped arm with a white cloth. An X-shaped scar on the chin. One covered eye while the other one merciless gray. Holding the cane in his other hand. I am in Naruto world. I looked at the ninjas holding us captive. These are root. What is this interface then? I looked at the obvious menu that appeared in front of the handsome teen. The beginning of Skyrim. This teen must be my future self if I don't make any changes. The race list shows no selected race. Let's select a few then. I thought and thought of the Atsutsuki clan. All of a sudden the teen's figure changed. White hair, a pair of strange horns protruding from the forehead. Eyes were the same but skin was bleach pale and most of the options locked. Can't change my physical appearance when I select this clan. Since Danzo is here, if I want to live, I can't select this clan. 
I moved down to Uzumaki clan. This time, the teen's hair dyed in vibrant red and horns disappeared. The skin color was the same as before I selected the alien race. It looked handsome but there was this weird life force seeping out of the body. I can change the hair color and others but it has the life force of the Uzumaki clan. Danzo wouldn't leave me if I had these features. Might even kill me or worse, enslave me. Uchiha was the same. Hair and eyes turned black, but the fire inside was easy to feel. It didn't mean anyone could feel these, but the game was probably warning me. It was the same for most of the clans. I clicked the last clan on the unexpanded list, Hashigaki, and shark-like features disappeared. My original appearance appeared once again. Blonde hair, purple eyes. No weird energy, no fire, no special eyes, no mutation, and no horns. I would rather live without any bloodline than be a slave of this cyclops. I thought and started to tweak a few things for my appearance. What? I can't select a bloodline, but I sure can select how I am going to look in the future right? I added some muscles, fixed the hair to a cool style. Made it so, I wouldn't grow facial hair and increased the height. Eyes a little bit slanted, straight eyebrows and lips looking handsome. With it, I was done. With it, a column appeared in front of me, asking me my name. What is my name? I thought to myself. I couldn't remember my name from my previous life although I could remember I was reborn in this world. I remembered everything about Naruto and Skyrim, and of course other games and fiction too. But no memory of my previous life. Strange. Kaushin, I entered and it appeared in the column. With it, I returned to my body, and the world, once again, flowed as it was. His name is Kaushin. Please spare my baby. He is innocent. My mother pleaded while my father kowtowed towards the Cyclops. I felt pain in my chest, but I was helpless. Cain hitting the ground reverberated in the opening, and the man approached my mother. Pass him. He ordered as he tore me from my mother's embrace. I shouted profanities but all that came out were cries. Nothing worth nurturing. He said after a while and threw me towards one of the figures at the side. Take him to the orphanage after we are done. Yes, sir. A woman's voice answered. I was held in her embrace while they continued. Kami Hana, Kami Hiro. Step up. List holder ordered. My parents stepped up, hand in hand, and waited guilty of treason. They were taken to the side while looking at me with tears in their eyes. Please take care of my baby. With it, they were stabbed to death while I cried without knowing why. Dropped in an orphanage. How fucking classic. After my parents were killed in front of my eyes, by the man hated by many, the female root agent dropped me in front of the orphanage door and bolted away. Fucking thank you, lady. At least you alerted them so they can come and pick me up on this cold night. Don't know if it feels cold because it really is or I just lost my parents' embrace. Maybe both. I know I was born again, and I have a previous life. I know I had parents in my previous life, but that is it. I don't remember anything about my previous life except the fact I had one and fiction of that world. And the feelings brewing inside of me are real. I know for sure that those who died were my real parents. I know the darkness I was floating in was my mother's womb, and I know they loved me very much. But I don't know why I love them back. Tears fell from my baby face, as someone picked me up. She had brown eyes and grey hair, not natural, aging. Her back was slightly hunched, but her arms were strong. Another little angel. She said with a sigh. Though she was genuine, she looked tired. I can't help but hate people. Or you are just another orphan caused by the devil. Ugh. She hates Naruto. Let's give you a nice bath and a cradle so you can sleep. Fuck. I forgot I can't move on my own, can't even converse. Wait, can't even wipe my own arse. Shit. And clean that bottom of yours, little stinky. She said while moving her hand to clear the air. Sigh. The best I can do is planning at this point. Let's start with the facts I learned. I am in Naruto world. Jutsu, powerful enemies, the constant threat of death. Check. I have a cheat. Not sure how it works, since I can't reach the skills section nor inventory. 
but the opening was the same as Skyrim, so I should be able to access them after some time. Check. I don't feel like sleeping, and it seems I don't need to, nor do I feel hungry, then I should be able to live without both of them, but of course I will do them regularly to avoid any suspicion. Danzo killed my parents for suspecting them of being traitors, thieves, or spies. From his age and attire, I can say it is close to Minato's death. My parents probably escaped after Naruto was born, and the village was ruined by Kyubi. What Matron said supports this idea too. All right, I will kill Danzo for sure. Not soon maybe, but I will kill him for sure. That is not negotiable. If I can cause his death earlier, I will, if not I will grow strong to kill him myself. Wait. I can't kill him in tens of years to come if I do it myself. But I can make others kill him. I have all the information in the world I can use against him. I don't really desire to kill him with my own two hands. Him being dead is more than enough. I should plan that. Until then, I should remember the details. What else? Naruto should be in the orphanage, so I will be friends with him. I pity the boy and it would help me along the way. In three or four years, a Kumo ninja will try to kidnap Hinata. But I will be too weak to interfere with that, and it doesn't end badly. I will let it happen, I simply don't care. In six years, Uchiha Shursue will die. Again, I will be too weak. Please, six years old Kage level. What is this, trash level fanfic? I doubt it. I love Shursue, he is one of my favorite characters in the Naruto series, but I can't stop. The following year, the Uchiha massacre will happen. Again, I don't care. Itachi is an emo boy with a big hammer. Everybody knows what happens when you give too much power to children. I do have some plans in mind for that though. Let's follow that one. From then to the start of the series, it is blank. Or I simply can't remember. Whatever. Oh, let's see. I was bathed and now put in a cradle. It seems cozy enough. Let's try to summon the interface. Sigh, nothing. Imagining myself pressing an imaginary tab button. Nope. Calling out for skills and inventory. Nothing again. Let's just hope it will come out on its own. Last year was, boring. Eating, shitting, and sleeping. Nothing else. Oh, you know what, I don't have to sleep at all. I didn't have to eat either. But guess what, if I don't people go crazy. So, I made sure to sleep every night and eat when other kids did. I couldn't let others know about this ability, under no circumstances. No sir. The movement was minimal, and freedom was non-existent. But hey, at least I could see other kids. One of them being the blonde hated by everyone. Have you ever heard of the story of the five monkeys? If not, let me share it with you. It goes like this. A group of scientists placed five monkeys in a cage, and in the middle, they placed a ladder with bananas on top. Every time a monkey went up the ladder to reach for the bananas, the scientists soaked the rest of the monkeys with cold water. After a while, every time a monkey tried to climb the ladder, the other monkeys would pull it down and beat it up to avoid getting soaked again. Eventually, no monkey dared to go up the ladder, regardless of their desire for the bananas. The scientists then decided to replace one of the monkeys. The first thing the new monkey did was try to climb the ladder, but the other monkeys pulled it down and beat it up. Soon, the new monkey learned not to climb the ladder. The scientists replaced the original monkeys one by one, and each time, the new monkey would try to climb the ladder only to be pulled down and beaten up by the others. Eventually, all the original monkeys were replaced, and none of the new monkeys had ever been soaked with cold water. Despite this, no monkey would climb the ladder for fear of being beaten by the others. They simply followed the established behavior without knowing why it existed in the first place. This was taught fear. It was the same for the kids, who were like the monkeys in the story. When grown-ups hated one of the kids, others would instinctively put distance. It was still okay, Naruto was small and had to be taken care of. Workers and matrons still fed, bathed, and tucked him in. But as he grew up, people would hate him without knowing why, and he would be marginalized without knowing why. Truly sad. I am not the type that would get sad easily but whenever I see this kid, I feel my heart strain. So, I crawled over to play with him. 
workers put me somewhere else. No problem, I went back. I spent most of my time with the little blonde. No one would even question it, after all, we looked similar. Hey Ko, why don't people like us? Naruto asked. His big two years old eyes looked adorable. Feck, how could people hate this little shit? They do like me, Naruto. They hate you. But I don't know why. His eyes got teary when I said that, they're there. I am with you, aren't I? Do you need anyone else? I said while petting him. You are the best. Naruto hugged me. What? People hate him already. Why can't I use it to my advantage? Huh? Don't judge me. As he grew up, Naruto realized the behavior of others. Like the monkeys they are, all the other kids avoided the little blonde like a devil he was. Except me. Of course now they started to stop playing with me too, but small sacrifices. Scale is so outweighed. I mean the main protagonist on one side, and a bunch of nobodies on the other. How hard can it be? Matron was a little helpless at first, but as I grew up, she bluntly forbade me to play with him, but boy did I care. Nope, not at all. She then punished me with chores. Oh man, you can't punish a person with good times. Doing chores considered having a good time. Welp, if you have seen what I've seen, you would agree with me. Miscellaneous increased to one, finally. Fucking finally. I was waiting for this for such a long time. Yay. Now, I know there was no such skill in Skyrim, but it doesn't matter. Finally a reaction. I willed it to open and boy, was it a surprise. Miscellaneous perks, quick hands, allows you to increase your speed when doing miscellaneous tasks. Such as, sweeping, cleaning the dishes, washing clothes, painting the walls, cooking, gardening. Damn. The list was going on endlessly. Anything that wasn't shinobi related was in this skill, and just by acquiring this perk, I could do them all, all, faster. Proficiency, increase mastery over the chores. Allows you to complete them with more ease. Only applies to chores. For example, when sweeping with a broom, mastery over the said item increases, but if you were to use the broom as a weapon, you wouldn't even know how to hold it. Fair enough. Same should be for flame control over cooking and battling while using fire. Alright, not bad. There were a few more perks basically increasing the chance of success, taste of the foods, or durability of items tended by me. But all in all, they were still miscellaneous. It was still a start though. It was the only skill floating in the sky, but it was at least there. Now I know, when I practice other things, their star maps will appear too. Yeah, so Matron couldn't scare me with good times. Chores, I do them willingly. I create trouble so I would be punished. I beg Matron to let me do them. She thought I do them for the extra portion of food they give to who does the chores for the day. I let them think like that. I eat the food they give as a prize like a starved animal to make them think like that, but I just love the sweet, sweet notifications. Well, the things I made to be grounded were borderline pranks. And guess who loved them? Yep, one little blonde loved how I prank others and started to devise pranks of his own. And boy, was he talented when it came to pranks. Let's just say people hated Naruto a lot. When he was grounded, the chores were double than my own, and as a good friend, I would lend a hand to him to finish them quicker. Only to help him, I swear. Times flew away while I was grinding my only skill. In one year, it reached 20 and also earned me a couple of levels. Now, there was a major difference from the game. I couldn't increase health, stamina or magicka, whelp chakra, in this case. But. I could train them. Running around, doing chores was increasing my stamina and with it my chakra. I don't know what is the spiritual part of this, but I guess experiencing life is considered training in health. Can't really complain. I want to stockpile my perk points for now. I will probably need them when I finally awaken other skills. It has been four years since I was brought to the Kanoha Orphanage. Life was mundane among the kids while learning little to nothing without anyone caring for you. Kaushin, are you coming? A little blonde asked while his blue eyes were hiding his nefarious thoughts. Another prank? I asked while sighing. You got it. 
he shouted with excitement and dashed away. He was, of course, the protagonist of the real story, Uzumaki Naruto. I didn't know when he would be kicked out of the orphanage, but it seemed close. The hatred the matron and other workers showed towards Naruto influenced other kids as well. It was getting more and more obvious as we grew up. Besides me and a volunteer worker with black hair, no one else liked this kid. In return, this ball of energy was pranking everyone besides the two of us. The black-haired woman was Uchiha Mikoto, Sasuke and Itachi's mother. She was a good friend of Naruto, and would appear from time to time to spend some time with the kid. Other than that, no visitor ever comes to see the kid. Not the godfather Ero Sen-Nin, not the student of his father, Kakashi and not the most guilty of them all, Hokage Hiruzen. I pulled my face mask covering my face and bandana covering my hair and followed behind the blonde silently. Sneak increased to five, a line appeared in front of my eyes while I was walking in the shadows. Oh yeah, I got other skill trees too. Finally increased to five. Now I can now have the stealth perk. In total, there were 15 skill trees. Namely, Chakra, Genjutsu, Illusion, Summon Jutsu, Conjuration, Ninjutsu, Destruction, Taijutsu, Heavy Light Armor Slash Block, Healing Jutsu, Restoration, Henge, Alteration, Fuen Jutsu, Enchanting, Smithing, Bukajutsu, One Two Handed, Ranged, Sneak, Speech, Alchemy, Miscellaneous. When I first felt my chakra in my groin, what? Should I say Dantian instead? When I felt chakra in my groin, skill trees popped up one after another. I still had no mastery nor access to most of them, but chakra star map which was mainly about chakra control activated. Rest were simple enough to understand too. As of now, I am level 5 thanks to the silly quests or increase in skills I achieved over time. Now, unlike the game, I started with zero mastery over every skill and it sucked balls. But unlike the game, I could increase the perks without using perk points. So what did perk points do? Good question. Perk points would increase my mastery over the said perk instantly. So, stealth, for example, you are 20% harder to detect when sneaking, plus 10% per additional rank, max 60-5, allowed me to hide from prying eyes, and now that I allotted a perk point, I was 20% harder to find. Since I was level 5, I had 5 perk points and I used one of them now, but it didn't mean I had to use all of them to increase, stealth. I could just train it, and increase my proficiency. There were also differences in perks, because, well this was a ninja world. There were techniques and even special eyes to see through walls and stealth so, some of the perks were allowing me to be invisible even from said eyes. For example, the last perk of the sneak skill, Ultimate Ninja, allowed me to be invisible while I was sneaking and even Sharingan, Byakugan, Rinnegan, and other eyes couldn't see me. But to level up sneak to that level would take a long time. Anyways, my biggest increase was in miscellaneous. Since the matron was forcing me to do odd jobs. All the kids did them, but Naruto and I did thrice more. But doing them increased my mastery, so I couldn't really complain. Luckily everything that wasn't about the battle was jammed into one skill tree, and I could gain mastery in all of them together. They weren't really important stuff, but they gave good enough EXP and were the only reason I leveled up so much. Kaushin, we are here, Naruto whispered as we arrived at the boiling unit. The furnace distributing the hot water was here, and Naruto geniusly decided to heat it to the extreme to prank the matron. She was a ninja and could handle a little bit of heat, and all the kids had already had their baths. Naruto pulled out a couple of strange-looking purple balls and showed them to me with a grin. What are those? I asked. These, my friend, are toad oils. Naruto giggled. They are highly combustive and will increase the temperature of the water in seconds. Are you sure about this Naruto? This will end up bad. I said. Though I had a previous life, I couldn't remember it at all. I just knew I had one. And with the memories of fiction in my head, I was a little more experienced than other kids, but I was one too. I kinda knew it would end badly, but I was still eager to see what this prank would do. It is fine, you scaredy cat. Naruto waved his hand and threw the two odd things into the furnace. Let's see how they shun us now. At first, nothing happened and I sighed in relief. Then all of a sudden the furnace started to quake like a mad bull. Oh no. 
I shouted and started to escape. Run Naruto. No, 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 no. Naruto panicked. I hit him on the face and dragged him away. The furnace looked like it was going to explode any second. Finally, Naruto realized this too and we ran away. And we weren't even at the stairs that were climbing to the first level from the basement, the furnace exploded. Shit. Yup. Naruto got expelled. Although there was no solid evidence on who exploded the furnace, Matron was just looking for an excuse to kick the poor kid out of the orphanage. And kick she did. I had come close to being expelled too, but luckily I still had a few plus points that allowed me to escape with only a light punishment. I had always been eager to help with chores, and Matron appreciated my willingness to assist. In truth, I was just honing my skills to level up. Sorry, Naruto. I sighed as we sat near the riverside. I would like to live with you too, but I don't think the amount of allowance would be enough for the two of us. We can always fish here, Naruto said reluctantly. I can't even shop without you. They either overcharge or plain kick me out. That is why I am always here to help you with shopping, but beyond that, I am helpless too. Sorry. What did you say? A voice interrupted us from behind, causing us both to jerk and turn around. There stood an old man with a goatee and plain clothes. I immediately recognized him as soon as my eyes landed on him but hid my shock. Who are you old man? Naruto asked fearfully. I'm just an old man passing by, the man replied, looking furious. Can you tell me why you can't shop on your own? It is as I said. Naruto explained with tears in his eyes, shop owners either refuse to sell me anything or overcharge me. If it wasn't for Kaushin, I would have starved to death long ago. I saw the killing intent manifest in the old man's eyes, but he hid it in a matter of seconds. So this must be young Kaushin, right? Shouldn't you introduce yourself first before asking, old man? I asked, feigning fright. Ho ho ho, you're right. I'm sorry. I was just traveling and hungry. I smelled the delicious fish. Do you mind sharing with me? Hokage laughed as he asked. If you are hungry, Naruto muttered and passed one of the fishes on the fire. But we only have this much, so can't give more. You idiot. You will starve if you give away your food. I punched his head to act as a sensible brother. This was my chance to trick Hokage. Actually kid, I have some say in the village. How about I increase your allowance so you two can live together? Hokage said while munching on fish. For real? Asked Naruto while I secretly grinned. I was expecting this. How can we trust you? I asked. If I leave the orphanage I can never go back. I know this fool would share his food with me and we both would die. I promise you, young Kaushin. Sarutobi smiled like an old grandpa, and I was almost influenced by his aura. Almost. If you say so. I reluctantly said. Yes. Naruto on the other hand was jumping like a monkey. We live together. Yes, yes. Calm down now. I held his shoulder and passed one of the fishes. So you two are friends from the orphanage? Sarutobi asked while I felt his chakra was probing my body. He sighed in disappointment after a while. We have been best friends, brothers ever since. Naruto answered excitedly. No one beside him ever spoke to me. It is good that you two have such a close friendship. I am glad you two can live together. Hokage said after we finished our fish. I am sure you two will help each other. You better believe it old man. Naruto shouted with a smirk. Kaushin is my little bro. Says the one acting like a fool little brother all the time. I sighed as I patted his head. I am. Bigger than you, Naruto shouted in defiance. Only a week, I answered back. Still. Ha ha ha. Hokage laughed heartily. I have to go now. But my promise still stands. Young Kaushin, you move with young Naruto, and tonight, your allowance will be delivered. Thank you, old man. I bowed while he vanished. Naruto never said his name but the old man knew it. Naruto was too stupid to notice, and I shouldn't be smart enough to notice it. So, I let it slide this time, old goat. Let's go home, Naruto. 
I smiled. Finally, I achieved one of my goals. We moved my stuff from the orphanage to Naruto's house for the rest of the evening. I didn't have much to carry anyway. When I entered his apartment, I was staggered. It was no different than a dumpster. Naruto, you idiot. I punched him in the head once again. This fool hasn't cleaned his house for a week now. What? He asked in surprise. How can you live in this dumpster? I asked in anger. It is not that bad. He said, while lazily sat on the couch. Cleaning. Now. But I have nothing to clean the house. I can't buy them. He said with tears. Why didn't you say so earlier, idiot? I patted his head and left the house. I arrived at the store selling cleaning supplies and sneaked into the back of the shop. All of a sudden the shadows swallowed my presence and my color faded. The store wasn't crowded and there was a customer at the cash register. I took a look at the items. Unlike the game, I could see the details without taking them into my inventory. When I looked carefully, I could see the name and the details of the item appeared in front of me. Common mop weight, zero, value, 30, of course items with extra ability would be shown as well. But a simple mop only showed weight and the value. I grabbed mops, washing agents, and some other stuff and threw them at my inventory. Oh yeah, I had one. Grabbing a soap bar I walked to the cashier. The owner looked at me suspiciously while I looked back with puppy eyes. After five seconds of gazing, he smiled and asked for the money. I paid and left the shop with a smirk. I wasn't feeling guilty at all. This man kicked Naruto out several times while we were in charge of buying stuff for the orphanage. Sneak increased to 6, speech increased to 25, I haggled with a shop owner about the price of meat. I didn't have much and in the end, I convinced him. It gained me a speech point. I arrived at the house and forced Naruto to clean the mess, while I went back to the market to steal ingredients to cook dinner. Fish were small, and could hardly fill our growing bodies. I returned with vegetables and meat and started to cook. Where is ramen? Naruto asked in shock after he was done with the cleaning. He was so surprised to see there was something else on the cooker. As if, only ramen could be cooked in his house. The sheer disbelief on his face was, inspirational. You can't eat ramen every day, Naruto. You should eat vegetables and meat too. I told him. Man, this sucks. He threw his hand around and sat with a pout. What is your dream, Naruto? I asked with a sigh. To become Hokage of course. He said excitedly. And what is Hokage? I asked again. Strongest shinobi in the village, of course. And do you expect to be strong by just eating ramen? I asked. Yes. He said unsure, no. Of course not. You should eat vegetables and lots of meat. Come on eat now, tomorrow we can prank the shop owner. Yes. You are the best Ko. I know, I know. Ko, why do people hate me so much? Naruto asked once again. Usually whenever he asked this question, I would tell him I didn't know, but this time it was different. Naruto, I can answer this question but not before you are certain. I answered as I pulled out a can from my backpack. It was filled with worms we used for fishing. Hold on to this, and when you are ready to learn for certain, open it and I shall tell you. Why can't you tell now? He asked. Because you are not ready for it. I sighed. I knew he wanted to know, I wanted him to know. But it would only cause more problems since he was still young. Okay, I will hold on to this. Unbeknownst to Naruto, an ANBU was sweating profusely, for the possibility of me blurting out the truth, but he sighed in relief when I didn't. But he left to inform Hokage about it. Kaushin Kuen, take a seat. Old Goat summoned me to his office when I was walking in the street. Sandim Sama. I greeted. No need to be so formal. You are basically Naruto's brother. That makes you my grandson as well. You can call me grandpa if you want. Thank you, Hokage-sama. I respectfully answered. He exhaled the smoke and dropped down the pipe in his hand. Do you know why I called you here? No idea. I answered without any expression on my face. You told Naruto that when he is ready you will tell him why people are hating him. 
He looked at me with sharp eyes and continued. Do you know why? QB. I answered with one word only. His eyes opened widely as he looked at me. How do you know? He asked, with anger. I didn't. I smirked. He looked shocked then angry again. Before he could lash out I explained. I heard people are calling him the Demon Fox, Demon and similar names. Go on. Hokage ordered. I was just suspecting that people hated him because of Kyuubi, but I didn't know how all of that was related to Naruto. I thought it might be because his parents were somehow related, but you and some of the Jounin are not hating Naruto, so it had to be something else. But when I saw your reaction I realized that it is related to Kyuubi and Naruto, so there are two options left. Either Naruto is an incarnation of Demon Fox which is not possible. Although extremely stupid, Naruto is incapable of evil. That only leaves one option. Naruto is carrying the Demon Fox. Don't know how yet. Speech increased to 30, Hokage looked at me in disbelief. He didn't know if a child of my age could come up with this outcome or could deduce to such a conclusion, but he didn't have anything to refute my claims. Not like my words were too complicated, nor were they something confidential. Most of the village already knew it, it was just forbidden to share. Which was extremely stupid. Will you tell Naruto? He asked after a while. When he is ready, I will. I nodded. I sat in the corner of the couch, staring at the skill trees and perks in my system. I hadn't activated any of them yet, but I was eager to see what kind of abilities I could unlock. Leaf concentrating exercise and tree walking are not that hard. Perks require a crazy high number of perk points, and I still don't know if there is a way to acquire them besides leveling up. If not, then this shitty system will only allow me to choose a path and focus on that one. Why cruel fate, why? What have I been reincarnated to become? Some worthless side character with one mastery only? Even without a cheat system Naruto and Sasuke became gods of shinobi. Madara and Hashirama even more so. Yup, whatever you may think, I am not taking it back. Madara was better than Sasuke and Hashirama was better than Naruto, period. Let's see here. I mumbled to myself, scrolling through the various trees. Chakra control. Speedy hand. Novice illusionist. Novice shinobi. Elemental affinity. Iron muscles. Curing hand. Who am I? Perfect calligraphy. Arms man. Aim. Stealth. Backstab. Summoning. Fuinjutsu. Shuriken Jutsu. Speech. Alchemy. Nature Chakra. I whistled, impressed by the sheer amount of options. Damn, this is just like the game but adapted to the Naruto world. Interesting, really. I gotta start prioritizing which ones to unlock first though. Can't just go willy-nilly with this shit. I tapped my chin, deep in thought. Well, obviously I gotta get my chakra control up. That's like the foundation of everything, right? But instead of using perk points from the get-go, I should focus on training it by myself at first to see if I can acquire these perks without using perk points. If I can, that would be extremely delightful. And then I gotta work on my elemental affinity. Can't be a weak-ass shinobi without an element. Who am I, Irika? Sakura. Niji. Ten Ten. Wow, lots of shitty characters in this world. I scrolled further down, eyeing the Bukajutsu and Shurikenjutsu trees. Ooh, now we're talking. I gotta get some sick weapon skills. Maybe I'll specialize in Shuriken, be like Itachi. Hey, he may be a fool but he is a fool with insane Shuriken skills. Yeah, that sounds badass. I glanced over at Naruto, who was napping in a nearby corner. Hey, do you think I can charm Tsunade if I focus on improving my skills? Gotta be able to talk my way out of trouble, you know. Naruto snorted in his sleep, causing me to chuckle. Who is Tsunade? Ramen chef. She is a beauty but a bit old. I chuckled as I shook my head. I continued scrolling, my eyes widening at some of the more unique trees. Summoning. Fuinjutsu. Alchemy. Holy shit, these perks require lots of perk points. Maybe I'll save those for later. Oh, oh. 
What is this? Fuinjutsu perks are amazing. The perfect calligraphy perk will let me make intricate seals with ease. And with disenchant, holy shit, that's amazing. It allows me to disenchant seals and learn them. Although it is fucking expensive as hell, it is worth it. I can disenchant flying thunder and learn it. I need to increase this perk 5 times, to max, to be able to disenchant an SS rank seal, which will cost me about 200 perk points, but still. Amazing. I scratched my head, feeling overwhelmed by the choices. Man, this takes longer than Naruto picking his favorite ramen. But I'll figure it out. Gotta make sure I don't waste any of those precious perk points. Under the Bokujutsu skill tree, I noticed the perk, Sword Saint. Nope. No. Hell no. What is this? A shitty wuxia novel. I don't want to master the sword. Swords are lame. I wanna fire jutsu from afar to incinerate my enemies to ashes. Thank you very much. Oh. Skill tree adapted to my wishes. Of course, there are tens of different weapons I can use in this world unlike the game and all have different styles. If the skill tree focused on all of them, it wouldn't make sense. I exclaimed as the tree changed itself into a staff. No staff. I reprimanded the interface, bad system. You are a bad system. Do I look like a monkey to you? No bow. Nope. No spear. Come on. Oh, what is this? Gauntlet? That seems interesting. If I combine this with Taijutsu perks, I can get a double result. Yep, let's keep it like this for now. I smiled at the fist-shaped sky. Fist of iron, your gauntlets are so strong that they can shatter rocks and even break through metal with ease. Enemies that block your attacks with their own weapons will quickly find themselves disarmed. Perk points. Quick draw, you can draw and strike with your gauntlets at lightning speeds, catching enemies off guard and leaving them no time to react. Perk points. God damn it. What the hell is this? How can I spend 40 levels worth of perk points for two perks? Even if there is no upper level cap, it would still be impossible for me to activate them all. Flash step, you can use your gauntlets to propel yourself forward in a quick burst of speed, allowing you to dodge enemy attacks or close the distance between yourself and your target. Perk points. And what is this? Am I in Katikyo Hitman Reborn or Naruto World? Huh. I know they are strong, but how am I going to get so many perk points? There has to be some other way. There must be. Damn. Moving on to the Shuriken Jutsu skill tree, I see Sharpshooter and Boomerang Shuriken, both of which would be incredibly useful for a ninja who specializes in ranged combat. I may activate this in the future. They sound interesting. Under the Sneak skill tree, I find Silent Movement and Vanish, which would be great for sneaking around undetected. Although sneak may not be valuable in the future due to special eyes popping out like damn mushrooms. I need to test it. Man, I wish I had more perk points. I want to unlock all of these perks. But I guess I'll have to prioritize which ones to get first. Maybe I should start with chakra control, because that's the foundation of all jutsu. And then maybe I can work on my taijutsu and genjutsu skills. But hey, there's no rush. I'm only 5 years old, after all. I have my whole life ahead of me to become a badass ninja. I yawned, feeling my eyes droop. Guess I'll take a nap. I'll figure out my skill trees later. Just gotta make sure I don't use up all my perk points on stupid things. I curled up in the corner of the couch, my eyes closing as I tried to sleep. In the next second, I found myself in a bizarre Naruto-themed amusement park, with endless perk points raining from the sky like confetti. I was ecstatic. I collected as many as I could, activating every single perk I'd ever dreamed of having. I transformed into the ultimate god of shinobi, sporting an outrageous neon outfit with a custom-made headband that read, Shinobi Supreme. As I strutted through the park, I encountered various characters from the series, all of them in hilarious situations. I saw Kakashi trying to read his favorite romance novel while riding a merry-go-round with lightning blazing sword in his hand, and Jiraiya dressed as a giant toad holding Sai's hand, taking pictures with excited fans. I even stumbled upon Orochimaru, who was managing a cotton candy stand, 
hissing and offering his snake-infused cotton candy to wary customers. What was weird about him was, his hair was orange. Hinata was trotting around riding the giant Kurama, but strangely white in color. Shikamaru and Choji were running around, while Ino was chasing them, riding a giant bear, and Shino was flying in the air with wings that looked like coming from his back. I couldn't help but laugh at the absurdity of it all, feeling invincible with my new powers. That is, until I suddenly found myself face to face with Naruto, clad in a dazzling white Susanoo. He challenged me to a duel, and despite my over-the-top abilities, I was no match for his overwhelming power. With one final blow from Naruto's white Susanoo fist, I was sent flying through the air, crashing back down to earth with a painful thud. Just as I was about to admit defeat, I woke up with a start, my laughter turning into a groan. Rubbing my sore body, I looked around and realized it was all just a dream. My endless perk points, and my flashy ninja outfit were all gone. To make matters worse, I found Naruto standing on top of me, shaking me awake. Hey, you were laughing in your sleep, he exclaimed, clearly amused. You must have had a pretty funny dream, huh? I grumbled in response, still disappointed that my ultimate shinobi powers had vanished with the dream. But deep down, I couldn't help but chuckle at the memory of my bizarre and humorous adventure. At least I had one hell of a story to tell. It was the first day of the academy, and I walked alongside Naruto towards the building. I looked around and observed my surroundings, taking in the sight of the other kids walking around in their little cute ninja outfits, how pathetically adorable. I had been waiting for this day for a while now, after all, this was the start of many things. Naruto looked up at me with a big grin on his face, Ko, I can't wait to become a ninja. I smiled down at him, ruffling his hair, me too, Naruto. We're gonna be the best. It was the first day of the academy, and the students were buzzing with excitement. They had all been looking forward to this day for as long as they could remember, eager to take their first steps towards becoming ninja. As the clock struck nine, the door to the classroom opened, and a man with spiky hair and a forehead protector entered. Good morning, class, he said, his voice firm but friendly. My name is Nagain Yugai, and I'll be your instructor for the next few years if nothing goes wrong. He scanned the room, taking note of the eager faces before him. Before we begin, let's all take a moment to introduce ourselves. I'll start. Yugai took a deep breath before continuing. My biggest dislike is people who give up too easily, and my dream is to see all of you become great ninjas one day. We students listened intently, each of us waiting our turn to speak. First up were some of the unimportant characters that wouldn't matter in a few years. There was a couple from the orphanage where me and Naruto used to live but both sides ignored each other conveniently. They didn't like Naruto, and of course by proxy me, and I didn't like them. After that was Sasuke, the brooding and serious member of the class. He introduced himself succinctly, stating only his name and his dream being great ninja, bringing honor to his clan, how he simped his brother and everything. Next was Naruto, the hyperactive and boisterous ball of sunshine. He announced his name with a loud shout and declared that his dream was to become the Hokage. Unlike in the original series, he was a lot more decorous. He wouldn't jump at every opportunity to embarrass himself, but his dream hadn't changed, fortunately neither did his positive outlook in life. Sakura, the pinket and confident member of the class, introduced herself with a smile. She revealed her love of fashion and her dream of becoming a powerful kunoichi, and gazed at certain someone from time to time. Ino, the bubbly and outgoing girl in the class, gushed about her love of shopping and her dream of becoming a ninja like her father. What drew my attention was, he wasn't simping over Sasuke, nor was she fighting with Sakura over emo dude. Choji, the chubby and food-loving boy in the class, proudly declared his love of eating in his dream of becoming a great ninja like his father and grandfather. Shikamaru, the lazy but intelligent member of the class, spoke in a bored tone about his love of strategy in his dream of living a peaceful life without too much effort. Shino, the quiet and mysterious boy in the class, spoke softly about his love of bugs and his dream of becoming a great ninja like his father. Shino is such a badass even when he is five. I really like this dude. Kiba, the energetic and hot-headed boy in the class, declared his love of dogs and his dream of becoming a strong ninja like his mother. He wants to be an alpha. Tough shit dog ass. Hinata, the shy and gentle girl in the class, 
spoke in a soft voice about her love of drawing and her dream of becoming a ninja who could protect her loved ones. Finally, it was my turn. I stood up, my eyes shining with determination. My name is Kaushin, I said confidently while beaming a smile. I like training and hanging out with Naruto. I dislike evil characters with sad backgrounds, and my dream is to be the best version of myself so I wouldn't fail myself. My famous quote is, evil characters cannot have a sad past. You guys smiled at me, whose quote is it? A wise man. I declared. The class was now fully introduced, and you guys began the first lesson. I sat down next to Naruto, and we both looked at the chalkboard in front of us. Yugai cleared his throat and began his lesson, today, we will be learning the basic principles of chakra theory. I listened attentively, already knowing most of the material from the knowledge stored in my mind, but I didn't want to be arrogant and show off. Instead, I helped Naruto understand the concepts better, answering his questions and explaining things in a way that he would understand. As the day went on, I found himself enjoying the academy more than I thought he would. I made friends with some of my classmates. Though, they were still a little apprehensive when it came to Naruto. After all, they had seen him in the park before, and most parents took their kids away from the little blonde. First day came and went like the wind, and it was kind of fun. I don't know. I guess I miss being in a school environment. Did I die when I was a student? Nah, if I was, I wouldn't miss school, unless it was summer. You miss school in the summer, right? As I walked into the classroom on the second day of the academy, I felt a sense of excitement and anticipation. I wanted to interact with others more. It was fun. Naruto was a tad earlier today for some reason, so when I entered, I started to look around. But as I made my way to my seat, I felt a sudden jolt as Naruto accidentally bumped into me. Before I could even react, Sakura was on her feet, her eyes flashing with anger. She was about to hit Naruto's head, but I quickly stepped in, blocking her path. What do you think you're doing? I asked, my voice stern and unyielding. Sakura glared at me, her fists clenched at her sides. Who do you think you are, stopping me like that, she hissed. Naruto bumped into me, and he deserves to be punished. Now, I always try to be objective. This wasn't a novel, manga or anime. These people were real, and they were alive. The key word is try though, there are some things I did and will do to make things easier for myself, sadly, approaching Sakura and trying to like her is not one of them. No scratch that, not sadly. Fortunately. I don't like her. I hate her guts. There. Ever since we were small, this little piece of shit acted like the Kanoha was her father's. In the park, she would terrorize Naruto over nothing. She and her clique that she called the fan club would gang up on anyone standing in their way. I usually didn't pick a fight with toddlers but now it was different. I could feel my blood boiling as Sakura's arrogance and entitlement hit me like a wave. Who was she to decide what punishment Naruto deserved? And how dare she think that she had the right to hit him in the first place? I stood my ground, my eyes fixed on Sakura's. Beat it forehead or I will draw your family history of yours there. It will fit, I am sure of it, not because your forehead is massive but because your family history is shorter than you, I said with a smirk. Just because he bumped into you doesn't mean you have the right to punch him. This is my first and last warning. If you try to hit either me or one of my friends, I will punish you so badly, you will not be able to cry Sasuke's name. Sakura's face twisted in anger and shame, and I could see the hatred burning in her eyes. She was so used to being one of the cool girls in the classroom, and the head of Sasuke fan club. How dare two unimportant characters argue with her? She was about to retort when a few girls started giggling and whispered to each other. She suddenly felt apprehensive. True, she was the head of Sasuke fan club, but it wasn't the only club in their age group. She could pick a fight against Naruto but not everyone. But she still wanted to get her way with Naruto. Fine, whatever, she huffed, her arms crossed over her chest. But don't think I'm going to let this go, Naruto. You'll get what's coming to you. I could feel the tension in the air as Sakura stormed back to her seat, and I knew that this was the end of it. She was just trying to claim some of her pride points, as if I cared. Little bitch. Jen and you started the academy to become a full-fledged shinobi. Your path is dangerous. 
you should pass through the fire and swim through hell. But when you do, a new dungeon will appear for you. Finish with the highest score to be on the same team as your brother dash, optional, learn an elemental jutsu those taught in the academy dash, optional, learn two other mandatory branches, fuin jutsu, healing jutsu, dash, optional, steal the bells dash, optional, impress your jounin sensei I walked into the classroom with Naruto, scanning the room for any familiar faces. Most of the students were already seated, chatting with their friends, while others were still trickling in. My eyes landed on two boys sitting at the back, one with a lazy look on his face, and the other with his hand buried in a bag of chips. Shikamaru Nara and Choji Akimichi. I made my way over to them, a small smile playing on my lips. Hey, Lazybones, I greeted Shikamaru. You ready to learn about some sweet ninja moves today? Shikamaru let out a low groan, clearly not amused by my antics. Can't we just sleep through class like usual, he complained. I chuckled. Sorry, bud. Looks like we're stuck here for now. I turned to Choji and gave him a nod. What's up, big bones? Choji's face lit up at the nickname. Hey, Kaushin. Want some chips, he offered, holding out the bag to me. I grinned and took a handful. Ah, uh, thanks, man. You're always looking out for me. We chatted for a few more minutes, making small talk about how scary their mothers were, before Yugai entered. Yugai entered the classroom, effectively ending our conversation. I turned my attention to the front of the room as he began his lecture. It was a typical introduction to the basics of chakra control, but I found myself nodding along with Yugai's words. I'd already learned this stuff from the anime, but it was interesting to hear it again in a different context. As I listened, I couldn't help but notice Choji's stomach growling. I smirked and leaned over to him. Hey, Choji. You might want to grab a snack before class next time. I don't think I've heard a stomach growl that loud before. Choji turned red and Shikamaru rolled his eyes, but I could see the corners of his mouth twitching slightly. Yugai noticed the commotion and gave us a stern look, which we quickly responded to by focusing back on the lesson. Despite my casual demeanor, I was actually enjoying the lesson. Yugai was a good teacher and I appreciated his enthusiasm for the subject. It was refreshing to see someone who cared about what they were teaching, rather than just going through the motions. As the lecture came to a close, I stretched my arms and let out a small yawn. Well, that was informative. Let's go outside for practicals, Shikamaru's favorites. Huh, Shikamaru dryly laughed, already packing up his things. Choji giggled to himself, still slightly embarrassed about his growling stomach. I grinned to myself as I gathered my own things and headed out of the classroom with Naruto. Mizuki was waiting outside for a practical lesson, and he, being he, was targeting one poor blonde in our class. Ino, nah, she is rich. Me, I am handsome and everyone knows handsome people cannot be poor. Of course it was ugly and orphan Naruto, poor bastard. I want you two to go into the forest in pairs, and gather this type of plant. Mizuki showed a drawing of a plant commonly used in hospitals for burn injuries. Ha! Greedy bastard wanted us to collect plants for his profit, as if I would let him. Is this part of the class or a mission from the village, sensei? I asked, much to his displeasure. It is part of the class of course. Mizuki said with a red face. Good then. I smiled and he too copied my smile but in the next second, I yelled, everyone, I will buy the plants you bring. Each stock is 100 Ryo. Really? Sakura exclaimed in shock, but held her mouth in the next. Yup. I will pay cash, so the more you gather, the more you will earn. Of course, Sensei will also give you extra notes due to your success, so win-win. I smiled. Others looked fired up while Mizuki looked at me with bloodthirst. Ha, noob. Kaushin, you are with Naruto, this is your area he said in rage. I took the map from him and realized what was going on. The area he marked was infested with small animals. Small but territorial. They were a variation of raccoons called kanuki. These little critters resembled a raccoon, but with a bushier tail and a larger size. They roamed the dense foliage and were known for their pranks and hijinks. The kanuki were notorious for causing mild damages to nearby villages, such as stealing food and ruining crops. 
They were quite the nuisance, but they were not lethal creatures. Despite their annoying nature, the Kanuki were also fiercely territorial. They marked their territory with powerful scents that warned any intruders to stay away. If any outsider dared to cross their boundaries, they would face the wrath of the Kanuki. Their attacks were quick and ferocious, but not deadly. They used their sharp claws and teeth to scare off any would-be invaders. Kanuki have a natural affinity for chakra, and they can manipulate their chakra to enhance their agility and speed, allowing them to easily climb trees and evade capture. They are also highly skilled at using their sharp claws to shred through fabric and other materials, making them a nuisance to villagers who have to constantly repair their damaged clothing and belongings. The villagers of the nearby villages knew to avoid the areas where the Kanuki lived. They knew not to venture too close to the edges of the forest, or they would face the consequences. However, there were always a few foolish travelers who thought they could outsmart the Kanuki. These travelers often found themselves with torn clothes and a few scratches and bites, but they were lucky to escape with their lives. The Kanuki were not to be underestimated, as they were a force to be reckoned with in their own right. They may have been a nuisance to the villagers, but they were also fiercely protective of their homes and their way of life. They lived in harmony with the forest, and they would do whatever it takes to defend it. Now, why did the villages keep the Kanuki just outside of their borders? Three reasons, they were nothing to train shinobi. No different from bunnies. They would still attack, but shinobi could escape without any trouble. Second, Kanuki had innate sensory abilities, and most villages used them as free workers. Due to their territorial nature, villages allowed them to live close to borders, so when others wanted to sneak in, they would have to pass through the areas Kanuki lived, and by placing a few clever seals, the border team could detect Kanuki and get notified if anyone was wandering around those areas. The third reason, Kanuki urine, which they used to mark their territories was a fertilizer for plants Mizuki wanted them to search for. Better than best in the market. Combining all of these together made Kanuki annoyingly valuable rodents that villages didn't want to get rid of. But as I said, they were nothing to train shinobi, but to a student. Oh, let's just say, Naruto would be injured all over if he were to venture there alone. So you want to play this way, huh, Mizuki? Where are we going, Ko? Naruto asked innocently, with his big blue eyes. We need to buy some stuff first, follow me. I said and walked further from the academy. Mizuki gave us two hours and Naruto was anxious to get back to his area for the task. Now that we were going to the village, he was even more depressed. But he had full trust in me, so he still followed. Yo, kid. Are you up for a task again? A woman said as we reached an alley. The woman was wearing skimpy clothes that hardly covered her assets, and behind her was a business vendor that did some shady things involving lots of screaming and red lights. But in the daytime, she was working as a healer with her meager amount of knowledge about healing jutsu and alchemy. I met with her not long ago while looking for quests in the village. She asked me to gather plants for her to turn into burn creams. Same thing Mizuki was asking. She was paying 300 to a stock, so yeah, I was going to make 200% profit from this business. That was why Mizuki was so upset. Yes, but I need some advance payment. I said and her face mopped. I will bring them back in two hours, I promise. Heh, I shouldn't trust you, but we were partners for a time now. I will cut percent ten from the total though. No thanks. I turned to walk away and urged Naruto, let's go Naruto, we can find some other place to sell at least 100 stocks. Speech increased to 34, question mark. The woman cried behind me, wait. Wait, I was joking. You broke my trust. I thought we were partners. I said with a fake sadness all over my face. Cut the crap, brat. Here is your advance, come back in two hours. She said, as she pushed the money in my hand. Thank you. I smiled and dashed away with Naruto in tow. Next, we went to a candy shop and I bought some cotton candy. And by some, I mean a lot. It cost me around 3,000 Rio. Later to a fruiter, and bought ten watermelons. After that, we sneaked into the forest and got to the border marked in our maps. Ko, why did we buy all these? We spent five thousand Rio for all these. Naruto said with a grimace. Mizuki sent us to a dangerous location, Naruto. 
I sighed and showed him the map, see here. From here to here, these places are infested with Kanuki. What? Naruto exclaimed as he stepped back. We were always in the forests or near the river. It wasn't our first time seeing Kanuki. He knew how painful they could be, yeah, now we will make a deal with them. Deal with Kanuki? He asked incredulously. Yup, just follow my lead. I smirked and moved to the border. Once there, I cut one of the watermelons and threw them just over the border and it didn't take long for damned rodents to move towards us cautiously. Some brave ones started to steal watermelons I threw earlier. When there were more than 100 of them near the border, I moved closer and said, I've come to bargain, Dormammu. Wait, this is not that universe. I came to bargain, Kanuki. I showed the cotton candies. They smelled the air and started to move closer. Good. It seems like you are smart. I want you to gather these plants for me, and I will give you all these. What do you think? Benefit of one of the perks in speech skill tree, interspecies communication, perk points spent nicely. Although it didn't allow me to understand or speak animal language, we could, how can I say it delicately, get each other. They started to move their paws and cry, obviously asking for more. Greedy bastards, I have only this much. Either leave it or take it. They tried to bargain a bit more but I was resolute so they all vanished into the forest, while I sat down near a tree. Are you sure about this, Ko? Naruto asked with a tilt of his head. He was majorly confused. Yup. The plants Mizuki asked us to gather grow up faster when Kanuki marks them with their pee. Although there are some outside of their territory, the most are within their borders. So other students can gather maybe as much as we can get. Really? Naruto asked with disbelief. Yup. Mizuki asked each team to gather three stocks and there were fifteen teams. We'll get around three that makes forty-two, some will bring more and we can get around fifty. That is why I promised that lady that much. Oh, you are a genius, Ko. Naruto fisted the air, we can be rich if we do this every day dash, sorry to burst your bubble, but it is not possible. It takes time for these plants to grow up, that is why I never used this method before. I was collecting them for pocket money, but since Mizuki forced my hand, I thought I could teach him a lesson. I smirked. How so? Naruto asked, confused. You don't listen at all, do you? I shook my head, he promised B for the teams that can get three stocks and each extra stock will increase the grade. Oh, we will get the top score. Naruto punched his palm. Yup. And we will also get rich. I smirked. Yes, you are a genius. Naruto copied my smirk as we waited. Soon, the damned rodents came back with the plants in a pouch and threw it over the border. I gave a look at the pouch and roughly counted fifty-five. It was better than I expected. I passed them the watermelons and cotton candies. And before we left, I turned to look at the rodents, and shouted, Don't wash the cotton candy. It is sad. The rest was as expected. Mizuki was not happy with Naruto's success, and my purchase. As I expected, some got over 5 stocks for the top score, and I got more than 100 stocks, happily selling them to the lady. Easy money really. Naruto, why are you so dense? I asked while looking at his stupid face. What the hell do you mean, bastard? He asked with a scoff. Look there, what do you see? I pointed at the side where trees were hiding a princess. Obviously not good enough, as she could be seen. Ha, huh, Hinata. Over here. Naruto shouted, much to Hyuga Princess's shock, as she dashed away like a spotted gazelle. Do you remember the beating I gave you yesterday? I asked, and Naruto winced involuntarily. Good, that should keep him straight. What happened afterwards? Hmm. He started to think while holding his chin, oh, Hinata gave me this ointment. It was super useful. I should buy her ramen. Well, you are not hopeless at least. I sighed, let's think out loud. Why would she give you the ointment? Naruto scratched his head, looking puzzled. I don't know, maybe she just wanted to help me because I was hurt. I rolled my eyes. Come on, Naruto. Use your brain for once. Why would Hinata go out of her way to help you if she didn't have feelings for you? 
Naruto's eyes widened as he finally caught on to what I was saying. Wait a minute. Are you saying that Hinata likes me? I nodded. Yes, she does. And it's been pretty obvious for a while now. Naruto looked stunned. I had no idea. I mean, I've always thought Hinata was nice and everything, but I never imagined she could have feelings for me. Don't get me wrong, squirt. Hinata is nice. That aside, she also likes you and it is probably something to do with you saving her when you were small, remember? You came to me with all bloody when you were four. Oh, right. Naruto punched his palm, is it that simple? Of course not, idiot. I slapped the back of his head, it is not about only that. You were there for him, that is one. You made her feel safe, that is two. You didn't give up and despite being hated more than she did, you weren't a broming mess but a hopeful fool that could help others and unwilling to give up. All these. Well, now that you know, what are you going to do about it? I asked. Naruto rubbed his chin thoughtfully. I don't know. I mean, I like Hinata too, but I don't want to mess things up. What if I do something wrong and she gets hurt? I put a hand on his shoulder. Look, Naruto. You don't have to do anything grand or over the top. Just be yourself, and be honest with her. You have to understand one thing, if a woman likes you without you doing anything, it means they like you for who you are. Well, there are also looks and other shit, but you are lucky in that department. So, just be yourself. Naruto smiled at me gratefully. Thanks, Ko. Although I feel like you insulted me somehow, I cannot put my finger on it anywhere. I smirked. Don't get too sentimental on me now. We still have training to do. He winced as he dashed off, no can do. Gotta catch Hinata and buy her ramen. They grow up so fast. I looked at the vanishing back of Naruto with a smile and turned towards the other direction. Should I visit my darling too? I miss her already. Am I too clingy? What the hell, I may be clingy, but if being clingy doesn't shout love what does? As Naruto dashed through the forest, he couldn't help but feel nervous. He had never really thought about Hinata in that way before, but now that he knew she had feelings for him, he couldn't help but feel a bit giddy inside. Finally, he spotted Hinata up ahead, and he sprinted over to her. Hey, Hinata, he called out, waving his arms. Hinata jumped at the sound of his voice, and her face turned bright red. And Naruto kun, she stammered. Naruto felt his heart skip a beat at the sight of her blushing face. Um, hey. Listen, I just wanted to thank you for the ointment you gave me. It really helped. Hinata nodded, still looking a bit flustered. I'm glad it worked. Are you feeling better now? Naruto smiled. Yeah, I am. Hey, do you want to go get some ramen with me? Hinata's eyes widened in surprise. Our ramen? With you? Naruto nodded eagerly. Yeah. I mean, if you want to, that is. Hinata hesitated for a moment, then nodded. Oh okay. I would like that. Naruto grinned, feeling a rush of excitement. Great. Let's go to Ichiraku. As they walked through the streets of the village, Naruto and Hinata chatted about their favorite things to do and their dreams for the future. Hinata was still shy, but Naruto could tell that she was starting to open up to him. When they finally arrived at Ichiraku, Naruto ordered two bowls of ramen and they sat down at a table to eat. The warm, savory noodles and broth filled them up quickly, and Naruto couldn't help but feel a sense of giddiness sitting there with Hinata. As they finished their meal, Naruto turned to Hinata. Hey, Hinata. I just wanted to say, I'm really glad we got to hang out today. You're a really nice person, and I like spending time with you. Hinata's face turned pink, and she looked down at her lap. T thank you, Naruto Kuen. I like spending time with you too. Naruto felt a flutter in his stomach at her words. He wasn't sure what was happening between them, but he knew that he wanted to spend more time with Hinata in the future. What he was feeling at that moment was not something he wanted to cast away. As they left the restaurant and said their goodbyes, Naruto felt a sense of happiness wash over him. Maybe he was dense sometimes, but he was starting to realize that there was something special between him and Hinata, something that he wanted to explore further. 
As I walked into the classroom, my eyes immediately locked onto Ino's figure. She was surrounded by a group of girls, including Sakura and some characters I didn't recognize, all chatting animatedly. There was something about Ino that I couldn't help but be drawn to. Perhaps it was her playful spirit or her sharp wit, but whatever it was, I found myself constantly seeking her company. Trying not to make my interest too obvious, I casually made my way towards the group. With each step, I tried to appear as relaxed and confident as possible. As I reached them, I offered the girls a warm smile and greeted them with a jovial tone, Hey there, ladies. What are you all talking about? Ino glanced at me, her eyes meeting mine for just a moment before she looked away, feigning disinterest. But I could see a hint of a smile playing at the corners of her lips. Oh, it's just you, Kaushin, she said nonchalantly, we were discussing some recent events at the academy. I leaned against a nearby desk, my eyes focused on Ino, trying to read her expressions. Really? That sounds interesting, I replied with a teasing grin, care to let me in on the conversation. Eno raised an eyebrow, challenging me. Why should we? You're just going to make fun of us, like you always do. Me? Make fun of you? I feigned shock, placing a hand over my heart, I would never dream of it, Eno. A few of the girls around us giggled at my theatrics, and even Eno couldn't suppress a smile. However, she maintained her act of indifference. Oh please, Kaushin. I've seen you tease everyone here. What can I say? I shrugged, the grin never leaving my face, I'm just an equal opportunity jester. Eno rolled her eyes but couldn't hide her amusement. As the conversation continued, we exchanged playful banter and teasing remarks. To an outsider, it might have seemed like nothing more than friendly teasing, but there was an undeniable undercurrent of flirtation between us. Eno's eyes would occasionally linger on mine, and her smile seemed to grow brighter whenever our gazes met. We danced around each other, neither one of us quite willing to admit our feelings openly. It was a game we both enjoyed playing, each of us carefully testing the waters, seeing how far we could push before retreating back into the safety of our casual friendship. As the atmosphere in the classroom grew more relaxed, our banter became even more playful. So, Eno, I began, giving her a sly grin, I heard you're really good at flower arrangements. I guess that makes you a hit petal prodigy. Eno snorted, trying to hide her laughter. Wow, Kaushin, that was a terrible pun. You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm just trying to make you smile, I replied innocently, knowing full well that I had succeeded. But seriously, you should show me your skills sometime. Maybe you could teach me a thing or two. Eno raised an eyebrow, a playful challenge in her eyes. You. Learn flower arranging. I don't think you have the patience for it. Hey, don't judge a book by its cover, I shot back, feigning offense. I can be patient when I want to be. Besides, I'd be learning from the best, right? Eno blushed slightly at the compliment, but quickly recovered her composure. All right, fine. Maybe I'll teach you someday. But don't say I didn't warn you when you get bored after five minutes. I grinned, thrilled by the idea of spending more time with her. Deal. I promise I'll give it my best shot. As we continued to chat, the other girls occasionally chimed in with their own teasing comments, but it was clear that Eno and I were the main event. Our connection was palpable, and it felt like the world around us was fading into the background as we focused solely on each other. At one point, Sakura nudged Eno, whispering something in her ear that made her blush and shoot me a quick, embarrassed glance. I couldn't help but feel a flutter in my chest, wondering what they were discussing. Eno quickly brushed it off, however, and continued our conversation as if nothing had happened. Our banter went on, each of us trying to one-up the other with witty remarks and light-hearted jabs. The energy between us was electric, and I could tell that we were both enjoying this little game of ours. So, Kaushin, Eno said with a smirk, I've seen you practicing with your shuriken. You're not half bad, but I bet I could still beat you in a competition. I raised my eyebrows, feigning surprise. Oh, really? You think you can beat me? Well, I guess we'll just have to find out, won't we? Eno's eyes sparkled with excitement. You're on. Loser has to buy the winner a treat from the dango shop. I laughed and agreed, looking forward to our friendly competition. Deal. Though, gotta say. 
This is the smoothest way of securing a date, if I had ever seen one. Eno's cheeks flushed a deeper shade of red, and she looked away for a moment, pretending to be annoyed. It's not a date, Kaushin. Just a friendly competition between classmates. I couldn't help but chuckle at her response, amused by her attempt to downplay our flirtation. All right, all right, I'll play along. Just a, friendly competition, it is. The bell signaling the end of the school day rang, cutting our conversation short. Eno looked at me, her eyes shining with a mix of excitement and anticipation. So, I guess I'll see you on the training field later. I nodded, unable to keep the grin off my face. You bet. I'll be there, ready to show you just how good I am with those shuriken. As we gathered our things and started to leave the classroom, Eno turned to me one last time, her expression softening. I'm looking forward to it, Kaushin. I felt a warmth in my chest at her words, my heart racing with the thrill of our connection. Me too, Eno. Me too. As we walked to the dango shop after our shuriken competition, Eno seemed to be in high spirits, even though she had lost. I couldn't help but wonder if she knew I had held back a little, just to make it a closer match. But I kept that thought to myself, not wanting to ruin the moment. We entered the dango shop, the sweet aroma of freshly cooked dango filling the air. Eno's eyes scanned the menu, trying to decide what to order. So, Kaushin, any recommendations? I pretended to ponder her question for a moment, stroking my chin thoughtfully. Well, I've heard the Mitarashi dango here is to die for. But you could always try something new, like the Hitachi dango. It's a bit sweeter, but still delicious. Eno's eyes lit up as she made her decision. All right, I'll give the Hitachi dango a try. What about you? Since you're trying something new, I'll stick with the classic Mitarashi, I replied with a grin. With our orders placed, we found a small table near the window and sat down. As we waited for our dango to arrive, Eno couldn't help but bring up our competition. You know, Kaushin, I thought I had you beat for a moment there. I chuckled, not wanting to admit I had held back. You definitely gave me a run for my money, Eno. But I guess I just got lucky. Eno raised an eyebrow, clearly skeptical. Lucky, huh? You sure it wasn't something else? Feeling the heat rise to my cheeks, I quickly changed the subject. So, what do you think of the dango shop? I've always loved this place. It's got a nice, cozy atmosphere, don't you think? Eno looked around, taking in the quaint decorations and warm lighting. Yeah, it's really nice. I can see why you like it. Our dango arrived, and we both eagerly dug in. Eno's eyes widened as she took her first bite of the Hitachi dango. Wow! this is really good. I can't believe I've never tried it before. I smiled, glad she was enjoying her choice. Told you it was worth a try. We spent the next hour chatting, laughing, and enjoying our dango. It felt like we were getting to know each other on a deeper level, and I could sense our connection growing stronger. As we talked, I noticed Eno playing with a small strand of her hair, twisting it around her finger absentmindedly. It was a small, endearing gesture that made her seem even more adorable. I couldn't resist teasing her a little. You know, Eno, I've noticed you have this cute habit of playing with your hair when you're talking. It's quite charming. Eno's cheeks flushed, and she quickly stopped twirling her hair. Oh, um, I didn't even realize I was doing that. It's just something I do when I'm comfortable, I guess. I smiled warmly. Well, I'm glad you feel comfortable around me. Eno looked at me, her eyes meeting mine, and for a moment, we just stared at each other, a silent understanding passing between us. As we left the dango shop, our fingers brushed against each other, sending a jolt of electricity through me. I hesitated for a moment before daring to take her hand in mine. Eno glanced at me, a look of surprise and happiness in her eyes, but she didn't pull away. We walked hand in hand, our steps in sync as we made our way through the village. The sun was beginning to set, casting a warm, golden glow over everything. It felt like the perfect end to our impromptu date. Eno glanced at me, a shy smile on her lips. You know, Kaushin, I had a really great time today. I squeezed her hand gently, returning her smile. Me too, Eno. It's been a lot of fun. As we continued walking, our conversation flowed effortlessly. 
We talked about our dreams, our fears, and even shared some embarrassing stories from our childhoods. It was clear that our connection was deepening, and I couldn't help but feel a thrill at the prospect of exploring this new aspect of our relationship. As we approached Eno's home, I could see her reluctance to say goodbye. She hesitated for a moment before speaking up. Kaushin, do you think? We could do this again sometime. I grinned, my heart swelling at her words. I'd like that, Eno. Just say when, and I'll be there. Eno blushed, her eyes shining with happiness. Well, then, I guess I'll see you soon. We stood there for a moment, our hands still clasped, neither of us quite ready to let go. Finally, I leaned in and pressed a gentle kiss to her cheek, feeling her warmth against my lips. Eno's blush deepened, but she didn't pull away. Good night, Eno, I whispered, taking a step back. Good night, Kaushin, she replied, her voice barely audible. I feel disturbance in the force. A yell sounded from the flower shop, as I was feeling giddy in my stomach. As if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. I fear something terrible has happened. Dark side is after my princess. It is my dad. Eno facepalmed, as she looked at the flower shop with twitching lips. Gotta go, bye. Sayonara, Nijirundeo. I turned away and ran away without waiting. Omake, S rank mission, A coordinated Kanoha conception in Oichi, Shikaku, and Choza stood outside the local tavern, the moonlit night casting long shadows on the ground. Inoichi's grin was wide and mischievous as he slung a friendly arm around Shikaku and Choza's shoulders. Gentlemen, Inoichi began, his voice filled with excitement, I've had a brilliant idea. Tonight, we shall embark on a mission of utmost importance, we're going to start working on having children. Shikaku raised an eyebrow, a knowing smile creeping onto his face. Inoichi continued, his enthusiasm infectious. Just imagine. Our kids will grow up together, train together, and become the next legendary Inoshika Cho triplet. It's destiny. Shikaku's eyes twinkled in agreement. That does sound pretty cool. What do you think, Choza? Choza, however, seemed hesitant, his face flushing as he glanced nervously at his friends. I, I don't know, guys. This is a pretty big step. Inoichi and Shikaku exchanged glances before they both started encouraging Choza, their voices teasing but supportive. Come on, Choza. You've got this. You're a natural-born dad material. Inoichi exclaimed, laughing. Yeah, man. And besides, we'll all be in it together, Shikaku added, nudging Choza playfully. With their words of encouragement, Choza finally agreed, his spirit pumped up and ready to face the challenge. The next morning, Choza found Shikaku and Inoichi outside the same tavern. They were slouched on the ground, half-heartedly poking the dirt with sticks, their faces sullen and defeated. Curious, Choza approached them, a concerned frown on his face. Hey, guys, what happened? Why the long faces, he asked. Inoichi sighed, looking up at his friend with a mixture of sadness and frustration. We were too pumped up and persistent last night. Our wives got suspicious and, well, we're on a no-baby-making ban for months. Shikaku nodded in agreement, bitterness lacing his voice. Yep, we're screwed. Both Inoichi and Shikaku looked at Choza, who seemed uncharacteristically bright and cheerful. They squinted at him suspiciously, the contrast between their moods all too apparent. Why aren't you miserable like us? Inoichi demanded, his voice tinged with envy. Choza puffed out his chest, a smug grin on his face as he savored the moment. Daddy wants it, daddy gets it. Shikaku and Inoichi stared at him, their jaws dropping in disbelief, while Choza just basked in his triumphant moment, the earlier teasing and mockery all but forgotten. Since this chapter was mostly published in the first chapter, I will publish another chapter. Today there was a blood moon because today was the day of the Uchiha massacre. I thought a lot about what I should do with this, and I finally decided to be part of it. Not for preventing it, of course not, preventing had all the shitty downsides, but to encourage it of course. If there was something that could solve all my troubles, it was to make sure the massacre happened. After I moved in together with Naruto life was better. Sadly there were no silly quests from the matron but I could do odd jobs for people around the village to earn some cash and EXP. 
My skills increased, and I was getting better each and every day. When we were five, we started the academy. Mostly to teach us how to read and beginner level math, history, and stuff. Nothing ninja why. And now, we are seven years old. Shursue died last year, and I was too weak to even interfere with that shit. I liked Shursue, I really did. But I was too weak to even get close to such a character without drawing a target behind my back. On the other hand, Itachi is a fool. He is cool and all but he is a fool nonetheless. He could have killed the black sheeps in the family, he could have killed Danzo, but no. Let's kill everyone, even the children, and make my brother hate me so he would grow strong and kill me, but I love him. I don't even care if he dies at this point, and anyway, I couldn't save Shursue. But today, it was different. There were risks of course but I am confident in my abilities. Chakra, 15 Genjutsu, Illusion 0 Summon Jutsu, Conjuration 0 Ninjutsu, Destruction 0 Taijutsu, Heavy Light Armor Slash Block 20 Healing Jutsu, Restoration 0 Henge, Alteration 10 Fuen Jutsu, Enchanting 5 Smithing, 5 Buka Jutsu, 1 2 Handed 15 Ranged, 20 Sneak, 30 Speech, 35 Alchemy, 0 Miscellaneous, 50 I am level 11 and have 11 perk points. I increased, Stealth, perk 2 times with points and increased with sheer hard work once. Now it is almost full and gives a 50% increase when I am sneaking. I would have used all the perks I have to cap it, but without increasing sneak, I cannot get the perk further. Most of my skills increased thanks to books I found in the library. I wasn't sure if it would work before I visited, but after I read a story about a shinobi, it increased my sneak ability. And boy, if the library wasn't filled with books about sneaking shinobi. There were books about other jutsu branches, but for some reason, I couldn't increase them just yet. My theory was, I had to activate them first before books worked. And I haven't learned those yet. Hopefully, they will teach us soon in the academy. I also activated another perk, muffled movement, decreasing the sound I make when I am moving. Since shinobi are paranoid monsters that can hear anything, I had to activate this perk too. I am now near Uchiha compound, scanning the area with the map in the corner of my visage. I can't see the people hiding, but it is still giving me some sort of ability to see around. Oh yeah, unlike the HUD in the game, I have a small map in my vision all the time instead, though I can toggle it off. Although enemies aren't showing up before confronting, just like in the game, it is still good. As I was waiting, screams reverberated beyond the walls. I already discovered a weak entrance a week before and am waiting nearby. When I saw Sasuke running in, I sneaked in as well from the weak entrance I found. Sneak increased to 31, sneak increased to 32, holy shit. Sneaking onto full-fledged shinobi increases mastery blazing fast. When I arrived at the opening, the crying Itachi was jumping away and Sasuke collapsed onto the ground. I was still far away from them but I could see them as clear as day thanks to marking them on the map. Itachi went away, and I had only a small window of time. I ran to the boy who collapsed to the ground and opened his eyelids. He was collapsed because of the torture and chakra exhaustion. But two blazing red eyes were looking at me back. I quickly removed them from their sockets and placed them into my inventory, before I killed the boy. His name and red bar vanished as he died. So long, Sasuke. When the red dot indicating Sasuke vanished, I left the Uchiha compound as fast as I could. In no time at all, I arrived at the house and slipped into my bed. Holy shit. That did happen, right? Right? My heart was beating like a galloping QB in my chest. No one saw me. I am sure of it. I planned this for months. Hokage wasn't spying with his jutsu. If he did, he would know Itachi wasn't alone, but he didn't. It meant he wasn't watching. Umbu was also pulled from there, Root might be close, but not too close. They were waiting for it to end to collect their eyes. I did it in time. I don't see any red dots on the map. So no one is targeting me. No one is after me. No one saw me. After reasoning with myself, I calmed down and laid on my back. I opened the inventory and skipped the useless stuff. There at the bottom was a pair of Sharingan, one with two Tomo while the other with one. Sharingan, I type bloodline limit of Uchiha clan. It is regarded as one of the three great dojitsu, 
the others being the Byakugan and the Rinnegan. While its powers originated from Kagaya Atsutsuki's Rinne Sharingan, its independent form was first manifested by Indra Atsutsuki. The pair has the incarnation of Indra and bestows the ability of Amaterasu on the left eye, Kagatsuchi on the right eye, and Susanoo on two. Can be implanted. The fuck? Can be implanted? I looked at the last sentence while the use button was blinking. I absentmindedly brought my finger to press it, but at the last second, I stopped myself. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Hell to the no. Sharingan. I don't need that sick eye. It is a curse that is what it is. I don't want it. No. No universe, no gods, no to everyone. This is the second time I was offered this. But no. I don't fucking want Sharingan. No, 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 no. In Hokage's office, four old people were sitting. What do you want, Danzo? asked Hiruzen, the old monkey. I just want to discuss these decisions you took. Danzo tersely said, as he showed the new laws Hiruzen signed. Old age got to you huh, Danzo? Hiruzen said with oozing sarcasm. I am Hokage. I don't discuss. I implement. Danzo's face was livid, but he had to do his best to keep his calm. A while longer. Yes, you are. But we are still the elder council. We have some say in the rules you lay down. The female old goat, whose name the author long forgotten, said. Yes, but those on Danzo showed no, you have not. Hiruzen said with a stern voice indicating he wouldn't let the other three meddle into this. Fine, but I still want Kyuubi's host. Danzo, with no other choice, brought the subject to the Hokage's soft spot. You shall never have Naruto. You hear me? Old Third answered with a shout. I told you nth time, Naruto is a fine shinobi to be of Kanoha and not a weapon. I still regret presenting him as the Jinchuriki. I shouldn't have done that. People of this village are so stupid. Says the most stupid. Three other old goats thought at the same time. While the council of useless and old were being useless and old, the Uchiha massacre ended. Meh, I killed Sasuke so there would be less trouble that came with him, and the system wants me to become the new Indra incarnation. No, thank you. I don't want my friendship with Naruto to be complicated. I like it when he is stupid little brother, not when he forgets everything to come after me to save me from my hatred. Really though, who would be stupid enough to use those eyes? Not only is it annoying as bitch, it will also turn me into an emo. For real. I will become an edgelord. The idea makes me shiver. No thank you. I am good as I am. Killing Sasuke and removing him from the whole plot was the best thing I could do though. I did it to prevent Naruto from chasing, hell even be friends with the stupid emo kid, but still. Sasuke is bad news. Orochimaru comes because of him, Naruto almost dies several times because of him. Now that he is dead, things will turn for the better. I hope. The funeral was sad. Although it was for all Uchiha clan, mainly everyone was there for Sasuke. After all, he was famous in the academy. Even Naruto was devastated. They still had this rivalry thing going on, although not fully developed. Sakura, and many other girls looked like zombies. Come on Naruto, let's go, I said while dropping the flower we bought. I was not going to spend my hard-earned money to buy a second flower. Buying together with Naruto would suffice. Not like they meant anything to me. Why would someone do such a thing? Naruto asked. We cannot understand crazy people, Naruto. We cannot even imagine their state of mind. I sighed as I put my arm around his shoulder. We should grow strong to avenge him. You are right. I will be Hokage in the future. I will get so strong and bring his brother back to the village, so he can apologize to Sasuke. Naruto said with newfound ambition. You sure will, buddy. As we were walking back, suddenly a crow appeared in the sky. It was huge. On top it was. Itachi. With his crimson eyes fixed upon the graveyard, his face contorted and his expression twisted into a bloody visage. A killing intent, so heavy and foreboding, seeped from his very being and radiated from his gaze. For a brief, heart-stopping moment, I felt as though I might keel over and die from fear. 
But then, with a thunderous roar, he shouted another name, shaking the very earth beneath us. Danzo! He shouted on top of his tongue. Come out now! The people had already recognized him and drew their weapons. ANBU from every corner jumped out and started to evacuate the civilians. Jounin filled the cemetery. And from two sides, two elders walked into the center. Hokage and Danzo. Danzo's face was ugly. It looked like he was frightened and edgy. Hokage on the other hand looked sad and determined. Itachi, why did you come back? He asked. We had a deal, third. You had to protect Sasuke. Itachi said between his tears. What are you playing, you traitor? Danzo shouted. You ordered me to massacre my family. I agreed with you. You promised to protect Sasuke. Itachi was mad. Stop, spouting bullshit. You killed everyone in your family and stole your brother's eyes. You dare to put the blame on me. Danzo said righteously. Today, you die, Danzo. Itachi's voice boomed through the air as he materialized near the man, his crimson eyes blazing with intensity. Danzo was quick to react, flickering away before Itachi could even touch him. But Itachi was no ordinary ninja, he was a genius for a reason. In a flash of black feathers, a crow clone appeared behind Danzo and plunged a sharp blade into his chest. Danzo's form dissolved into smoke and a wooden log took his place. Itachi whirled around just in time to see the real Danzo charging towards him, a deadly wind-covered kunai aimed straight for his heart. But Itachi was no pushover either. In a blur of motion, he transformed into a flock of murderous crows, appearing in front of Danzo just as the elder's blade whistled through the air. Danzo's eyes widened in shock as he gazed upon the crimson-eyed Uchiha. A moment later, he crumpled to his knees, overwhelmed by the sheer force of Itachi's killing intent. Itachi raised his hand, ready to deliver the final blow to the man's skull, when a staff suddenly appeared before him. It was the Hokage, Hiruzen Sarutobi, who had entered the fray. Stay out of this, Hokage, Itachi snarled, his gaze fixed upon the old man. Or I swear I will raise your precious village to the ground. But Hiruzen was resolute. I can't let you kill an elder of my village, he shouted back, his body already in motion as he engaged Itachi in combat. Jounin and Anbu appeared in droves, their weapons flashing as they clashed with Itachi. But the rogue Uchiha was far too strong for them. Danzo, due to not having the opportunity to harvest and implant the Sharingans to his arm yet, wasn't at his peak. He had only one Manjikyu Sharina, stolen from Shursui, but he couldn't even use that at the moment. Chunin scrambled to evacuate the area, forming a human shield between Itachi and the vulnerable civilians. Naruto and his friend watched from a safe distance, their eyes wide with shock and awe as Itachi battled half the village's forces. Guy was nowhere to be seen, while Kakashi was deemed too weak to take on Itachi alone. Only two old men posed a challenge to the rogue Uchiha, but they too were struggling to keep up with his unrelenting assault. Hiruzen. Don't force my hand. Itachi's voice boomed with an intense, bone-chilling killing intent that sent shivers down the spines of all who heard it. His right eye twitched with barely suppressed rage and a powerful jutsu, the dreaded Amaterasu, threatened to erupt from within him. Hiruzen, one of the very elders who had ordered Itachi to slaughter his own kin, refused to back down, determined to face the consequences of his past actions. Danzo, on the other hand, prepared to unleash his own fearsome power, his right eye beginning to open. A sudden explosion of movement, and Itachi's eye burst forth with a gush of blood as black flames consumed Danzo. The elder screamed in agony, frantically trying to extinguish the unquenchable inferno that threatened to consume him. But the Amaterasu was relentless, burning hotter and brighter with each passing moment. When all hope seemed lost, Danzo suddenly disappeared, replaced by a summon that continued to burn in his place. Itachi glared at the summon with a seething hatred that seemed to scorch the very air around him, and he unleashed the full might of his Tsukuyumi on Danzo, who appeared in front of him. Hiruzen moved to intervene, but Itachi's Amaterasu stopped him in his tracks, the flames roaring to life once more. In a desperate bid to protect his leader, an ANBU leapt between Hiruzen and the deadly flames, sacrificing himself to save his village. But it was too late for Danzo. Itachi's blade sliced cleanly through the traitorous elder's neck, and his head tumbled to the ground, lifeless. 
With a cold, calculating precision, Hitachi removed his best friend's Sharingan from Danzo's corpse, then collapsed to the ground, laughing maniacally in a haze of relief and exhaustion. His voice echoed through the opening, where the still-burning elder's body convulsed on the ground, promising to kill anyone and everyone who had hurt his beloved brother, Sasuke. I will kill you all. I will kill everyone that hurt my brother. This village will burn to ashes. The battlefield was a gruesome sight, filled with the remnants of a fierce battle that had left its mark on the village. The air hung heavy with the stench of blood and scorched earth, while the ground lay littered with the lifeless bodies of fallen shinobi. At the center of it all, Itachi Uchiha, exhausted and bloodied, lay gasping for breath, his face a mixture of pain, sorrow, and relief. His once pristine Akatsuki robes were tattered and soaked with blood, his once flawless skin marred by cuts and bruises. His Sharingan eyes, so full of hate just moments ago, now appeared dull and lifeless, drained of their former emotions except omni craziness in them. As the remaining shinobi of the village struggled to recover from the shock of Itachi's brutal attack, a figure cloaked in darkness approached the defeated Uchiha, his presence all but invisible to those who still remained standing. This was the masked man who had been watching the battle from afar, waiting for the right moment to strike. With a fluid, practiced motion, the masked man scooped up the fallen Uchiha and vanished from the battlefield, leaving behind only a faint trace of his chakra signature. The villagers, too preoccupied with the aftermath of the fight and the revelation of Itachi's true intentions, failed to notice their departure. Back in the village, the news of Itachi's return and his revelation about the Uchiha massacre spread like wildfire, sparking a heated debate among the residents. Some were furious, demanding justice for the fallen Uchiha clan and the punishment of those who had ordered the massacre. Others, however, were more cautious, arguing that the truth was still unclear and that they should not rush to judgment. As the village struggled to come to terms with the implications of Itachi's words, the masked man carried him to a secret hideout on the outskirts of the village. There, he tended to Itachi's wounds, careful to avoid causing him further pain. The two of them spoke in hushed tones, discussing the events of the day and the consequences of Itachi's actions. It's done, Itachi rasped, his voice weak and hoarse from the strain of battle. Sasuke. I killed your murderer, and others will come after him. One by one, I will kill them all. The masked man regarded him with a mixture of pity and admiration. Good job, he admitted. You've done what needed to be done. Now, it's time to rest and recover. There's still much work to be done. As Itachi drifted into a restless slumber, haunted by the ghosts of his past, the village he had once called home faced a new dawn, one filled with uncertainty and the potential for both healing and further discord. But for now, the people of Kanoha were left to ponder the aftermath of the battle, and the weight of the secrets that had been revealed. With the truth of the Uchiha massacre now out in the open, the village would never be the same. Trust would be harder to come by, and old wounds would be ripped open, as the people of Kanoha struggled to come to terms with the actions of their leaders and the price that had been paid for their perceived peace. As the sun set on the day of the battle, the village was left with a choice, to learn from the past and forge a new path forward, or to let the bitter legacy of the Uchiha massacre consume them all. As the village reeled from the shocking revelations of the Uchiha massacre, Hiruzen Sarutobi, the third Hokage, found himself struggling to maintain control of the situation. Desperate to preserve the fragile peace of Kanoha, he ordered his most trusted ANBU operatives to destroy any evidence that could implicate him or the Elder Council in the bloody affair. But his efforts would not go unnoticed. Whispers of the Hokage's attempts to cover up the truth spread throughout the village, sowing seeds of doubt and suspicion among the clans. Tensions rose as once loyal shinobi began to question their faith in the leadership of the village. The Hyuga, Nara, and Akimichi clans were among those who openly expressed their dissatisfaction with the Hokage's actions, arguing that transparency and accountability were essential for the village's survival. As the unrest grew, a group of determined shinobi banded together to raise the root headquarters, the secret organization founded by Danzo. They hoped that by destroying the symbol of Danzo's treachery, they could force the village to confront the dark deeds of its leaders and pave the way for a more honest and open future. The assault on the root headquarters was swift and brutal. The building was reduced to rubble, and any remaining root operatives were either captured or fled into the shadows. Within the wreckage, the shinobi discovered a trove of damning evidence, detailed records of Danzo's secret dealings, as well as his collaboration with Hiruzen in the Uchiha massacre. 
With the evidence laid bare for all to see, the village could no longer ignore the truth. Furious and betrayed, the people of Kanoha demanded that Hiruzen step down as Hokage, taking responsibility for his role in the massacre and the ensuing cover-up. Faced with the overwhelming anger of his people and the undeniable proof of his actions, Hiruzen had no choice but to acquiesce. With a heavy heart, Hiruzen Sarutobi relinquished his position as the third Hokage, leaving the village in a state of turmoil. The leadership vacuum left in his wake would prove to be a catalyst for change, as the people of Kanoha were forced to confront the consequences of their leader's actions and the deeply rooted corruption that had festered within their once great village. As the dust settled on this dark chapter in Kanoha's history, the village's citizens would have to come together to forge a new path forward, one that would require them to reckon with the past and strive for a better, more just future. But the road ahead would be long and fraught with challenges, as the scars left by the Uchiha massacre and its aftermath would not be easily healed. With Hiruzen Sarutobi out of the picture, Kanoha needed a new Hokage in leadership structure. A new council of elders, comprising prominent leaders from powerful clans such as Hyuga Hayashi, Nara Shikaku, Yamanaka Inoichi, Akimichi Choza, Hataki Kakashi, Inazuka Tsum, Shibi Aburaim, Senju Tsunade, and Uzumaki Naruto, along with the daimyo, have selected Tsunade as the new Hokage. Naruto was still young and wasn't part of the council until he would become a chunin. His vote would be in the hands of Tsunade as part of the Uzumaki clan. As the village worked to establish its new council, the search for the next Hokage began. After much deliberation, the council settled on Tsunade Senju, the legendary Sanmin and granddaughter of the first Hokage. They believed her strong leadership skills and connection to Kanoha's founding lineage would help guide the village through these trying times. Tsunade, who had been away from the village for many years, was initially shocked by the news of her appointment. As she returned to Kanoha, she learned about the Senju genocide that had occurred under Hiruzen's watch. This horrifying revelation only strengthened her resolve to restore the village's honor and integrity. Upon arriving at the village gates, Tsunade's first action was to find Hiruzen, then beating him from the entrance of the village to the end. Enraged by the former Hokage's involvement in the atrocities, she proceeded to beat him senseless, her powerful fists carrying her fury as she dragged him through the streets. The villagers watched in awe, as this fierce and unyielding woman made it clear that she would not tolerate the corruption that had tainted Kanoha. Once Tsunade was officially instated as the fifth Hokage, her first order of business was to deal with the former council members, Koharu Yudatane and Hamura Mitokado. Two old goats for being incompetent fools and acting more than their worth were sentenced to prison, while Hiruzen was forced to live his life in peace slash shame never to leave the village. With a new Hokage in council in place, Kanoha began the slow process of healing and rebuilding. Tsunade's strong leadership and the more inclusive council structure gave the villagers hope that they could move past the dark times and work towards a brighter future for all of Kanoha's inhabitants. With me by his side, Naruto too evolved with the village. He had matured and grown more talented, driven by a desire for justice and revenge. With Danzo gone, Hiruzen out of the picture, and Tsunade's unwavering support, Naruto's life transformed completely. The village was going through a revolutionary change, and so was Naruto. No longer hidden in the shadows, his true identity as a Jinchurikian hero was revealed to everyone. The villagers who once feared or scorned him now had to face the consequences of their actions. Tsunade, the fifth Hokage, made sure that anyone who dared to treat him with disrespect would be punished. Those who had wronged him were forced to kneel in front of his house, day and night, as a form of penance. Though Naruto's life was undeniably better, it was important for me to make sure he didn't lose himself amidst all the newfound power and respect. After all, we were still living together, and I had to look out for him. As Naruto's fame grew and he gained confidence, I encouraged him to let go of his last bits of feelings he had for Sakura. Instead, I nudged him to talk to Hinata more and more, who had always admired him from afar. After their first outing at Ichiraku, they started to meet more and more. With some gentle prodding from me, they finally had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation and became sweethearts, despite their young age. A few months had passed since our first date, and Ino and I were now officially a couple. Though we were still young, our relationship had blossomed in a way that was equal parts playful and affectionate. One sunny afternoon, we found ourselves walking side by side through the bustling streets of Kanoha, our fingers brushing together as we strolled. Ino was wearing a mischievous grin, and I knew she was itching for some banter. So, Kaushin, she began, 
her voice dripping with faux seriousness, I've been thinking. You know how we're always competing with each other. I raised an eyebrow, feigning confusion. Us? Compete? I have no idea what you're talking about. Eno rolled her eyes, not missing a beat. Right, sure. Anyway, I've come up with the ultimate challenge to finally determine which one of us is truly the superior ninja. I couldn't help but laugh, my curiosity peaked. Oh, really? And what, pray tell, is this ultimate challenge? Eno leaned in, a gleam in her eyes. A race. From one end of Kanoha to the other. Loser has to. Hmm. Wear a ridiculous outfit chosen by the winner for an entire day. I pretended to ponder the idea, a smirk playing on my lips. Hmm, that's quite the challenge, Eno. But are you sure you're ready to face the humiliation of losing? Eno scoffed, her hands on her hips. Please, Kaushin. I think the real question is whether you're prepared to be seen in public wearing whatever ridiculous outfit I pick out for you. I couldn't help but chuckle at her confidence. All right, Eno. You're on. But don't say I didn't warn you when you're parading around in a clown costume. Eno shot me a playful glare, but her eyes were sparkling with excitement. We'll just see about that. As we made our way to the starting point of our race, we continued to tease each other, our words carrying an undercurrent of affection despite their apparent competitiveness. Kaushin, have you ever considered that maybe you're just a bit too cocky for your own good? Eno asked, smirking as she looked at me from the corner of her eye. I feigned shock, clutching my chest dramatically. Cocky? Me? I prefer to think of it as well-founded confidence. Eno laughed, shaking her head. Well, your, well-founded confidence is going to get a reality check today. We lined up at the starting point, the anticipation building as we prepared for the race. All right, Eno, I said, my voice filled with excitement, on the count of three, we'll start. Ready? One, Eno counted, her eyes locked on mine. Two, I continued, feeling my heart race with anticipation. Three. We shouted in unison, taking off like a bolt of lightning. We raced through the streets of Kanoha, our laughter mingling with the wind as we pushed each other to go faster. It was exhilarating, the feeling of freedom and friendly competition driving us onward. As we neared the finish line, it was clear that we were evenly matched. Both of us were giving it our all, determined to prove ourselves the victor. In the end, though, I managed to pull ahead just slightly, crossing the finish line with a triumphant grin. Eno huffed, trying to catch her breath as she joined me at the finish line. Fine, Kaushin, she conceded, a smile tugging at her lips, you win this time. But just you wait, I'll get you in the next challenge. I grinned, reaching over to ruffle her hair affectionately. I look forward to it, Eno. And don't worry, I'll make sure to pick out a truly spectacular outfit for you. Eno swatted my hand away, her eyes rolling but her laughter betraying her true feelings. You're insufferable, Kaushin. And yet, I replied, wrapping an arm around her shoulder while pointing at myself, you still seem to like to suffer this condition. Eno leaned into me, her laughter subsiding as she rested her head on my shoulder. Yeah, she admitted softly, I guess I do. We spent the rest of the day browsing the shops, searching for the perfect ridiculous outfit for Eno to wear as punishment for losing our race. Finally, after much debate and laughter, we settled on a flashy, brightly colored outfit complete with an outrageous hat. Eno groaned at the sight of it, but she was a good sport and agreed to wear it the next day. The following morning, I met up with Eno, trying to stifle my laughter as she emerged from her house wearing the ridiculous getup. To her credit, she wore it with as much grace as possible, though her cheeks were flushed with embarrassment. All right, Kaushin, she muttered, her eyes narrowed playfully, I hope you're enjoying this. Just remember, payback's a, well, you know. I grinned, offering her a mock salute. Duly noted, Eno. But for now, let's just enjoy your moment of, uh, fashion forwardness. As we walked through the village, we were met with a mixture of laughter and confusion from those we passed. Eno, to her credit, held her head high, refusing to let her embarrassment get the best of her. Throughout the day, we continued our flirty banter, each teasing remark and sarcastic comment only serving to strengthen our bond. It was clear to anyone who knew us that beneath the surface of our playful rivalry, there was a deep affection and love for one another. 
As the sun began to set, Eno finally shed her ridiculous outfit, her face a mix of relief and amusement. Well, Kaushin, she said, smirking at me, I hope you enjoyed your victory today. Just remember, next time, it'll be you wearing something utterly humiliating. I laughed, pulling her into a gentle hug. I have no doubt, Eno. But for now, let's just enjoy the fact that we have each other. Eno smiled, her eyes shining with warmth as she wrapped her arms around me. That sounds so lame. I pulled back, feigning a hurt expression. Lame. Me. I thought it was pretty sweet. Eno rolled her eyes, but her smile never wavered. Fine, I'll admit it was a little sweet. But don't let it go to your head, Kaushin. I promise, my ego will remain in check, I replied, grinning as I took her hand in mine. We were ten years old now, and things were going pretty smooth. I was top of the class, with Naruto, Hinata and Ino right behind me. With Danzo six feet under, I had no reason to hold back, and I was shining like a blazing sun. Chakra, 1535 Genjutsu, Illusion 020 Summon Jutsu, Conjuration 0 Ninjutsu, Destruction 025 Taijutsu, Heavy Light Armor Slash Block 2045 Healing Jutsu, Restoration 015 Henge, Alteration 1030 Fuen Jutsu, Enchanting 525 Smithing, 515 Buka Jutsu, 1 2 Handed 1535 Ranged, 2030 Sneak, 3045 Speech, 3550 Alchemy, 0 Miscellaneous, 5070 When my Ninjutsu skill finally hit 25, I could activate the first perk, Novice Shinobi. It meant I'd use 10% less chakra for any ninjutsu. Sweet. I could upgrade it 5 times, reducing chakra usage by a total of 50, so, I went ahead and spent 3 of my 17 perk points on it, activating the perk twice. The next 3 levels were gonna cost me more points each time, though. Guess I'd have to level up the skill itself before splurging on those. My taijutsu skill also reached 25, and I unlocked the first perk, Iron Muscles. This bad boy made my muscles harder and more compact, boosting both my attack and defense. I spent 3 more points on it, leaving me with 11 points. I considered spending 6 points on upgrading Genjutsu but decided against it. Leveling up was getting harder, and I didn't want to waste points on something I could achieve with some good old elbow grease. As for my chakra skill, the first perk was about chakra control. But since I knew I could get better at that on my own, I didn't bother spending any points there. Instead, I focused on practicing tree climbing and walking on water, you know, the usual ninja stuff. With Tsunade running the show, healing jutsu and fuen jutsu became mandatory electives for those of us who couldn't nail a perfect ninjutsu score. So, Naruto and I were learning fuen jutsu together, while I also took healing jutsu with Ino. Sakura was in that class too, but no one really cared about her. Even Hinata roped Naruto into taking the healing class. I didn't spend any perk points on fuen jutsu or bukajutsu either. I figured I could just practice my writing skills for Fuenjutsu and work on my weapon proficiency for Bukajutsu. Gotta save those points for something better, right? Shurikenjutsu, ranged, was a tad different. Bows or crossbows weren't favorable weapons among shinobi. They were only using kunai, senban, or shuriken. And since there was no string, there was no overdraw perk either. The first perk was, aim, as simple as its name, increased the aim. Still practiced and mastered slowly. No perk points wasted. With only 11 points left, I didn't use them on sneak, speech, or miscellaneous. My sneak skills were pretty decent already, and I was making progress on the next perk, backstab. But leveling up was getting harder, and there were still so many perks to gain. Some of them could only be learned with perk points. That's when I stumbled upon something incredible while exploring the village with Naruto. We found the place where Minato had battled Uchiha Abito, and I noticed a strange mark on my minimap. The mark only appeared when I stepped onto the battlefield, and it turned out to be a freaking dungeon. Now, that's what I call a game changer. I ditched Naruto after he slept. Not like I have to sleep. And hey, my sneak is pretty high, and with the 50% boost from the perk, I could easily sneak out to the spot where I saw the dungeon. When I arrived at the skull, a notification appeared before me. To dungeon, it wasn't like the game where I had to enter the cave or gate. I had to select it. And select I did. Floor 1, 
Recommended Level 10 Floor 2, Recommended Level 20 Floor 3, Recommended Level 30 Floor 4, Recommended Level 40 Floor 5, Recommended Level 50 Floor 6, Recommended Level 60, the list was going on. Floor 1, I willed and in the next second, I disappeared. I found myself on a forest floor with the village away from me. The trees were covering behind, and both sides of me, and the only path I could take was in front. The way the trees were placed was seamless, so I couldn't pass through them. I felt I couldn't destroy them even with the strongest jutsu. I followed the path and in front of me appeared three one-meter tall foxes with one teal each. There was a red cloak covering their bodies. Looks like Naruto's first QB mode. I fished out kunai from my bag and held it in reverse grip while smirking at the fox. Boy, did that agitate them. It did. In a second, three of them flashed in front of me. I dodged three claw strikes by crouching and stabbed the kunai in my hand to one of the fox's belly. The chakra cloak stopped it from penetrating the flesh. Fuck. Alright, what you gonna do now, ha punks? I shouted and threw a smoke ball. When smoke covered the opening, I did henge and turned it into a stone. I fell with a thud and stood still. After the smoke dispersed, the three foxes looked around in bewilderment, then smelled the ground. After realizing I wasn't anywhere near, they started to walk back and three red dots vanished from the map. Nice. I cancelled the henge and entered stealth mode. It was a night-themed dungeon, and the forest was dark. I silently walked towards them and held two kunai in my hands. In-game, you couldn't sneak attack two targets at once but in real life, you could. After I was right behind them, I attacked at their neck, and with, backstab, perk, my attack was critical. Two foxes fell to the ground dead in a matter of seconds, while I attacked the now barely suspecting third. Without further ado, I killed it too. Bukijutsu increased to 31, nice. I looked at the dead foxes on the ground and approached their bodies. When I did, an option appeared. Search, one-tailed. Fox, I willed and an inventory list appeared. One-tail fox pelt one-tail fox fawn lesser health potion, nice, take all. And all three items appeared in my inventory. I looked at the other two, but they only had pelt and the fawn, no potion. After I finished with them, I followed the path while still sneaking. There were seven skulks of foxes in certain intervals. Each skulk had three one-tailed foxes. I killed them all the same way and arrived at the end of the path. There stood a little bigger fox. Standing one. Meters tall, taller than me, with two tails. Its eyes looked more like Kyuubi than those with one tail. I approached with stealth but it still felt my presence. It got edgy all of a sudden while looking around. I still had a chance to do backstab, but it wouldn't kill it. But I still approached. When I was close, the stealth was almost broken, so with a swing, two kunai were about to land on both eyes but it dodged in a split second. Howl. Fuck, such a perception. The angry claw landed on my torso, gushing open a wound. I was bleeding profusely while the fox was yelping around. I fished out all my shuriken and attacked from where I was laying. Luckily my, aim, was good and all of the kunai landed from a close distance. But their powers weren't enough to breach the chakra cloak. I threw a smoke bomb and vanished in the shadows once again. The fox was cautious, not like its lesser kind. I uncorked a health potion and bottomed it up before I bleed to death. It knew I was still close, so I moved away silently and hid away for over an hour for it to drop its caution. Stealth was successful. I can't go close to attack it can feel my presence. I don't have a strong jutsu, no better weapon. I only have a weak genjutsu, wait of course. How the fuck I forgot genjutsu? I activated and disrupted its chakra with mine. It stared back at me as my chakra started to seep into his chakra veins. I sacrificed my stealth to see if I could put it in genjutsu. After all, Madara and Nabito were able to put Kyuubi in genjutsu. Although I lacked Sharingan, these weren't the real tailed beast either. I didn't know many genjutsu but the one I had was still effective. My chakra started to throw its balance off and I was able to create an illusion as the fox started to doze off. I approached and raised my two kunai to pierce its eyes. And, what do you know, I did poke its eyes to its brain. Die motherfucker. 
Shit, that was intense. I sighed as I collapsed. Although it looked easy, it wasn't. If the claw landed on my head I would be dead. Or if the smoke bomb didn't work. I thought I had the level advantage and could clear the dungeon easily but, I am weak. I don't have a strong jutsu. I approached the dead fox and a list appeared once again. Two tails fox pelt two tails fox fawn lesser health potion x2 perk point x1, yes. 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 This is what I am talking about. I wonder if all the floor bosses drop perk points or I was just lucky. I should repeat the dungeon but after I have more jutsu and weapons. I wonder if I can forge daggers from these fangs. I probably can. Other than that, I should learn jutsu but I don't have access to jutsu in libraries. Maybe I should use the genjutsu perk to strengthen my talent in that and grind perk points here. I know the logic behind many jutsu but without perks, I am not talented enough to learn them. I haven't even activated the perk for elemental affinities. They are fucking expensive. Elemental affinity, not even have an element yet. Sigh. I wonder if I don't have any affinity, or it doesn't show because I haven't tested yet. I mean, I am not devoid of ability to make use of the elements. I can use the elemental E-rank jutsu they teach in the academy. I have to test my theory, and level up further. Until then, I should grind the genjutsu to activate the first perk. Need opinion. I don't want to include tens of chapters of dungeon escapades, even though there will be other dungeons with different themes and monsters. I don't want to write them just for the sake of increasing the chapter count, as it would compromise the quality of the story. However, if you're interested in seeing more dungeons, please let me know here. I'm publishing this novel on three different sites, so I'll make a decision based on the comments I receive. Thank you in advance. Where the hell is that annoying brat? I muttered to myself as I looked around the house but failed to find one loud blonde. Did he sneak out to eat ramen behind my back? I left the house to find him but couldn't wherever I looked. He wouldn't. I went to the place we used to fish and saw him sitting with the old senile. Naruto was cooking fish for himself and the old Hokage. The third was looking around goofily like a person who lost his mind. Although it didn't seem plausible, it was logical. Third Hokage, the god of shinobi, a man survived three world wars, Hokage over several decades, a person hailed as kindest by many, a person who lived for his image was beaten publicly. His all dirty deeds revealed in a single night. He was blamed for massacring two noble clans of Kanoha. His hidden orders, the things he let Danzo do. The fact that he let Orochimaru go. When people looked at him with scorn and disgust, he snapped. I used stealth and approached them as I decided to observe more. After Naruto finished cooking, he passed one of the fishes to the old man and started to talk. Grandpa, Kaushin told me that I should be more open with Kyubi. Naruto commented as he patted his belly. For a single second, the old man's eyes sharpened. He didn't look like the foolish self mask he started to wear ever since he was beaten by Tsunade. It was only a single second but I still caught it. The fuck? This bastard wouldn't hide clothes on his belly to feign fat old man now, would he? Why does Kaushin think so? He asked, confused. From outside, he looked like a small kid, unaware of anything. He says, it isn't his fault to be hated. Naruto started, he said, imagine being locked up for decades. Used against your will as a weapon. A tool for destruction. Trapped in people against your wish. What would you feel? And it made sense to me. I don't think Kyubi is evil. I think. He is pitiful. Hokage looked at the blonde and held the sigh in his chest. It is not that simple, Naruto. What do you mean? Naruto asked but the old man smiled goofily once again. About what? Old man asked, feigning ignorance once again. Fucking old bastard. I left them be, and walked back to the village. Yo, lazy ass and fat ass. I greeted Shikamaru and Choji sitting in the back row. And hello to you, smart ass, Choji grumbled. We are buddies so he doesn't mind me calling him fat. They are nice guys, so I became friends with them alongside Naruto. Oh, dog smelling ass is here too. I looked sideways at Kiba who was snarling at me. Hello Akamaru. How do you know my ass smells like a dog? 
Are you perhaps an ass-smelling pervert? Kiba asked triumphantly. Kiba, don't act like me. You only embarrass yourself. I am not saying your ass smells like a dog, I am saying you are an ass who smells like a dog. Idiot. Asshole. He howled. Easy boy. Easy. I said while putting my hand on top of his head. That's my boy. That's my boy. Sit. Sit. Fuck you. He shouted. How can you be so energetic in the morning? Naruto asked as he came near us too. Hello, guys. Hello, Naruto. All greeted back. Because I am awesome. That is why. I shrugged it off and sat near the window. Naruto sat in a seat before me. We used to sit together but the asshole ditched me after he got himself a girlfriend. Seems like it is hoes before brothers now. Shino, my favorite. How are you? I asked as the glasses wearing teen entered. He was always calm and quiet. He reached out his fist to bump with me. I am good. Why? Because I had a nice sleep. Thank you for asking, Kaushin san. Good, good. Hello, guys. A pink head approached and sat in front of Naruto. Hello, Naruto. Hello, Sakura san. Naruto greeted her back calmly. That's my boy. Not long after Hinata too arrived and sat beside Naruto. Hello everyone. Hello, princess. How are you today? Naruto asked, making her blush and making me puke. All good, Naruto Kuen, how are you? Hinata asked back and the shocking thing, no stutter. A little sleepy, that is all. What are we eating today? Asked the boy. Can you believe him, Hinata was bringing him bento every day and this boy had the audacity to ask what she brought. As they were talking sweetly, a blonde entered the classroom. She looked over the empty spot near me but settled beside her best friend, not for long. Ah, Eno. She is beautiful. We are playing a long game of teasing, but soon it will end in victory for both of us. Soon. After a boring history class, which I smashed, I mean I know more than any of these living fools do, so yeah, my favorite healing class started. Why my favorite you ask? Because Eno and I are taking it together. Hello, Kaushin Kuen. She greeted coyly. Hello, Pumpkin Chan. I greeted her much to her embarrassment. Now the story is interesting. When we first started to take healing class together, we were asked to work on pumpkins. For real. Since we were too amateur to work on actual humans, we had to diagnose and heal the pumpkins. Ino and I were working together while Naruto and Hinata were next to us. When Naruto used too much chakra, the pumpkin exploded, he panicked like he killed a patient, by the way. It was hilarious, pumpkin parts sprayed all over us. Some of them on Ino's face. So, I, as a gentleman, offered to clear her face. Welp, my hands were covered with pumpkin too, and I didn't have a napkin. So as the situation compelled me, I cleared her face by licking. Nothing perverted, I swear. And before the blaming crew arrives, I am ten years old as the rest of the class. I know I have a previous life, but I don't have any experience of that life. I might have died while I was ten or one hundred, I don't know. All I know is I am a ten years old boy with lots of information about fiction and a cheat. Anyways, after I licked her face, once, I said, you taste like a pumpkin. So, it stuck with her. Hello, class. I am glad to see you again. Shizun entered like a boss and greeted the class. She was a little younger than I remember her, but she is still a fine medical kunoichi. She is teaching us kids, and she is doing a damn good job. She started with chakra control and then the theory. While we're learning theories, she also demonstrated actual jutsu on real patients, but we only watched. All in all, the class was going well. After the class, four of us went to Ichiraku Ramen to celebrate our first real test. On frogs, still good. With my perks, my healing is much stronger than normal. Double cast, and the extra percentage that comes with, novice healer, increased the prowess of my mystical palm technique. Welcome girls and boys. What should I get you? Tauchi asked as we entered. Hello, 
Tachi-san. I greeted, a bowl of miso for me please. Special. Times. Guess who? A pork ramen, please, Hinata ordered. A special one too. Eno too ordered. Right away. He said and vanished inside. Instead of him, his daughter appeared and greeted us. Ah, look at the lovebirds. I am looked at us adoringly. I am San, you are going to make my pumpkin blush. She is too shy to accept it yet. I said, making Eno beat red. I, we. She mumbled but couldn't form a sentence. Ha. I am laughed as she looked at blushing Eno. Aren't you adorable? She is. I nodded sagely as I put my hand around her waist. But too shy, sigh. Caution. She shouted and wanted to storm off, but I caught her hands. Pumpkin, calm down, please. Is it bad for me to show my affection? If it is, I will stop. It is not, but not in front of everyone. She gazed at the ground while saying softly. I want everyone to know you are mine, and I am yours. What is there to be embarrassed about? I asked boldly. She looked shocked. Then nodded coyly. Good, let's eat. The food was heavenly. I had my doubts too, but this place really knows how to cook. Hell, there were even theories at the beginning of the story that Toby was actually Tuchi, and he was spying on the village secretly. Then when Atsutsukis were introduced, some said this shop owner was an alien and was spying on Indra and Ashura's incarnations all the time. Of course, all were jokes, but the fact remains, the food is damn good. Inoichi walked Ino to the door and gave me a stern warning, bring her by eight in the evening and no funny stuff, you hear me? I hear you loud and clear, father-in-law. I stood in attention and saluted. Don't call me that you little twat. Inoichi boiled in anger, just because my princess is blind temporarily, it doesn't mean you will get together for life. Wow, so uncalled for, father-in-law. This broke my tender heart. I held my chest as I gave Eno a puppy look. Cut the crap both of you. Eno stomped on the ground, Dad. Stop embarrassing me. And Co, I swear I will cancel if you act like a spoiled kid. Princess, why are you calling him with adornment? Inoichi was shot by imaginary arrows, pierced through his heart. That is enough, dear. A woman walked from inside, as she pinched Inoichi's waist. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Inoichi cried as Ino's mother, Ima smiled at me, Kaushin-chan, you are welcome to dinner after your little date. I sure will, mother-in-law. I smiled much to the old lady's amusement. Have fun kids. Don't worry, I will make sure this stinky old man doesn't follow you. You are the best, mother-in-law, I don't want shurikens to rain down on me while I kiss, Pumpkin-chan. I shouted from afar with Eno's hands in mine. Eno giggled at my silly remark as we walked down the street, her fingers tightly interlocked with mine. It was a warm summer evening, and the sun had just begun to set, painting the sky with hues of orange and pink. So, where are we going? Eno asked, breaking the comfortable silence. It's a surprise, I replied, giving her hand a gentle squeeze. But don't worry, it's not too far away. As we walked, Eno began to tell me about her day. She had spent most of it training with her father, but they had managed to squeeze in some time for her to work on her flower arrangements with Ima, which she loved doing in her free time. She even explained in detail. How it turned out. That's amazing, Eno, I said, genuinely impressed. You're so talented. Eno smiled, and her cheeks turned a light shade of pink. Thanks, Ko. I'm glad you think so. We arrived at a small park that was tucked away between two buildings. It was a quiet, peaceful spot I discovered while wandering around the village, with a small pond in the center and a bridge that spanned across it. I had brought a picnic blanket and a basket filled with food, and I spread the blanket out on the grass, motioning for Eno to sit down. I hope you like cherry tomatoes with light green salad and puddings, I said, pulling out a tray of assorted bowls from the basket. Eno's eyes lit up. I love cherries and pudding. How did you know? I have my ways, I said with a wink, passing her a pair of chopsticks. We talked and laughed as we ate, enjoying each other's company. I want to become a strong kunoichi, but I believe my talent is limited. 
Stop that right now, Missy. I said assertively. Eno was taken aback. I don't care what you think, but I know you are talented. You can doubt yourself all you want, but you cannot doubt my omni-observations. I said you are talented, and if you say you are not, it means you don't believe me. Ko. She was mad, amused and emotional all at once as she looked at me. You are a big arrogant jerk, you know that. Woman, I just said omni-observation. Of course I know I am one handsome, arrogant, amazing, one-of-a-kind jerk. You know, I'm really glad we're doing this, Eno said after a hearty giggle, her gaze fixed on the pond. I nodded in agreement, placing my arm around her and pulled her to my chest. Man, I don't know why, but it feels good to have your partner in this position. I don't care if you are into dicks or chicks, but wrapping your loved one and pulling them to your chest hits different. As the night drew to a close, I walked Eno back to her house, the moon casting a soft glow over us. It looked kinda romantic not gonna lie, so, Eno, have I ever told you about this funny jester and his girlfriend? You have a girlfriend? Eno said with a mock shock on her dainty face. Ha! Huh. I laughed dryly but secretly impressed, and way, this guy, Sokka, fell in love with this woman from a tribe far from his. The girl was sick when she was really small so her father begged the moon spirit to bless her and in the end, she got better but her hair turned all white. He was just a common boy whereas the girl was princess of the tribe, but the guy was a brave warrior, and in the end he won the heart of the girl. But as they started to open up to each other, the tribe was attacked by a really strong country, and the avatar of the moon spirit was injured. The avatar was key to balance so the girl sacrificed her life to heal the avatar and became the moon. What a shitty story is this Kaushin? Eno asked as she let go of my hand. You take that back. I said while looking at her offended. I mean why are you telling me this now? Eno asked with anger in her eyes. You are Eno. You are the moon. So, if the day comes and balance is at stake, and the world is about to be destroyed, screw the moon, screw the balance and screw the world. Because if you sacrifice yourself, I will bring you back and be very angry, okay? Oh. Eno said as she was taken aback as a red hue climbed up to her face, oh. Yeah. No one is more important than you. I looked at her eyes. We walked a little longer and soon we were at the door of her house. I had a great time, Ko, Eno said, turning to face me. Thank you for tonight. Anytime, Eno, I replied, I hope we can do it again soon. Eno smiled, and before I could say anything else, she leaned in and pressed her lips to my cheek in a soft, sweet kiss. It was brief, sadly and on the cheek, again sadly. I'll see you soon, Eno whispered before turning and disappearing inside her house. Sooner than you expect. Did you forget I am invited to dinner? I chuckled and walked in. It is going to be an awkward dinner. Let's see who is the best in class. Naruto shouted as we were forced to battle against each other. Right, let's. I lazily said while reaching my hand out Naruto grabbed it for the seal of confrontation. Begin, Iruka shouted as Naruto dashed towards me. He was not anything like he appeared in the shows. He was wearing black pants and a grey t-shirt with the Uzumaki symbol on the back. He was smart and calculating. With his endless stamina and strong physique, he was a pain in my ass. But I was not weak either. With my cheat, my body was much stronger than my peers. I grabbed Naruto's punch and swung my leg to his. He jumped to dodge by using my hand as support, and his two feet aimed at my face. I released his hand to break his balance and crouched. While he was falling, I kicked him in the chest, but he grabbed it with one hand and used the other to stand straight. His two feet in the air swirled to hit me, fortunately, my hands were still free. But with a sudden pull on the foot he was holding, he toppled me, and I was about to fall face first. I hopped on my one leg, with his two legs in my hands, while my one leg was in his. When I was in the air, I somersaulted and threw him to the edge of the ring. He regained his footing without falling down and smirked. Seems like we are still even. You wish. I smiled and dashed at him also. When I stood before him, I punched his chest, but it was only a feint. He attempted to block it, but in the nick of time, I altered the direction of my strike and connected my fist with his chin. He did a loop in the air and landed on his leg as a red bruise appeared on his face. 
Why, you? He shouted and dashed towards me. He was swift and he reached me within a second. I observed his legs to anticipate his next attack, but he was not easy to predict. With a faint double punch, he kicked my shin, then kneed my chest. You little. I grabbed his arm and kicked his face too. Enough. Good job to both of you. Irika ended the match with a smile. Seal of reconciliation, we both reached out our hands and left the stage. You are getting better, little bro. I ruffled his head. Hee hee. I will be Hokage, of course, I am. He answered. Still can't beat you though, the score is 12 to null, and of course hundreds of ties. That is normal. If I lose to my baby brother, how can I live? I said jokingly. I am not a baby. He pouted while I laughed. Ino and Hinata walked to us. Congratulations to both of you. Hinata smiled as she went to Naruto. Good job, Ko, Naruto. Ino came to my side. Over time, our relationship progressed while I was helping her in healing classes, and we were officially darlings. Thank you pumpkin. Come, give me a kiss. I said while puckered my lips. Not in front of everyone. Ino ran away in shame. While we were fooling around the battles ended and the next class started. Alright class, tomorrow is the graduation exam. You already had the written exam and learned your scores. Congratulations Kaushin, full score again. Irika said and continued. You probably will be the rookie of the year this year. Thanks, sensei, I replied with a smile. Were Hiruzen or Danzo still in power, I would have concealed my power, but with Tsunade, there was no need. Once class had ended, Naruto and I took our sweethearts to Ichiraku. Since I had been a part of his life since he was young, he had been eating healthy food, but occasionally, we would indulge in a heavenly ramen from this shop. Alright, I don't know the taste of the food in my previous life, but this ramen was the best food in all of Kanoha. Even better than the food I cook with my over 70 mastery. How is that even possible? The next day we arrived at the class for the jutsu test. Now, ever since Tsunade became Hokage, a lot had changed. There were no longer just three jutsu to learn for graduation. There were alternative graduation exams, such as the medical exam and fuin jutsu exam. Of course, anyone who could use medical jutsu or fuin jutsu could also use the three jutsu required for previous graduation. However, things had changed even further. Now, each genin had to learn ten additional jutsu that any shinobi would need in the wilderness. These included, futon, fresh air, which could be used to prevent enemies or animals from locating you by preventing the dispersion of smells. Futon, upper wind, created an area of wind flowing upwards and could be used to remove all smells by sending them upwards. Suetun, clean water, was a simple jutsu that sourced clean water from the atmosphere. Suetun, cleanse, filtered the water source to purify the water. Dotan, hole opened a small hole for various reasons, while Dotan, close, closed small holes. Katan, spark, could light a campfire with a small flame to start the fire, while Katan, smoke, created smoke to prevent animals from approaching. Raitan, static charge, created a sphere of lightning to kill bugs in the air while camping, and Raitan, taser, was not strong enough to taste but could help those on night watch stay awake. All of these jutsu were irank and not hard to learn, but some people had no talent for them. Naruto, despite all my interference, still couldn't learn them except for Futon, thanks to his natural element. Luckily, he had a genius big brother who taught him jutsu. Me? Well, being a gamer, all I had to do was touch the scrolls and they were recorded in my skill list. This cheat was awesome, but just like in the game, the scroll would be destroyed. Luckily, the ten jutsu taught in the academy were copy scrolls so even if they were destroyed, it didn't cause me any problems. Kaushin. The rookie of the year. Mizuki said with an exaggerated tone. Come, show us your talent. Sure. I walked in and started forming hand seals. Oh, since I mentioned hand seals, there is an entire branch of them under the chakra skill tree. Hand seals have four perks. Over the years, I have either used points to acquire them or mastered them on my own. The perks I have are, speedy hands, increases the speed of my hands when forming seals. There are five levels to this perk, 
and I unlocked the first three by practicing. I used 16 points to unlock the last two. Let's say that my speed of seal cannot be matched. The second perk was, chakra and hand, allowing me to understand the nature of hand seals, why a certain seal forms a certain jutsu. Points well spent, as it allowed me to comprehend seals and create my own jutsu. Of course, I did not show off in front of my sensei. I used moderate speed, faster than a genin, to create three clones. One of them resembled Tsunade, one resembled Mizuki, and one resembled Iruka. Mizuki, Iruka. How many times must I tell you? Kaoshin is a genius. Why do you test him? Naturally, ordinary clones were illusory and unable to speak. I imitated Tsunade's voice by concealing myself behind the clone. Two jutsu combined. Good job Kaoshin. A bit smug, but you earned it, praised Iruka. Thank you, sensei, I replied as I executed the following ten jutsu and demonstrated them one by one. We omitted Kawarimi as it was bothersome, and I received my headband. I chose to wear it as an armband rather than on my forehead. Congratulations, Kaoshin. Return tomorrow to learn your genin team, informed Iruka. Thank you for everything, Iruka sensei, Mizuki sensei. See you later. And with that, I vanished. Rookie 9, of course, me instead of Sasuke, graduated without any hitch. Naruto's results were stellar, falling short only to mine. Next being Hinata, followed by Ino, Shikamaru, Shino and others. Of course, despite being a fine kunoichi, Hinata and Ino graduated with the medical exam as well. There were several reasons for that, the major one was, every team ever since Tsunade became Hokage would have a member capable of healing. Despite Naruto's and my achievements in healing Jutsu, we skipped the exam so we could be put in the same team with either Ino or Hinata. We decided no one would make a fuss in case we weren't on the same team. Of course, some things didn't change at all. Just after our graduation and getting the headbands, in my case an armband, Mizuki approached us. Naruto, can I speak with you for a while? He asked. I looked at the future trader and nodded at Naruto. I of course remembered the plot and what Mizuki was, but for the benefit of the doubt, I let him be until now. Sure, he was a major asshole over the years, but that could still be attributed to his hate for Kyuubi. It didn't mean he was a traitor. Well, I wasn't strong enough to end him anyways, but yeah, I let him be. Now, he approached Naruto anyway. You guys, go ahead and order me miso ramen, I will be back pretty soon. Naruto nodded as he went away with Mizuki. Of them. I pulled two girls towards the Ichiraku while thinking what Mizuki would do. This time, Naruto earned his headband. Mizuki couldn't trick him with that. When we arrived and ordered the food, Naruto too came to our side with a restless face. He sat down and started to eat. So, what did Mizuki sensei say, Naruto? Ino asked while ironically eating a bowl of pork ramen. He, wanted to congratulate me. Yep, that is all. Naruto didn't raise his face from his miso ramen and said uneasily. Hmm, strange. Why only you and alone at that? Ino pressed but Naruto shrugged it off. After we ate and dropped the girls into their homes, I took Naruto back to our house. So, what did Mizuki say? I asked. Nothing, like I said. He wanted to congratulate me. Naruto said while evading my eyes. Naruto, I have to know, because I think he is up to no good, I said while giving him an assuring smile. What do you mean? Naruto asked. Did he tell you there is a secret exam to really become a genin? I asked. How? How did you know? Naruto asked in disbelief. Guessed. But just know, he is lying. I sighed. Of course, I could guess to some extent but, the reason why I really knew was, this, little brother, your little brother, tricked by traitor Mizuki to do a task for him, might end up with his death. As his big brother, show him the right way and protect him. Objectives, optional, inform Hokage, optional, let Naruto know the nature of the traitor. Save Naruto from his imminent death. Optional, kill Mizuki, optional, learn from scroll of seal, fake, optional, convince Tsunade to give the fake scroll of seal with real jutsu to Naruto and learn from it. Optional, loot Mizuki, Naruto, 
Mizuki is most likely a traitor. So tell me, what did he ask from you? He wanted me to steal a scroll from Hokage Tower. He said each genin to be had to complete a task as a final test. And as a shinobi, I shouldn't reveal the task given to me. Naruto said with anger and sadness. I am still stupid. No, Naruto. You just see good in people. That is a commendable quality. You are a good person. I am proud to be your brother. I calmed him down as I patted him. Let's go see Tsunade. What are we going to see Grandma Tsunade for? Naruto asked. We have a task to finish, don't we? I smirked as I pulled him over. Oh, let's do Henge first. Plain face and plain clothes, got it? Yeah. He said and turned into a regular ninja. I, too, did the henge. My henge skill tree, alteration, was at 30. The first perk at 25 allowed me to use henge with 10% less chakra, the same as ninjutsu perk. I trained and activated the perk three times already, so my henge cost 30% less chakra. And I spent points to activate the second perk. Double cast, using the same jutsu twice efficiently, making it twice stronger. So, it is safe to say that my henge jutsu is one of a kind. I sincerely believe that at the peak, not even Rinnegan can see through my henge. When we arrived at the Hokage's office, she was drowned by a mountain of papers. We entered through the door. Without asking, and she was about to wreak her anger on us, but she noticed Naruto's somewhat weaker henge. Drop the henge and come out. She ordered Naruto. Ah, man. Why can't I trick you? Naruto dropped the illusion and came out. Tsunade looked smug but when I dropped Henge too, she looked gobsmacked. What? Kaushin. I didn't know you were Henge too. Tsunade asked with surprise. Hee hee. I am a genius, it is to be expected. I answered with equal smug. Yes, yes. You are. She sighed. So, what brought you here? We have a Judas on loose, I said and did a signal for her to seal the room. She looked at my hand and AMBU guarding her disappeared. She clicked a button and a seal shield covered the room. Care to tell me what is going on? Go on Naruto. I pushed him forward and he started to explain. After our graduation, Mizuki approached me and wanted to speak with me in private. He said the exam we passed was just the first step of the real exam. To cull the herd. He started uncertainly. That bastard. Tsunade exploded in anger. Wait, is it true? Naruto asked with squinted eyes. No, what else? Tsunade too squinted her eyes and wanted him to continue. Anyway, he said that my task was to steal a scroll from the Hokage Tower. A big ass scroll in the hidden room. He even told me how to find it. Naruto ended and looked at the woman. That baseborn traitor. I will skin him. Tsunade shouted as she pulled out a bottle of sake and drank from the bottle. You can go. I will deal with it. Yes, Grandma Tsunade. Naruto was about to go but I stopped him. Hokage-sama, with all due respect. I started, Tsunade looked at me with a squint. Mizuki is no idiot. He is patient, cunning, and dangerous. If he smells something is wrong, you might let him escape, and it would be dangerous. Speech increased to 59, what do you suggest? She asked. We should let Naruto have the scroll of seals, and pull Mizuki over. When he is in our ambush, the team of your choice can bring him to justice. I suggested. Impossible. Tsunade slapped the table. I can't, under no circumstances, let the scroll of seals leave the building. It seems impossible to convince her. I shouldn't push it. I didn't say the real one, Hokage-sama, I smirked. She looked intrigued. You can create a fake one with some not-so-dangerous jutsu. After all, it would be odd if there were no jutsu in the scroll. Naruto would try to learn them and Mizuki would be convinced that it is the real scroll. Not bad. Tsunade pondered while taking another sip from the bottle. All right, I will copy the scroll, just wait here. I have to do it right, or I am screwed. Hokage-sama. I stopped her. What else? She asked with anger. 
In case he gets away with the scroll, we should take precautions. Here is the scroll. Tsunade passed it to Naruto, while the latter strapped it to his back. Be sure to learn as much as you can. They will help you. Yes, Grandma Tsunade. Naruto beamed like a kid given candy. Let me help you with that, Naruto. I walked near him and touched the thick scroll and helped Naruto to tie the scroll. As soon as I touched it, notifications appeared in front of me. Of course, I would learn them all but not now. You are okay, Kaushin. Tsunade asked. Only then I realized I was frozen while reading the notification of the Jutsu list. Yeah, sorry. I was thinking, maybe I should hide with Naruto, just to make sure he is okay. Also to make sure the scroll doesn't fall into enemy hands. That would be dangerous. If Mizuki notices you, he will escape or something more dangerous. Tsunade said. Oh, I assure you. He will not see me at all. I smirked and used Henge. The next second I turned into a kunai and fell to the ground. How spectacular! Tsunade exclaimed as she held me. Barely noticeable. Of course, I spent lots of points on this shitty perk. Of them. Inorganic henge, allowed me to henge into inorganic things. Alright, keep this close to you Naruto. Tsunade passed me over and Naruto placed me in his kunai holster. Bastard. Now, off you go. I will learn all these jutsu in a day. Naruto shouted and ran off to the dark night. To make it believable, Tsunade after half an hour raised the alarms and let everyone know Naruto stole the scroll of sealing. While every chunin in the village was looking for the blonde, Naruto was in the opening near the forest, learning jutsu. I can't learn Rasengan without prior training. It is too hard. He complained. At least I learned Kage Bunshin. Use clones to learn other jutsu. My voice traveled to his ears. What, that works? He asked but I didn't answer. He immediately formed five clones and each pair learned the rest of the three jutsu. Yes. I learned this one too. Naruto exclaimed as he threw a shuriken, formed seals and it became tens in a second. There are no tiles in here, so I have to use this one later, but it seems like I learned it too. Naruto nodded while looking at the last one. This one is too hard. Well, well. If it isn't my favorite student, Naruto. A voice arrived behind his back, and Naruto jerked back. Irika sensei what are you doing here? Naruto asked. Shit. I forgot he would find Naruto first. Naruto, idiot, did you steal the scroll of seals? Irika asked. But, but. This was the exam Mizuki sensei gave to me. Naruto said in panic when he was questioned by his former teacher. What exam? Irika asked in shock. Can he be, before he could finish, a barrage of kunai rained down on two of them. Irika pushed Naruto away and kunai pierced all over his body. Naruto, give me the scroll, Mizuki said while looking down on them. Irika wanted Naruto to run while he stalled Mizuki, but Naruto wasn't willing to. He knew ANBU was near, all he had to do was delay Mizuki. But I long ago informed Naruto to battle himself. Naruto formed a seal and hundreds of him appeared in front of Mizuki. Although surprised, Mizuki was a lot more clear-headed. Naruto wasn't the shinobi who couldn't even form a clone now. His taijutsu was spectacular and he was talented, making Mizuki much more cautious. He didn't underestimate him from the beginning. Mizuki and Naruto battled for over three minutes and ANBU was about to arrive. Naruto, reluctantly, fished out his last kunai and threw it. It flew by near Mizuki's head, and when it was on his back, with a cloud of smoke I appeared on his back. With a kunai in my hand and Fuma Shuriken in his, I stabbed him in the back of his neck. Perfect. Mizuki fell to the ground and died in mere seconds. Naruto, give me the scroll so I can destroy it. I asked and he passed. I had no time. He passed the scroll and I wrapped ten explosive tags on the scroll. I walked a little distance away from the duo but made sure they could still see me. I activated the explosive tags and threw the big ass scroll, while accepting the notification. Jutsu, Multi Kage Bunshin has been learned Jutsu, Shuriken Kage Bunshin has been learned Jutsu, Roof Tile Shuriken has been learned Jutsu, Raisin Gan has been learned, 
that is it? Meh. No flying thunder god, no dead consuming seal, no eight trigram sealing technique, and not even Edo Tensei. I am disappointed. I risked so much for this. I spent over 50 perk points, god damn it. The scroll vanished at the same time tags exploded, and no evidence was left behind. Ko, are you okay? Naruto asked while helping Irika with healing Jutsu. I am fine, how is Sensei? I asked while searching Mizuki's body. Since he burned bridges, he gathered everything he owned and was ready to run away. On his body, there were two sealing scrolls. One for Jutsu and one for weapons and money. I put them all in inventory. After I picked up two Fuma Shuriken, I walked near Irika and started to heal him too. Kaushin, why were you with Naruto, and in kunai form? Irika asked. We were aware of Mizuki's ploy, Irika. Tsunade arrived as she checked on Irika. Nice job, two of you. Thanks, Grandma. Naruto said sheepishly. Thanks, Hokage-sama, I answered too. Scroll. She asked. Turned into ashes. I answered. She looked at the ashes not far from us and to Irika who nodded back. Learned any jutsu, Naruto? Learned all beside Raisingan. Naruto sighed, it is too hard. No worries, you can learn that later. Tsunade smiled and looked at the body on the ground. Kaushin, are you okay? Tsunade asked. She was asking if I was okay after killing a person. I was. I didn't feel anything at all. I am. Tsunade-sama. He was going to kill Naruto, I couldn't let that happen. I said with a fake grimace. Okay, if you need, you can talk to me. Thank you, Hokage-sama. Hokage-sama. Irika started. If you knew, why did you trick us? I had to. She sighed. If I didn't alert the village, Mizuki would know something was amiss. I understand. Thank you Hokage-sama. Irika answered. Tsunade looked at the two shuriken in my hand then the body, fine. You can keep the loot. Ehe. I laughed as the night ended. We went home with Naruto, and collapsed in his bed. I didn't need to sleep as always, but the village was in turmoil tonight. Can't sneak out for a dungeon tonight. I entered the class with Naruto, Hinata, and Ino in tow. We sat near the back and waited for Irika to enter. Today, we were going to meet with our Jounin sensei and begin our Genin career. Irika entered not long after and started with an opening speech. I am proud of all of you for being able to graduate. I know the exams were a lot harder than the previous years but be assured that Tsunade-sama did it for your own good. Anyone who graduated under these conditions will have a better future. True, there were a lot fewer people who were able to graduate. They were mostly cannon fodders but still, now that graduation requirements were a lot harder, those who were able to graduate were better than the small fries. Teams were the same, the same as in I don't know the first six. Though, there were a few surprises due to my past actions. Team 7. Irika started, Kaushin, Uzumaki Naruto, Hyuga Hinata. Yes. Naruto and Hinata shouted at the same time and hugged, while Ino and I were sad. I hugged her too. It is fine. Some other team needs you to lead them. I whispered to her ears. Hmm. She nodded with a blush. Team 8, Inazuka Kiba, Abirem Shino, Hirono Sakura. Team 10, Akimichi Chuji, Nara Shikamaru and Yamanaka Ino. My best wishes for your new career, and remember the will of fire. With it, he left and Jounin Sensei came to pick their students. Except ours. So, who is our Sensei? Asked Naruto. Didn't you listen to Irika Sensei? It is Kakashi Sensei. I said with a sigh. Is he good? Naruto asked. Is he good? I asked with exaggerated shock. Graduated from the academy at the age of five, became a chunin at six and jounin at eleven. Tell me if he is good. Wow. He is a legend. Naruto exclaimed. I heard of him from father. He is known as Kakashi of the Sharingan or Kapi Ninja Kakashi. Hinata added. Sharingan. What is that? 
Naruto asked. You are truly an idiot, Naruto. I sighed. Hinata you deal with your boyfriend. Sharingan is one of the three. She started to explain while we waited. Kakashi was the last person with Sharingan in Kanoha. I killed Sasuke, which kinda caused Itachi to kill Danzo. How tricky fate is sometimes. After a while, Kakashi entered through the gate while the three of us were working on Fuinjutsu. Naruto was a talent despite being an idiot, and Hinata didn't like fighting so healing Jutsu and Fuinjutsu were her cup of tea. When Kakashi entered and saw us he said, my first impression is. I like you. You are late, Naruto shouted. Now, now. A cute girl stopped me, so I danced. Liar. Naruto shouted. Was she hot? I asked. She was. Nice. You might be my favorite student. Kakashi I smiled as he flickered to the roof. We followed. Now, let's introduce ourselves. Why don't you start first, Sensei? I asked. Hmm, sure. He said, I'm Hitaki Kakashi. Things I like and things I hate. I don't feel like telling you that. My dreams for the future, never really thought about it. As for my hobbies. I have lots of hobbies. Now you, Blondie. Which one? Naruto asked. You, with the whiskers. Kakashi sighed. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. I like Hinata-chan, Kaushin, Grandma Tsunade, Ino, and ramen, and I really like to eat ramen with my friends. I hate waiting for ramen after water is poured. My dream is to be Hokage, the strongest shinobi in the village, and when I do, I will bring back Sasuke's brother to the village to make him apologize. Okay, good. Next. My name is Hyuga Hinata. My dream is to help Naruto become Hokage and help the village. I don't like fighting, so I want to master Fuinjutsu and healing jutsu. I also like spending time with Naruto, Kaushin and Ino. I also love my family, especially my sister. You. Kakashi pointed at me. Hmm, never thought before. Now that I think of it, I should have. Alright, my name is Kaushin, no last name. My dream is to become strong enough to prevent anyone from taking away people I care about, and destroy those even thinking of it. I like working out and getting stronger, I also like spending time with my friends. I used to think I should work out all the time so I could become stronger as soon as possible, but I realized I should spend time with my friends as much as I can. Duty is important for sure, but those who ignore their friends for power and duty are thrash. Kakashi looked at me shocked for a full minute. Just the effect I wanted. I could quote a beta word by word but implying the same meaning with different words would have a better effect and less suspicion. Sensei, are you okay? Hinata asked when she saw he was frozen. Yeah, sorry. Now, tomorrow at 7 in the morning we will meet in training ground 7 for your final exam. Kakashi said while looking cold again. What do you mean final exam? Haven't we already passed the exam phase? Naruto asked. Graduating was just the first phase. If you don't pass the exam tomorrow, you will be sent back to the academy. That can't be. Naruto cried. Oh, and come without eating, or you might throw up. With it, he vanished. What are we going to do? I don't want to go back to the academy. Naruto started to panic. Cool down, little brother. I pulled his collar to make him sit. We three are the best in the class, if we can't pass, no one can. Just calm down. Oh right. Naruto sighed in relief. All right. We will ace the exam tomorrow. Sure we will, I smirked. Seven in the morning, three of us were standing in front of the training ground. I knew Kakashi would be late, and we had to eat, but I just let it be. Hell, even I didn't eat, whelp, I don't need to eat. After some hours, Kakashi arrived. You are late. Naruto shouted. Now, now. A black cat crossed my path, so I had to take a detour. Kakashi said goofily. Liar. Naruto shouted. Was Niko-chan cute? I asked. It was okay. Kakashi smiled back. Anyway, this clock is set to 12 o'clock. Before noon, 
you have to take these two bells from me. Otherwise, you will not be able to eat lunch. I will tie you to logs over there and eat in front of you. We were tricked. Naruto cried. We sure did. I sighed. Sensei, there are two bells. Hinata asked. Well, two of you will pass and the third will fail and return to the academy. Kakashi smiled as he explained. It can be one of you or all of you. Use your shuriken and kunai. Attack me with intent to kill, or you will not be able to take them. No one complained this time, because unlike the original, there was no useless Pinket, nor stupid Naruto. Welp, overly stupid. You will start when I say go. Go. On me. I shouted as I dashed off to the forest. Naruto and Hinata followed behind me as we hid in the forest. I knew Kakashi wouldn't follow us, so I sat on the ground and started to think. Why are we running, Ko? We need to battle with Sensei. Naruto asked with a whisper. He is a Jounin fool. We need to make a plan first. I said. Hinata, can you see him? She activated her Byakugan without hand seals and looked at the opening. He is reading a book. Good, now we all know each other since we always train together, but if you learned anything new, let me know. Nothing new, Naruto reported. Nothing new on my side either. Hinata too reported. Alright, this is the plan. You got it? I asked. Yeah, sounds good. Hmm. Okay, let's go. Kakashi looked at the forest. Here they come. He thought to himself and looked at twenty Naruto and single Hinata, and Kaushin. Not bad. He praised as he put the book back in his bag. Seems like I won't be able to read it. It is stupid of you to think you could from the start. Naruto taunted as he charged. I will test my power, you two stay back. Sai, here I thought you were smart. Kakashi looked deadpan as he parried Naruto's attacks. First lesson, Taijutsu. Naruto punched his head, but Kakashi easily deflected and appeared behind him. Kanoha's secret jutsu, 1000 years of death, with a tiger seal, he pierced Naruto's nether region, but with a puff, the clone dissipated. Let's attack together, Hinata shouted and charged. Kakashi looked at the kunoichi and formed hand seals. Second lesson, Genjutsu. While Hinata stopped on her track, 19 Naruto charged at Kakashi. While Kakashi was deflecting all of their attacks, another two Naruto appeared behind him and held him tight. One of the Narutos threw a kunai and formed hand seals. Kage Shuriken Jutsu. The kunai multiplied as all of them flew towards Kakashi. The Jounin looked unimpressed. Finally got you, Naruto shouted and he punched the hell tight Kakashi while bunch of kunai were flying towards them behind his back. Even if Kakashi dodged the punch, the kunai would rain on them. But when the punch landed, it was another Naruto in his place. Naruto who was punched dissipated to smoke. And when Kunai appeared, other Narutos too dissipated with smoke. Such an advanced Kawarimi. Kaushin sighed as he looked around. When he found the target, he formed hand signs. Raitun, lightning ball, he can use advanced jutsu despite being a fresh out genin. Kakashi was impressed and formed hand seals of his own. Katan, Fireball, the fire jutsu dispelled the lightning and moved towards Naruto and Kaushin even faster. When all clones dissipated Kakashi appeared from the ground and grabbed the ankles of Naruto and Kaushin, pulled them to the ground. Third lesson, ninjutsu, well, you all lost, Kakashi said with a deadpan face while looking at the Hinata under Genjutsu and two boys on the ground. But all of a sudden all three of them dissipated. All three. Kakashi was shocked. He looked behind and deflected the Fuma Shuriken coming towards him. Shit, Kage Shuriken. There was another Shuriken under the original moving towards him, he couldn't even deflect it at this point. With no other choice, he jumped. But when Shuriken passed him it turned into Naruto and jumped on him. Kakashi was still in the air and his hand was full. The first Shuriken he deflected turned into Hinata and she too grabbed his arms. Kakashi looked at both of them in shock when he felt something moving on his belt. He looked down and saw the absence of bells. How? He looked at Kaushin in shock. 
a shinobi must see the hidden beneath the hidden smirked the blonde boy with purple eyes. You turned into stone when other clones got destroyed. You used the smoke to your advantage to use henge. Very good. I am impressed. Kakashi didn't hold back his praises. If you had used your Sharingan it would be all useless. Kaushin retorted. It would, but I didn't and you won. Kakashi was happy. We passed the secret test too, right? Since we work together. Kaushin asked. How do you know? Kakashi asked. This test, first conducted by 3rd Hokage Sarutobi Hiruzen, then Toad San Ninjiraya, then 4th Hokage Namike's Minato, your own sensei. Kaushin started to list while Kakashi was gobsmacked. I like reading, the boy shrugged. Yes, you passed my test. Congratulations kids, from now on we are Team 7. Kaushin, spectacular planning and display. When I am not around, you are the team leader. Yes, sir. Phew, that was harder than I thought. Although I used a few tactics from the original series, I was able to see it through. From the start, only my body was real. All the Naruto's and Hinata were clones of his. While I mingled between them. Staying out of the combat as much as I could, I tried to give the impression of being a clone too. While I asked Hinata and Naruto to circumvent the forest to find an opening for a throw. I lent one of my Fuma shuriken I stole from Mizuki to Naruto at the beginning, so Kakashi would see it on Naruto's back even before we start the fight. He already knew how to cast Kage Shuriken and tricked Kakashi with the hidden Fuma Shuriken who was himself. Well, the one he threw first was himself too. He used a clone for that. When I cast one of the few jutsu I knew, I kinda let Kakashi know I was the real deal. That is why he was so surprised when all of us vanished all of a sudden, but it was my plan from the beginning. An experienced jounin such as Kakashi would see Henge if cast in front of him, but my attainments in Henge weren't any lower than a jounin. When perk, inorganic henge, added to the equation, it could be said my transformations were monstrous. Oh yeah, I tested my elemental affinity in my last year. Surprisingly it was the lighting element. And as I predicted when I learned my affinity, the perk, elemental affinity, became one-fifth. It meant I could learn other affinities too without using perks. After all, first affinity costs 10 perk points, second 20. So probably, the third will cost 30. Damn system, trying to rob me. Tomorrow afternoon, we will meet here and train. Now go and rest. Kakashi informed as he flickered away. He was soon in the Hokage room. Kakashi, we were waiting for you for hours. Kurinai rebuked. Sorry, it took me longer than I thought. Kakashi sheepishly answered as he looked at the room. His friends were all here. He looked at the smoking jounin with an uncertain gaze and sighed. Sadly Asuma was carrying the sins of his father. Did your team pass, Kakashi? Tsunade asked. Team 7 passes with flying colors. The teamwork was spectacular. Jenin Kaushin is both smart and capable. He was able to plan and see through the test. He is a great seedling. Naruto has great physical abilities, and loyalty to the team. His chakra is monstrous. Hinata is naive and that can be dangerous on the battlefield, but I believe she is the element that will keep the team balanced. Kakashi reported. He would be too lazy to do so if it was Hiruzen, but Tsunade was too dangerous to play with. That they are. Tsunade nodded. Good work. Why did Kakashi get the first three? My genins were bottom of the bottom so they failed. A nameless jounin asked with a grievance. Because he is the best jounin, Tsunade said with anger. If you want to have a say in here, increase your power. Yes, Hokage-sama. The nameless jounin answered with shame. Good, it seems like new reforms we implemented work. A total of five teams passed, while I was expecting three only. Tsunade nodded. Five? Kakashi asked with surprise. Every year, only a few civilian-born genin would pass the test. This year, a prodigy healer already passed with Kurinai's team. Then it meant there were two teams formed of civilians only able to pass. Oh, you were late, you missed it. Tsunade answered, Genmaz and Iroha Hyuga's teams also passed. New generation is coming strong, Kakashi commented. 
They damn do, Tsunade answered with a smile. Train them well. Dismissed. Yes, Hokage-sama. Chakra, 3551 Genjutsu, Illusion 2042 Summon Jutsu, Conjuration 0 Ninjutsu, Destruction 2550 Taijutsu, Heavy Light Armor Slash Block 4551 Healing Jutsu, Restoration 1545 Henge, Alteration 3050 Fuen Jutsu, Enchanting 2547 Smithing, 1535 Bukajutsu, 1-2-handed 3552 Ranged, 3051 Sneak, 4563 Speech, 5056 Alchemy, 0 Miscellaneous, 7073 Over the years my abilities increased but it was getting harder and harder to increase my skills. Luckily, I found a new source of perk points to spend, my perks were getting better as well. Chakra Control, Chakra Control 3 fifths, Speedy Hands Asterisk, Chakra and Hand 1 fifth, Genjutsu, Novice Illusionist 3 fifths, Double Cast 2 fifths, Realistic Imagination 1 fifth, Ninjutsu, Novice Shinobi 3 fifths, Double Cast 2 fifths, Elemental Affinity 2 fifths, Taijutsu, Iron Muscles Asterisk, Iron Bones Asterisk, Heal, Novice Healer 3 fifths, Double Cast 2 fifths, Curing Hand Asterisk, Henge, Who Am I? 3 fifths, Double Cast 2 fifths, Inorganic Henge Asterisk, Fuenjutsu, Perfect Calligraphy 2 fifths, Bukajutsu, Armsman 2 fifths, Ranged, Aim 3 fifths, Multiple Throw Asterisk, Sneak, Stealth 4 fifths, Backstab Asterisk, Light Foot Asterisk, Asterisk at the end of the perk means there is only one level to this perk. All these cost me close to 100 perk points. I am just 41 level and most of the perk points came from my blood and sweat shed on the first floor of the dungeon. Luckily, after I discovered my elemental affinity, I sneaked into the library and learned a few low-level jutsu. Oh, and for some reason, they keep the copy of the jutsu hidden away. Only one jutsu is in the library to check them out. Then you have to go to the clerk to ask for a copy. I, luckily, found a few jutsu with copies lying around, otherwise I wouldn't learn jack's hit. Sadly, the higher level jutsu and copies were protected by seals. Even with the broken stealth, it would be impossible for me to enter there. I know, I tried. Light foot, in the game prevents the player from triggering the traps. I purchased it with hard-earned points in hope of passing those seals, but it still alerted the lady overlooking the library. Luckily, I was able to weasel my way out with speech or it would end badly. I also started tree climbing exercises with Naruto and others. Since Tsunade, chakra control classes were even more extreme, we learned those skills easily. After all, without chakra control one couldn't learn Fuenjutsu or Healing Jutsu. One bright side to all of these, because of my efforts, the perks points required in Genjutsu skill tree had been acquired through the dungeon. I didn't allot any points to other skills yet, I was already having a hard time finishing these. I was stronger than a genin, sure, but so were Naruto, Hinata, and Ino. My cheat was awesome, but I wasn't focusing on a single aspect only. If I were to focus on only one skill and one perk under that skill, I would be close to the max at that skill, but I wasn't. There is no rush, I will get stronger at my pace. I don't have to stand against Kaga level opponents in my early teens. There are adults who can fight in my place. Over the years, I also found two more dungeons. One in Senju compound the other one in Uchiha, and both are, yeah, zombie themed. After all, both clans are almost extinct. Their levels are the same as the other ones and although the monsters are weaker, they are a lot more crowded. I switch between the dungeons to see the pattern, but so far the perk point drop seems arbitrary. Once I cleared the dungeons 15 times in a row without a perk point, and once three of them dropped back to back. Also, only bosses are dropping perk points, so when I tried the second level, the two-tailed foxes didn't drop perk points at all. Imagine my disappointment. So why even bother with high-level dungeons? Higher drop rate bro. The harder the boss, the higher the rate and value of the drops. The same goes for other drops. Three-tailed fox at the second level of the dungeon rarely drops, medium potion. Believe me, they are treasures. Anyway, I finally finished the quest I accepted when I started the academy. Jen and you started the academy to become a full-fledged shinobi. Your path is dangerous. You should pass through the fire and swim through hell. But when you do, a new dungeon will appear for you. Finish with the highest score to be on the same team as your brother Dash, optional, 
learn an elemental jutsu besides those taught in the academy dash, optional, learn two other mandatory branches, fuin jutsu, healing jutsu, dash, optional, steal the bells dash, optional, impress your jounin sensei quest completed with the notification, a new skull appeared on my map. It was pointing at the city center. I left my bed and sneaked out in excitement. As I approached the skull, a text appeared in front of me. Dragon Realm, enter. Today our training with my new team will finally start. Yay! I am excited. I really am, because to access more jutsu, I have to ask my sensei and after he approves I can enter the library to learn a couple of jutsu. See, the problem is, sensei wouldn't let their students learn too many jutsu. Because mastering one is better than learning too many. In my case, at least the beginner level mastery, is no problem. I can learn them with a touch, but I too have to increase my proficiency over my skills. Sadly this is not like the game. I do learn the jutsu but they are still not at their peak. Oh, dragon realm, right. I did enter the realm for only a second. Shorter than a second. A zeptosecond. It was the trillionth of a billionth of a second right. Anyways, as soon as I entered the new dungeon, a land filled with flying dragons appeared in front of me. It was cool and all, but they all noticed me like I noticed them. There, in their souls was a peace I eager. It was beckoning me, and probably the same went for them, so when I entered, tens of pairs of giant dragon eyes locked on me. It was, dreadful. I left the dungeon and thank God, I could leave it unlike the other dungeons. But in that zeptosecond I was in there, I saw something I was looking for, for all this while, the word walls. Yes, the true blue shout carved walls. Many of them. It seems like I wasn't just born with the Skyrim system, but also as the dragonborn. Thank you very much, I accepted the name already. So yeah, I am Dovakian in the truest sense. But again, dragons, scary. So, it will take a while for me to visit there again. Good morning love birds. I greeted the hugging couple. Naruto would leave early to take his girlfriend from. Hyuga compound and escort her to, whelp, everywhere. So, we came separately. Good morning, Ko. So, wanna wager how late Sensei is gonna be? I asked while waiting. Yesterday, he was four hours late, so it should be about the same. Naruto pondered. Maybe it was a test too, so he can be here any second. Hinata asked. Yeah, sure. I laughed and looked at Naruto. Hours. Loser buys a new kunai set. Sure. Naruto beamed as we waited. And, hey. How do you know, he was late for 2 hours and 13 minutes. Closer to my guess, so I win. Hello my cute Jenin. He I smiled. You are early. Naruto shouted. Now, now. You see there was a huge traff, wait. You said I was early? He asked. Ha. Huh. Naruto and I bet how late you would be and he said you would be four hours late, and I said two. I won. Betting is wrong. He looked, angry. A shinobi must abstain from overindulging in the three vices, sex, alcohol and money. Says the sensei reading smut all the time, not judging, I wish I could purchase them. I mumbled. You can't. He asked, then coughed, I mean you shouldn't. Old enough to kill and die, not old enough to read smut. Stupid rules. Anyways, today I will help you to overcome your weak points. Be it jutsu, strategy, or confidence. He said and formed two clones. Now, let's start. One of the clones picked Naruto while the other took Hinata away and he and I stayed back. What do you wish to learn? Jutsu. You use right on right? It is my main element too. He said with a smile. And Katan. I informed humbly. Double elemental affinity? He asked in shock. Yes, sir. I said and cast Katan, fireball to the sky. Alright, I am proficient in both elements. Kakashi nodded. Let's test your chakra control and volume, shall we? Alright. I said and walked towards the three nearby. When I did, I directed chakra to the sole of my feet and started to walk on the tree until I was upside down under a branch. 
All right master at tree climbing already, very good. Kakashi nodded, impressed. Now the volume. How are we going to test that? I asked. Hmm, how many fireballs can you fire without stopping? He asked. Around eight? I said unsure. It did sound little, but it wasn't. Considering I am a genin and my body is still small. I mean I am not an Uzumaki with a giant reserve nor any other clan with moderate extra. I am a civilian born and my chakra reserves were pitiful at birth. Thanks to my cheat, I have better chakra reserves and control but that is it. Using a C-rank jutsu eight times back to back is a big achievement. Considering Kakashi passes out after ten minutes of intense battle and a couple of A-rank jutsu. Pretty good for a genin. You can learn A-rank jutsu. Kakashi smiled. I have a couple of Raitun Jutsu I invented, I can teach you some of them. Thank you, Sensei. Can you take me to the library to select one too? I asked. What do you want to learn from the library? He frowned. I can't take you there, sadly, but I can take the scrolls you want. I wanted to learn a couple of Genjutsu to increase my options. I said truthfully. I still needed more Genjutsu ones in case I needed them in situations where I couldn't use the ones I knew. There were different types of Genjutsu that could be used under different circumstances after all. Even pain, with mighty Rinnegan caught in auditory Genjutsu after all. I can do that. He smiled once again, and started to explain the Jutsu he wanted to teach. First was, Sirank Raitun, Lightning Beast Tracking Fawn. Original Jutsu. It was one of my favorite jutsu in the original series. Sadly, Raitan was one of the most ignored elements in the series. There weren't too many jutsu shown. But in real life, there were more C-rank jutsu, such as my lightning ball. The other C-rank jutsu is Raitan, lightning zap. You simply cover your hands with lightning to attack the enemy in close range. It will stun the enemy and increase the penetrative power of your taijutsu. He showed the hand seals of two attacks then showed a couple of katan sirank jutsu. I will teach you birank jutsu after you master these four. He smiled and looked serious. Now you have an hour, after that we will spar to see your level in one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, sensei. I saluted and focused on hand seals. Thanks to chakra and hands, perk, I was proficient in hand seals and their effects on chakra circulations. Hand seals are just a medium to lead the chakra into designated points. Chakra originates from groins, traveling certain pathways to form the required form. When form is completed and the volume is adequate, jutsu manifests. And when mastered, chakra can be led to those points with less or no hand seals too. Like how Kakashi used Kawarimi when he was testing us. His hands were locked, but he was able to switch himself just by moving his chakra. This perk also allowed me to understand the nature of hand seals. It is kinda language. By forming the hand seals, you create a sentence. The sentence means the jutsu you want to create. It is complicated. Hell, the word complicated doesn't do justice on this shit, but, it is understandable. After training for one hour, I was able to form the four jutsu sensei taught me. Raitun, lightning beast tracking fong raitun, lightning zap katan. Phoenix Fire Technique Katan, Dragon Fire Technique they were okay. I still have Raisingan, an A-rank Jutsu, and a cheat can increase the prowess of my Jutsu. Alright, time to spar. Kakashi appeared once again with Hinata and Naruto. Seemed like they ended their training too. Start. Kakashi shouted as I disappeared from where I was standing. With my, stealth, it wasn't easy for even Kakashi to find me when I wasn't close. Looks like I have to use this. Kakashi raised his headband and a Sharingan appeared. He looked around to see where I was hiding. Too bad, I already took precautions. There you are. Kakashi charged at me. But it was only a Kage Bunshin. I had already asked Naruto to teach me and he readily accepted, so I could use it without anyone suspecting me. Even when I learned the technique directly from the scroll, nobody would suspect me. Fortunately, Kakashi was unaware that I had also learned Kage Bunshin. I know that advanced Sharingan can see through the real body among the clones. However, Kakashi didn't have the necessary chakra reserves to train his Sharingan to its full potential, at least not during the first part of the story. 
Additionally, since I wasn't present, Kakashi wasn't able to see through my clone. Hell, even the Rinnegan failed to detect the lightning clone during Pain's battle with Kakashi. When Kakashi charged at my clone with Chunin level speed, the clone was still able to form hand seals at a moderate speed. Fortunately, my, speedy hands, perk was fully charged, allowing me to form hand seals at the speed of sound, though I preferred to keep this ability hidden for the time being. When Kakashi was a short distance from the clone, it completed the jutsu and sprayed the ball of fire. Katan, Fireball. Ninjutsu increased to 52, not now. Swaytun, Water Wall. Kakashi created a wall of water, causing the area to become covered in vapor. Everything according to Kikaku, plan. Kakashi followed his instincts and moved towards the clone, while I appeared nearby and quickly formed hand seals. Raitun, Lightning Beast Tracking Fawn. It said, Beast, right? Not a hound. So, I made some tweaks to the jutsu while practicing. I conjured a worm-like floating creature connected to my hand with a thin line of lightning chakra, and used it to charge the evaporated water with lightning. Water is conductive, as is vapor. When my jutsu interacted with the vapor, it charged fully with lightning. As Kakashi approached my clone, it dissipated due to the currents in the vapor. Kakashi was zapped by the charged vapor, but only slightly. He turned to look at me, and thanks to Sharingan, he could see me as clear as day. He flickered and appeared next to as I let the lightning beast go, and drew a kunai to deflect the attack aiming at my shoulder. He was strong. The cyclops beast was fucking too strong. The kunai slipped out of my grip, slicing my hand between my thumb and index finger. Wincing in pain, I quickly jumped back and used my mystical palm technique to heal the wound using the double cast perk. In just a few seconds, the cut had disappeared completely. Expertly applied mystical palm. Kakashi praised. Thanks. I nodded while staring back. After staring at each other for a few seconds, we both charged forward simultaneously. He attacked with tens of shuriken while I used single seal kawarimi. When the shuriken landed on a log, he looked around to find me. I used shadow clone jutsu once again, creating two clones. One of the clones dashed away as fast as possible, while I stood back with the other clone and we charged two jutsu. Katan, fireball, raitan, lightning ball, when two balls collided with Kakashi simultaneously, an explosion erupted. Although Kakashi had already moved away from the center of the blast, he watched in awe. While it wasn't an unprecedented feat, it was still impressive for a genin to accomplish. Kakashi quickly dashed away from me and the clone that had fired the jutsu, intercepting the running clone. He used his own ninjutsu to attack this time, catching my clone off guard. I watched in awe as Kakashi emerged from the ground with, Dotan, rending Drill Fong, punching the clone on the chin. As the smoke from the clone's dissipation cleared, I knew it was the perfect opportunity to act. The clone already fired tens of shuriken with ninja wire attached, and used, Kage Shuriken Jutsu. Boy did this attack also copied the ninja wire, yes it did. The shurikens pulled Kakashi towards a nearby tree, and I quickly took over the ninja wire from my clone. With the wire in my control, I unleashed the katan, dragon fire technique, guiding the flames through the wire and towards the trapped Kakashi. But sadly, in the next second, Kakashi disappeared into a burst of lightning. A hand touched my shoulder and I heard a voice say, Alright, that's enough. Well done. Thank you, sensei. I ran out of chakra anyway. Who is next? He asked and as expected Naruto jumped out. Their battle was less, entertaining. Naruto's arsenal of jutsu was a lot more limited. He was only exploiting Kage Bunshin, then firing hundreds of shuriken with hundred clones. Then using Kage shuriken jutsu with hundred clones to create thousands of shuriken. Strong, yes, but almost no one dies from shuriken in Naruto world. Still, by combining futon, Great breakthrough with thousand shuriken even gave hard time to Kakashi. In the end, he mulled his way into the earth and caught Naruto by pulling him down. Hinata's battle was even worse. She hated fighting, despite being good at it. Kakashi did his best while training, but she was still too uncertain when using attacks. She was afraid to hurt a Jounin. In the end, she lost. Alright, it is already better than I expected. 
starting from tomorrow, we will start taking missions. Every second day we will train again. Yes, finally missions. Naruto shouted in excitement. Don't want to burst your bubble Naruto, but most of the missions we will take in the first few months will not be what you are expecting, I said with a sigh. What do you mean? Naruto asked. D-rank missions are mostly walking the dogs, painting the fences, clearing the weeds, catching house pets, and similar easy tasks, Hinata explained. What? Why? Naruto asked with actual tears in his eyes. Because they will allow us to bond better and increase our team play. Now, dismissed. Yes, sir. Hinata and I answered while Naruto was crying on his knees. Team 7 reports to take a D-rank mission. Kakashi said when we entered the room. Tsunade was seated behind the desk, and from the look of it against her will. Shizun was nearby, forcing her to work while her eyes were begging for an escape. Ah, uh, Team 7. How was the training? She asked. It was spectacular, Hokage-sama. These three are monsters. Kakashi said with an eye smile. And how is the rookie of the year? Stop. I interjected before Kakashi could say anything. Everyone turned to look at me curiously. Don't you know a man shouldn't be praised to his face? Isn't it arrogant for you to assume he will praise you? Tsunade asked. Not arrogance, but pride, Hokage-sama. I said humbly. Little shit is good with words too. The Senju princess asked after a sigh, all right, all right. So, what kind of quest do you want, Kakashi? Something simple to get used to the mission process, writing a report, team formation and payment. Kakashi answered after thinking for a while. He was a much better teacher than he was in the anime. It was probably because of Tsunade and his new identity as a village council member. How about painting the fences for old Hana? Tsunade pulled out a scroll and looked over. Savior, paint the fences for old Hana, take a look around at the house to see if anything amiss dash, optional, report your findings to your sensei dash, optional, solve the trouble on your own side. First mission and there is something troublesome. Team 7 will take the mission. Kakashi took the scroll and we left in tow. Old Hana's house was at the edge of the village, close to the forest. It was on the other side of the clan area, so it was pretty desolate. When we arrived, an old woman was waiting with cookies at the gate. Of course there were cookies, this place was obviously on the dark side. Welcome, welcome, little ninjas. Here, I made some cookies, and there is milk. The woman greeted us. Thank you. I nodded and took a hot cookie. The taste was, amazing. Holy ramen. Naruto exclaimed. This is good. It certainly is. Kakashi nodded. I failed to see him eating. Let's get to work. Can you show us the equipment please, Hanasan? Well of course. Follow me. She took us to the back of the house. There were fences entrapping the garden around the house. It wasn't big nor small, all in all it would take two days for a civilian to finish it. With three ninjas it shouldn't take more than a few hours. Please color them with white, yellow and cyan in order. One white, one yellow, and one cyan. Old woman requested as she showed us the dyes. We will start working, Hana-san. Kakashi nodded and sat on a bench in the garden. Now, my cute little Jenin, start working. Yes, sir. I walked to the bucket full of dye and kicked it lightly. It wasn't as viscous as I expected. Nor fluid. It was a little thickened. What are you doing, Ko? Naruto asked as he took off his coat. Which was gray in color, not orange. Never orange. I am thinking if I can use Swayton to use this dye. I answered while thinking of suitable hand signs. Is it possible? Hinata asked. It should be. Jutsu are way of controlling elements. Since dye is liquid, it should be controllable with chakra. I nodded. Each of us should take a color and paint the fences by skipping two. Naruto, don't screw it up. Why are you warning me? Naruto said with a pout. Anyway, Hinata white, Naruto yellow and leave Cyan to me. All right. Off they go. If I recall correctly, 
there was a technique utilizing water bodies to create tentacle-like attacks. What was its name, Water Fong Bullet? If I can reduce the swirling motion and the impact, and increase the finesse. It worked. Hinata shouted in shock. I finally managed to do it after ten minutes. In the meantime, Hinata and Naruto painted half of the fences. Sweitun, easy painting. New Jutsu learned, the cyan-colored dye moved out of the bucket like a tentacle and with my will moved towards the fences. Near the fences, I split it into twenty thinner tentacles and they landed on the area I wanted them to. Hee <laughs> hee. I smiled as I caught up with their progress with one jutsu. When I turned back, I saw Kakashi was looking at me with Sharingan. Asshole. Ko. Teach us too. Naruto came near me. Alright, these are the seals. I said and showed. Tiger snake monkey snake dog. Naruto. Create ten clones to practice, it will be faster. I said and started to work on my fences. Hinata had Sweitun affinity to begin with, she didn't take long to learn the jutsu. After half an hour, my fences were painted. Since my mastery over ninjutsu was better, I could do it easier and faster. Now that I had some time, I went to look around. The garden was gigantic. So, I had to carpet search the garden first, before moving to the house. At some corner, I found not-so-old footsteps. They looked a couple of days old and from the deepness I could say the owner was heavy. Much heavier than the old lady. Also the foot was too big, probably male. I followed the trail until I reached the window at the side of the house. Window was locked, and didn't look like it was forced. The quest cursor is showing the house but not the entrance. Then I thought about something and looked at the second floor. Just above, there was another window, and it was slightly ajar. I looked around and saw nobody, so I started to walk on the wall until I reached the second floor. Of course I cleaned the soles of my shoes so I wouldn't leave footstep on the wall. I pulled the window up and it opened without any effort. I jumped in the room and looked around. It looked like a simple room at first sight. Then I looked carefully and noticed something. There was a seal under the bed. I crouched and looked again to notice a trap door under the seemingly old bed, closed with a seal. My seal mastery is 47, not good enough. I shook my head and further looked into the seal to see if I could crack it. I should buy a perk. Shit, I was saving them. This better be good. Disenchant one fourth, learn the way of working of the seals by breaking them apart. Just the first perk cost 15 perk points. And it would only work on B rank and lower seals. On top of that, I could only use it once a day. I crawled over the seal and used the perk. Seal disenchanted. Triggering seal learned. Locking seal learned. Voice repressing seal learned. Chakra locking seal learned. Fuck yes. Yes. Four seals in one, allowed me to learn four of them at once. Yes. I opened the trap door and entered with a grin. It is so worth it. Beneath the trap door was a ladder going at least two floors down. The room was probably a basement, and the only entrance was the trap door. Basement was a dark room. I closed my eyes and waited for my eyes to get used to darkness. When it did, I took a look around. The room was fairly big, and there was some old furniture here and there. But at the end of it, there were some crates. I walked to them slowly and noticed part of the seal I disenchanted was placed on them too. Locking seals. Now that I learned this seal, I could reverse it without any problem. I touched one of the crates and my chakra flared for a second. When it did, the seal vanished. I opened the crate and looked inside. Fuck. Why does this shit always happen to me? I sighed as I looked at the crate. Now that I think about it, the mission was simple. All we had to do was paint the fences and leave. And if it wasn't the quest's warning, I would do just that. The old lady probably calls over Jen and teams for odd jobs to sell away her feeble, helpless cute grandma identity. After all, if she were to isolate herself from the village, people would be suspicious. Especially paranoid shinobi. What should I do with you? I looked at the unconscious boy lying in the crate. I remember this boy. He was a year older than me and went MIA during a C-rank mission last week. How did he end up in the basement of an old woman? 
I have few theories. Now, let's say a Jenin team went missing during the mission. The ANBU or Jounin would rush to look at the place where it happened. And, move forward towards the closest villages, natural shelters marked in many years. No one would think of going back to the village to search a sweet old woman's basement. Jounin sensei murdered, three Jenin are missing, the first everyone thinks would be enemy villages abducting younglings. Then they would keep them here for a time until it cools down, when it does, they would smuggle them out. Great plan. I doubt anyone would suspect it, ever. I wouldn't if it wasn't for the quest. Now, I finished the quest. I looked around to see if anything was amiss. It was. As a typical quest, I earned my reward through the quest itself, for new seals. I can further burgle the house to increase my reward. But I have two optional subquests. Letting Kakashi know, or solving it myself. What to do, what to do. Skyrim is not like generic games where rewards are often determined before the completion of quests. In Skyrim, rewards are tied to actions. For instance, if the objective is to clear a cave, players will find their reward within the cave itself. However, if players choose not to take any of the items found within, there may be no reward at all or only a minimal monetary reward given by the quest giver. This was a perfect example of Skyrim quest. If I turn my back now, my reward will be seals and anything I take from the basement. But if I choose one of the optional subquests, my reward will increase. Depending on which one I choose. In normal cases, when quests are finished by the player alone, the reward would increase. But not in this case, well not necessarily. Let's say if I try to free them myself, I would probably have to confront the old lady, who is probably a strong kunoichi, or her accomplices. And the reward would be whatever I loot from them. Or I could let Kakashi and the village know, and get rewarded for my actions. Which would bring questions as well. After all, I had no reason to suspect the old lady, when even Kakashi didn't. What to do, what to do. I should create some evidence. I closed the crate and looked around the basement. There were explosive tags, kunai, and shuriken filled crates. I got a crate of each item and stored them in the inventory. After that, I left the basement and went down to the garden. While I was walking down, I did it backwards and left prints on purpose while using partial henge on my leg. Now, this isn't as hard as it sounds. Actually, it is pretty easy. How? Imagine Naruto's first henge in anime. Looks like Hokage but at the same time, it does not. Henge is a manifestation of imagination, so changing partially isn't hard. It is a mistake of imagination, so an imaginative mind and a person who can do henge masterfully can do much better. The bigger footsteps on the wall look like climbing to the second floor. But they are not obvious. They are so faint, it is almost impossible to see. As the next step, I pulled out a crate and held it in my hand. While I was holding, I walked from fences to walls to carve my footsteps onto the wet dirt, still with henge feet. It will sell the impression of whoever's footsteps these were, he or she was carrying something. As they are deeper. And why didn't that person use chakra to not leave footsteps? Like I care, maybe they were careless. The last piece of evidence was, hairs of three genin I found in the basement. Not too much. Only a few. I placed them intermittently, buried into the dirt. After all was done, I walked back where my team was. Naruto was almost done, and Hinata was helping him. Kakashi was where I left him, reading his book. Where were you? He asked. Taking a leak, I answered while making a few hand signs to let him know there was trouble. You shouldn't have done that outdoors. You could have asked the mistress to let you use the bathroom. It is uncouth. Kakashi answered with a sigh, but his eye was serious. Oh, I didn't want to bother the sweet old lady with my presence, in case I disturb her business. Gen and teams of three can be annoying and comatose idiots sometimes. I answered lazily. But I am your Jounin sensei, and I am here right. Kakashi asked without taking his eyes from the book. While you are lying dead. It is as good as if you are not here. I laughed. What if some animal attacked you while you were doing your business? What would you do then? He asked, reprimanding. You are right. Animals around here can be quite strong. And from the look of it, there can be more than one. 
I shivered. It might be dangerous. What if I drew them to my team? Sorry sensei, I was sloppy. It is fine, Kaushin. I trust you will not do it again. After all, I put you in charge of this team to protect your teammates. Kakashi I smiled as he got up. Thank you for your trust, sensei. I will let no one hurt them. I will follow them like a shadow, and send my shadow to fetch help from hell if necessary. I nodded while walking towards the still working duo. Kakashi on the other hand moved towards the side of the house where the window was. Kakashi moved to the area where Kaushin planted his evidence lazily and took a look around. He inspected the ground and noticed the deep footsteps first. Then he looked at the wall and gazed at the second floor window. Then he caught the sight of hairs on the ground and went to the front door, fully cautious. Kaushin was near Naruto and Hinata, waiting for Kakashi to finish his inspection. The enemy wasn't aware of them yet, and if Kakashi thought he couldn't handle it, they could still go back to the village to fetch some help first. But if he could finish, he would battle on his own, and Kaushin had to protect Hinata and Naruto. Kakashi knocked on the door and waited. The old lady opened the door and smiled sweetly. Hello, Jounin san Done already? She asked. Yes, ma'am. Kakashi nodded and handed over the mission scroll for the old lady to sign. It was a normal procedure. The old lady stuck to her role and went inside to fetch her reading glasses, while Kakashi asked. Can I use the bathroom? Sure, upstairs second on the right. She shouted. Kakashi climbed up the stairs and pulled his headband up to reveal his crimson eye. He looked around to see if there were any seals and failed to see even one. He moved to the room where the window was opening and took a look around. It didn't take long for him to find the trap door and go down. After taking a look at the crates for less than a minute, he climbed back up to see the old woman standing at the door. Sigh, ten years of operation. How did you discover it? Asked the woman. Does it matter? Kakashi asked with full caution. At the same time he heard an explosion from downstairs. He wanted to rush out from the window but the old kunoichi closed it with a doton jutsu. Let's dance for a while. The old woman smiled eerily. She couldn't win against the famous Kakashi, she knew it too. But she wasn't willing to go down without a battle. Her two partners were also dealing with the Genin team. If they could flank Kakashi while keeping three buggers hostage, they could still salvage the situation. You are not strong. And from the look of it, neither are your friends. How did you manage to kill Jounin Sensei? Kakashi asked as he pulled out a kunai. He is stalling. It works for me. The old woman thought as she answered unhurriedly. Ambush of course. Old lady trick wouldn't work outside of these walls. Shinobi are paranoid creatures. Kakashi stated. Regular traps wouldn't work against a Hyuga. From the looks of it, you are a pretty good seal master. He then praised. Seal mistress. The old woman answered tersely. Whatever. Kakashi shrugged it off, I wonder where your mastery comes from. Live as long as I do and you learn a few tricks. She didn't answer. True. But age isn't everything you know. A twelve-year-old genin can outsmart you. Kakashi smiled. Humph. Unfledged ninja boys can do nothing. She scoffed. But the next second she heard the screams of her two companions. Asuma was having a hard life ever since his father was marked as a traitor like his childhood friend Danzo. Although Kanoha Shinobi knew better than blaming children for their father's sins, civilians were as ignorant and annoying as always. Once the prideful clan name he was carrying with Kvel, now was a source of scorn. His father wasn't helping either. After being beaten by Senju princes from village door to end, he acted like a senile old man, telling people how sorry he felt and how he disappointed his teachers. But Asuma knew better than running away. He had to salvage the situation by showing the rest of the Sarutobi clan was still burning with will of fire and would do everything in their power to protect the village. Luckily, the clan heads were sensible and didn't take away the genin team he had his eyes on. He was sure some other clan heads would do their best to shame him and wouldn't let him near their heirs. But Shikaku was his old friend and loyal advisor of his father, Akimichi was also at Sarutobi's side. Inoichi was on the fence, but wouldn't break their relationship with the other two on something so small. 
now, by teaching their heirs with all the gusto he could muster, he was even more determined than before. He would wash away this shame and would walk his chest swell with pride once again. As he and his team were walking down the street towards the Hokage building to report their newly completed mission, a bunny hopped in front of them. How cute! Ino jumped over and grabbed the bunny as she hugged it to her chest. Asuma was suspicious but he couldn't tell if anything was wrong with the animal. Just a hunch. We should roast and eat it. I crave some bunny thighs. Choji said while drooling. You, stay away from this cute thing, Ino said while further pushing the bunny on her chest. Yeah, you stay away from me, fat ass. All of a sudden the team went crazy. Asuma pulled out his trench knives and dashed at Ino. Panicked Blondie threw the bunny in the air, while Shikamura formed hand seals, and Choji was going mad. Calm down. The clone shouted as he cancelled the henge. The team of four looked at him with different expressions. Ino was blushing mad, Choji was disappointed, while Asuma and Shikamaru were awed. I didn't see through it at all, Asuma commented, much to Lazy Nara's relief. My team is in trouble. I am just a shadow clone. The clone said and explained the situation. Choji go and explain the situation. To Hokage-sama. Shikamaru, Ino, and I will rush to their help. Go now. Yes, sir. Team 10 disappeared. The clone dispelled itself after shrugging too. New novel, High School Chronicles, The Otherworldly Harem, a unique and captivating tale set in a world where the boundaries of anime universes have merged, bringing together characters from across the multiverse. Our protagonist has been reincarnated into this new world with the knowledge of all fiction ever created on Earth, giving him a unique perspective and understanding of the diverse cast of characters he encounters. In this extraordinary setting, MC finds himself attending a high school filled with a vibrant mix of students and teachers from various anime backgrounds, creating a melting pot of personalities and abilities. As he navigates through this fascinating new environment, MC's natural abilities to charm, his aura and his knowledge of anime worlds make him a popular figure among the female characters. From the intelligent and resourceful science teacher Momo Yairozu to the enigmatic and playful philosophy teacher Yoruchi Shihoin, MC's interactions with these female characters form the core of the harem aspect of the story. As he becomes involved with various school groups and clubs, MC's connection with these characters deepens, leading to comical, romantic, and heartwarming encounters that fans of the harem and slice of life genres will love. High School Chronicles the otherworldly harem focuses primarily on the relationships and interactions between MC and the numerous female characters from various anime worlds, creating a captivating, entertaining experience for fans of the harem genre. With a diverse and engaging cast, including characters like Nami, Nojiko, Winry, Hinata, Ino, Sakura, Mikasa, Tatsumaki. Immerse yourself in the world of High School Chronicles, The Otherworldly Harem, where the lines between anime universes blur, and join MC as he navigates the thrilling and heartwarming journey of his high school life in this one-of-a-kind harem adventure. Throughout the story, MC forms strong bonds with the school's all-female staff, which includes science teacher Momo Yairozu, literature teacher Moka Akashiya, philosophy teacher Yoruchi Shihoin, biology teacher Ranjiku Matsumoto, theater teacher Boa Hancock. Each of these teachers has their own unique quirks and personalities, which add to the colorful tapestry of MC's life. Moka Akashiya's literature class, for instance, is always full of surprises. Moka's gentle and kind demeanor makes her a beloved teacher among her students, but her prideful and haughty inner self can cause unexpected shifts in the classroom atmosphere. Engaging discussions about classic literature can turn into heated debates between Mocha's two contrasting personalities, leaving the students both amused and intrigued. In philosophy class, Yoruchi Shihoin teaches complex subjects by relating them to cat-related analogies. Her eccentric personality and tendency to transform into a cat keep the students entertained while learning about the intricacies of philosophical thought. Meanwhile, the school is led by the daring and flirtatious principal Tsunade Senju. Her relationship with MC borders on the edge of immorality, as she often engages in questionable bets and deals with him. Her antics add a thrilling aspect to MC's life, making every day at school an unpredictable adventure. In the science class, Momo Yairozu challenges her students to think creatively and apply their knowledge in practical situations. Momo's intelligence and resourcefulness shine as she guides her students through complex scientific concepts and real-world applications. 
With her mature and developed appearance, she catches MC's eye and becomes an essential part of his high school life. Corisensei, the unconventional and enigmatic math teacher, helps students overcome their struggles with numbers using innovative and engaging methods. His extraordinary teaching abilities capture MC's attention, and their interactions bring humor and lightness to the challenges of mastering mathematics. Ranjiku Matsumoto's biology class is an experience in itself. Though she appears absent-minded and careless, she is a skilled teacher who genuinely cares about her students. However, her habit of speaking without thinking and unconsciously accentuating her figure often results in unintentional innuendos, leaving her students either stifling laughter or blushing furiously. Boa Hancock, the theater teacher, brings drama and excitement to the school with her daring acts and suggestive play selections. Her prideful and beautiful demeanor captivates the students, including MC, as they work together to create and stage various productions. Under her guidance, the students learn to express themselves through the performing arts and explore the boundaries of their creativity. Hitaki Kakashi's PE class is a test of the students' physical limits, as he pushes them to break through their barriers and improve their athletic abilities. His intense teaching style and dedication to his students' growth make him an unforgettable figure in MC's high school experience. The school staff's unique personalities and teaching methods create a vibrant and unforgettable atmosphere, ensuring that MC's high school days are filled with excitement, laughter, and meaningful connections. The interactions between MC and the teachers contribute to his growing harem and the unforgettable experiences that make high school chronicles, the otherworldly harem a captivating and entertaining journey. As the story unfolds, MC's growing harem and his attempts to maintain a low profile while balancing his friendships, school life, and the ever-present conflict between good and evil forces create a captivating and comical experience that keeps viewers hooked. High School Chronicles, The Otherworldly Harem is a delightful and entertaining journey through the unique world where beloved anime characters collide. I am not sure if I should add R and Smut yet. Let me know if you want to read with, without, or separate Smut scenes. With smut, smut will be mixed into chapters. Without smut, there will be no sex scenes in the story. Separate smut, the smut scenes will be posted separately. When the clone dispelled, I learned he actually met with Team 10. So my pumpkin was coming. I smiled while looking at two enemies that appeared out of nowhere. Look at them, they are just brats. One on the right said. He looked to be in his thirties with no distinct features. Brat or not, they have to go. For the sake of the mission. One on the left was a classy old man in his fifties. He was even wearing a suit and carrying a cane. And how are you going to do that? I asked with a smirk while standing in front of Naruto and Hinata. I already alerted them when Kakashi left. They were still looking busy but both were fully cautious. Look at him. Despite being so small, he does realize the situation he is in. He is stalling so his Jounin sensei can come and assist him. The old man said while raising the cane, aiming it at us. Age isn't everything old man. You should know that, right? I asked, while pulling out a kunai. There was an explosive tag wrapped around it. I threw the kunai, and to no one's surprise the old man caught it without much effort. He grabbed the lit seal and extinguished it. Kids shouldn't play with explosives. He said. Old enough to die, old enough to blow up some stuff. I smirked. In the next second, both Kanai and the explosive seal turned into two clones covered with explosive tags. Shit. Both enemies shouted at the same time. In the next second, the area where they were standing exploded, while I pulled Hinata and Naruto back while watching the place. The map was still showing three red dots, it meant they were still alive. The third one was further from the duo, it was the old lady. This kid is dangerous. Middle-aged man's voice arrived in our ears from the smoke. That he is. Old man also nodded. In the next second, I saw something struck me dumb. The duo was covered with a thin film of blue chakra. Barrier bloodline? I asked in surprise. Oh, you know your stuff. The old man nodded. Let's deal with them. Middle-aged man said as he dashed. Naruto created lots of clones to intercept him, while Hinata formed the new jutsu I taught them to spray paint on their faces to hopefully blind them. I held the kanai in front of me while waiting for the old man to arrive. It didn't take long. 
The man was fast. The cane in his hand was tougher than Kunai and each impact was shaking my innards. His taijutsu was also better than mine, luckily his speed was still manageable. I used my small body to dance around the old man. He was lacking the elasticity of the young, and couldn't keep up with my sudden moves, despite being faster. When I dodged another swipe of the cane by dodging under it, I charged the kanai with lightning chakra and sent it towards the old man's side. From such a close distance, the old man could barely dodge the kanai empowered with lightning chakra. The kanai grazed his torso while flying behind him. Old man looked mad but the next second he heard the scream of his companion. He instinctively turned to look and saw the kanai he just dodged was stabbed on the shoulder of his friend. But before he could wrap his head around it, he felt danger approaching from his flank. He tapped into his chakra and a blue sphere covered his body. In the next second, tens of explosive tags covered his barrier and exploded. He ignored the tags, and moved towards his friend to save him from now attacking madly Naruto, and Hinata attacking from a distance. But just as he was about to take a step, he froze where he was standing. He couldn't move. He felt like he could break from it, but didn't know what was stopping him. In his stupor, Naruto ended his friend, while the latter screamed like a butchered pig. When he got out of control, he realized a withdrawing shadow and turned back in terror. There he saw two more genin and a full-fledged jounin. You guys okay? Asuma asked while pulling out his trench knives. Just peachy. I answered as I was still locked on the enemy. Good, where is Kakashi? Asuma asked. Dealing with the boss, inside the house. I answered and sent the kanai towards the old man. He dodged it while looking for an escape route, but now he was surrounded from all sides. Can he handle the boss? Asuma asked as we closed down on the enemy. He can. I nodded and reported, enemy is troublesome. He has a barrier bloodline. None of my jutsu can penetrate it. This might help. A voice drifted over as blue lightning cried in the air like thousands of birds. In the next second, Kakashi appeared with his hand inside the old man's chest, bleeding. Good job, Kakashi. Asuma smiled. Thanks for your help, Asuma. Kakashi smiled too. Done nothing. Asuma waved it off as he looked at another Kakashi carrying an unconscious old lady. You created a clone to send to the toilet right? I asked with a sigh. Yeah. Kakashi nodded. Probably felt your chakra, and got suspicious. If you just went to the basement, they wouldn't be any wiser. I said. Probably. Kakashi answered. Anyway, good job team. Your performance was spectacular. What now? Anyone gonna fill us in? Ino asked while still blushing a little. Let me. I answered and explained the story from my side. How I was walking around and found a hair. Then I noticed the footsteps, and felt something was wrong. How I discovered the basement and the genin in crates, and how I reported to Kakashi. Wow, those are all big coincidences. Hair could be anything. Could be some children playing there, or previous teams came to help in the house. Shikamaru said. Could be, but I felt something was wrong. Intuitions are Shinobi's biggest weapons. I answered dismissively. Kaushin is right. Always trust your gut feeling. Asuma nodded. Hmm good job Kaushin. I will make sure to report your role. You will be rewarded heavily. Kakashi, too, praised. Not long after, ANBU team arrived, and took the trio. Another team went to check the house and rescued the genin. You have unearthed a big plot, Kaushin, for this, you will be heavily rewarded. Tsunade looked at me after we reported what we had done, and praised me. Thank you, Hokage-sama. I nodded calmly but in my head, I was thinking about what to ask as a reward. Maybe I should ask for fourths kunai. With disenchantment, I can reverse engineer it. But I doubt its rank is lower than S rank. Maybe even higher. I can ask a couple of A rank jutsu. I have enough chakra reserve, and it is expanding every day. Soon my chakra skill will advance enough for me to get the perk, tailless tailed beast, and my reserve will triple at least. Then I can spam A rank jutsu like they are nothing. Genin Kaushin, Hyuga clan will also reward you for your hard work. You saved a genin and a pair of Byakugan with it. 
we are eternally thankful. Hinata's father Hayashi said from the side. Now, this wasn't our first meeting, maybe the fifth. When I first nudged Naruto to make a move on Hinata, well let's just say it didn't end well. A couple of Hyuga came and threatened one little blonde and even the eternally cursed Jenin Niji came to beat him. Of course, I went medieval on his ass and parceled him up back to his clan. Well, that didn't end well either. Hinata was banned from interacting with me or Naruto and forced to drop out of healing classes. Well, that didn't end well for them either. I wanted to speak with Tsunade and wanted her to put some sense into the old goat, but it wouldn't do either. Later, Naruto and I designed something we would always be proud of. It cost me a lot of time and effort. Even with inventory, stealing, and all the money I piled from odd jobs and dungeons. It went like this, a giant cloth painted vividly by yours truly. One Hayashi and Hisashi, Hayashi kneeling in front of his younger brother. Asking forgiveness for all the wrong he had done. There were four pictures in total but with the bubble texts, the message was clear to anyone with brain. First scene, Hayashi is on his knees, looking up at his brother. His eyes are filled with remorse and disbelief. Hisashi on the other hand looked angry and disappointed. The bubble coming out of his head read, Brother, why are you oppressing the will of the clan members? Wasn't it my will that ended with my death and survival of yours? The bubble on Hayashi read, It was, Brother. It should have been me. I should have died in your stead. Second scene, Hisashi, I wanted to take control of my fate and I did. I wanted to choose my own end. In my terms. Not for the clan head's order. I wanted to do as I wished, and live or die freely. Didn't we always want to break the clan from this curse? We did. We should have been. I was blinded by the previous clan head, and marked you and your son with the cage. I did you both wrong. Third scene, Hisashi, and look where this led us. Me dead, you pathetic, unreconstructed figurehead, oppressing your own daughter to bow to your will. Your wife would be ashamed of you. She. She would understand. Fourth scene, Hisashi, I don't. And devastated Hayashi. Man, imagine how people's faces were when at the dawn of a new day, an explosion alerted everyone in the town. When people rushed to the source, they all saw the cloth painted vividly. What did it achieve? A lot. Firstly, let's stick up in his ass Hayashi. He instantly changed his ways and let some slack to the poor girl. Hinata returned to the healing classes, and not long after, after a few more visits from me of course, she was allowed to be with Naruto. Less idiot, haughty and be consumed with fate Niji. After asking around and learning ins and outs of the situation and reading his father's letter, he was more human-like. Hinata has been happier ever since. Thus one of my proudest moments. And should be the same for Naruto. Of course, we didn't take the credit for it. Thank you for your consideration, Hayashi-sama. I just did what I had to. I answered politely. He nodded and said he would still reward me so I had to visit him sometime. After the council and busybodies left, it was my team only with Hokage in the room. So. Tsunade started, I read the report from several sources and still can't understand why you entered Kaushin. Care to explain? Sure. I was looking around in boredom since I finished my task first. I said while looking around. My team nodded so I continued, when I was walking, I noticed the footstep on the wall and wanted to give free service to the old lady since she was so nice to us. Gave cookies and everything. Then I wondered. How could there be footsteps on the wall? She was just a frail old lady, and the footstep was big for her feet. I at first thought some shinobi was robbing her, so I took a look around. There was a window on the first floor, but Shinobi decided to enter the second floor by climbing the walls. It didn't make any sense. Then I discovered the footstep on the ground. Since they could walk on the walls, they should be able to prevent footsteps from forming with the same technique. I at first thought maybe they were careless until I noticed a couple of hairs in the grass. Adding all of them together, and my gut feeling telling me something was wrong, I slowly climbed up and found the trap door. The basement was filled with weapons illegal to possess and three crates with three genin I knew from the academy. I went back immediately and alerted Sensei. I explained my way of thinking. It sounded reasonable, right? 
Anyway, good job. You prevent a major crisis. What do you want as a reward? She asked after thinking for a while. And taking the difficulty of the mission and significance of it to the village, the mission will be considered as A rank. Though it will be sealed. Still, the pay of 600k Rio will be distributed among all of you. K each? Naruto asked in bewilderment. Not quite. Kakashi sighed. Ah man, I suck at math. Wasn't 600 divided by 4 equal to 150? Naruto asked as he was raising two fingers on his right hand and four on the other. Your math is astonishing. Kakashi rolled his eyes. But the rewards are given based on contribution. Usually Jounin Sensei takes the big cut of the pie but in this mission, the most goes to Kaushin. He single-handedly found the problem, surveyed the situation and alerted the team before the enemy was aware of him. He then battled against a Chunin level enemy and injured the other so you could take them. If it wasn't for him, the Hyuga clan bloodline would be stolen and we would still be unaware of human trafficking going on under our noses. Wow, when you put it like that, I can't help but be astonished. Naruto nodded. Yeah, anyway. The usual is MVP taking the 50% and the rest of the team sharing the other 50, is it acceptable with you, Kaushin? Kakashi asked. I am fine with 25%, Sensei. You still did most of the battling, and Naruto and Hinata were a big help. I am more interested in rewards. I calmly answered, as I looked at Tsunade. What is my limit? I asked. Below S rank. Jutsu. Tsunade smirked. All right, I would like to learn clone great explosion, bringer of darkness technique, and multiplying explosive tags. I pondered for a bit and chose three I had in mind. You are. Well informed, Tsunade asked with a frown. I like to read, I answered with a shrug. Can I also sign the summoning contract of Rashomon? I asked with hope. You can, after further services. I am pleased with you Kaushin, and not just as a Hokage. Thank you, Hokage-sama. All right then, I will send the scrolls to you. You don't have to return them but you have to destroy them after you are done. Is that understood? She asked. Yes, ma'am. She nodded after my confirmation. Can I? I started, she frowned. Can I teach these jutsu to others? I asked. For example. She asked. Imagine thousands of clones on the battlefield exploding, I smirked. She thought for a while then a sinister smile curled up on her face. So there we were, me and my pumpkin Eno, along with Naruto and Hinata, double dating. We were at this super chill barbecue joint, the kind that makes you feel like you're part of the family. Anyway, it was a pretty sweet setup, with the four of us just sitting back and enjoying some good food and even better company. Naruto was scarfing down ramen like he'd never tasted food before in his life, and Hinata was giggling at him. That guy, I swear, was a bottomless pit. Fool, slow down. I teased him. You're gonna make yourself sick. Naruto just grinned, his cheeks stuffed with noodles. What can I say, Ko? This ramen is just too good. Better than Ichiraku? I asked with a smirk. Take that back. He exclaimed as he looked at me with sheer disbelief. As if I insulted his religion, well, in a sense it is true. Ino rolled her eyes and shook her head, but she couldn't hide the smile that was tugging at her lips. You guys are ridiculous. So, Kochan, she then said, looking over at me with a sweet smile while holding back her giggles, how's your team been doing? I heard you guys had a pretty interesting D-rank mission the other day. Oh, you mean the one where we had to catch that rogue chicken? I laughed. Yeah, that was a wild ride. You wouldn't believe how fast that thing could run. But, of course, being the amazing ninja I am, I managed to catch it in the end. Eno snorted. You mean after it had pecked you at least a dozen times? I pretended to be offended. Woman, those pecks were a testament to my dedication. Don't mock a man's battle scars. Naruto chimed in, still chomping on his ramen. Huh, you should have seen it. Ko was running all over the place, trying to catch that crazy chicken. It was hilarious. Thanks, Naruto, I said, rolling my eyes. I appreciate your support. 
Ino giggled, her pale cheeks turning a light shade of pink. Well, at least it sounds like you guys had fun. Naruto sighed, giving Hinata a playful shove. Yeah, well, if fun is chasing a chicken around the village, then sure. By the way, Ino, I said, giving her a sly grin. I heard you aced that training exercise the other day. It must be pretty awesome being so amazing all the time. You are listening to this audiobook on web novel audiobooks Tkthigud. Ino scoffed, but her cheeks flushed pink with pride. Well, someone's got to keep you on your toes, Ko. Hinata giggled, while I nudged Naruto on his side. Speaking of training, Naruto, tell her how managed to turn your latest sparring session into a full-blown food fight. Naruto blushed, scratching the back of his head sheepishly. Yeah, well, it wasn't exactly planned, but it was a lot of fun. I chuckled and shook my head. You two are just a disaster waiting to happen, aren't you? Naruto grinned, his eyes sparkling with mischief. Hey, you're part of this team too, Kaushin. That makes you an honorary member of the disaster squad. Ino leaned over and whispered in my ear, her warm breath tickling my skin. I think we should start our own team, Ko. We'll call it, Team Incredibly Good Looking and Talented. I laughed and whispered back, I think that's the best idea I've heard all night, Pumpkin-chan. I raised my cup of tea in a mock toast. To Team Incredibly Good Looking and Talented. Ino laughed and clinked her cup against mine, the sound echoing through the restaurant. To our new team. Naruto and Hinata looked at each other and then at us, you two are self-conceited dorks, Naruto said with a wise nod. I grinned at him. Heh, you are just jealous because you cannot be part of our super duper team. Ino smirked, winking at Hinata. It's a secret team, just for us. You guys aren't invited. Hinata looked a bit disappointed, but then she smiled softly. I'm sure your team would be wonderful. Well, Hinata can qualify for the team, but since Naruto is pulling you down, we have to, sadly, decline your admission to team incredibly good looking and talented. Please try again with a different pairing. I said while looking extremely sad. Why do I feel like I am insulted again? Naruto asked while Hinata was giggling to herself. Naruto pouted, crossing his arms over his chest. Who needs your stupid team? We're pretty awesome too, you know. We didn't say you weren't, Naruto, Ino said, still smirking. It's just that Ko and I are on a whole other level. I nodded in agreement, trying to keep a straight face. Yeah, you guys are great, but we're just. Better. Naruto's pout deepened, but then he suddenly grinned. Alright, you too. If you think you're so amazing, why don't we have a little competition to see who the real power couple is? Ino raised an eyebrow, glancing at the blonde. Ho, oh, seems like you grew a pair, huh Naruto? What kind of competition? Naruto rubbed his hands together, a mischievous glint in his eyes. How about a race? First one to the top of the Hokage Monument wins. I smirked, accepting the challenge. You're on, Naruto. But don't come crying to us when you lose. Hinata blushed, looking a bit nervous. Um, maybe we shouldn't be too competitive. We're all friends, after all. Ino chuckled, placing a reassuring hand on Hinata's shoulder. Don't worry, Hinata. It's all in good fun. Besides, we'll go easy on you. A tick appeared on Hinata's head. Here I am, acting all shy and considerate, and they get more and more arrogant. With our challenge set, we finished our meal and paid the bill. The four of us headed to the Hokage Monument, the excitement of the race fueling our steps. All right, Naruto announced, standing at the base of the monument. On your mark, get set. Ino squeezed my hand, giving me a determined look. Let's show them what team incredibly good-looking and talented is made of. I winked at her, feeling my heart race with excitement. You got it, Pumpkin Chan. Let's make it interesting, Naruto. I smirked, as I looked at them. I don't like that look. All three said at the same time. I leaned forward, as I reached back with my arms, your ride is here, my lady. Hop on. I like it. Naruto shouted and looked at Hinata, while the latter looked super embarrassed. Ino giggled, and hopped on my back, while putting her head on my shoulder, smirking at Naruto and Hinata. After much convincing, Hinata too parked behind Naruto, 
and we were ready. Go! Naruto shouted, and the race was on. The four of us took off, each couple racing to reach the top of the Hokage Monument first. Naruto and Hinata seemed to move as one, while Ino and I relied on our teamwork to try and outrun them. Ino leaned in close to my ear, her breath hot on my skin. You better not slow us down, Ko. I grinned, my legs pumping as I carried us both up the rocky face of the monument. Don't worry, Ino. I've got this under control. As we climbed higher, the view of the village below became more and more breathtaking. The setting sun bathed everything in a warm, golden light, making the moment feel even more magical. Ino glanced over at Naruto and Hinata, who were neck and neck with us. Come on, Ko, we can't let them beat us. I smirked, feeling a surge of adrenaline as I pushed myself to go faster. Just hold on tight, Pumpkin-chan. We're going to show them what we're made of. Naruto looked back at us, grinning as he egged us on. You guys are going to have to do better than that if you want to beat us. Hinata, who had been silent for most of the race, suddenly piped up, her voice filled with determination. You may be talented, but we have something special too. Don't underestimate us. Ino laughed, her voice ringing out like bells. Oh, don't worry, Hinata. We know you guys are a force to be reckoned with. But we're just a little bit better. As we neared the top of the monument, our playful banter continued, each of us trying to psych the others out while still keeping our focus on the race. Naruto huffed, trying to catch his breath. You guys sure are confident. But can you handle this? With a burst of speed, Naruto and Hinata pulled ahead, their determination evident in their movements. Ino and I exchanged a glance, our competitive spirits igniting. Time to kick it up a notch, Ko, Ino whispered, her blue eyes sparkling with excitement. I nodded, feeling a surge of energy course through me. Hold on, Ino. We're going in for the win. With a burst of chakra, we shot forward, quickly closing the gap between us and Naruto and Hinata. The race was intense, our laughter and playful taunts filling the air as we climbed higher and higher. In the end, it was too close to call, we reached the top of the Hokage Monument at the same time, all four of us panting and laughing from the exhilarating race. Naruto grinned, giving me a friendly punch on the shoulder. Not bad, Ko. You guys really gave us a run for our money. Yeah, well, we're all pretty amazing, aren't we? I chuckled, you guys are not bad, I admit. Ino slid off my back, wrapping her arms around me as we looked out at the breathtaking view. I'd say we're all winners here. Hinata smiled, leaning into Naruto's side. I agree. That was so much fun. Another day, another boring D-ranked mission, Kakashi, with his usual mysterious air, unfolded the scroll and read out our mission. Alright, team. Today's mission is. To help out at the annual Kanoha Bug Catching Contest. Naruto's face lit up like a kid in a candy store. Sweet. I've always wanted to participate in that. Hinata, however, looked a little uneasy. Um, Keikakashi-sensei, does that mean we'll be catching bugs ourselves? Kakashi chuckled. Not exactly, Hinata. Our job is to help the organizers set up the contest area, and then make sure everything runs smoothly. We'll also be responsible for returning any stray bugs to their designated areas. I grinned, nudging Naruto playfully. Hey, maybe we'll get to see some rare beetles, huh, Naruto? He nodded enthusiastically. You bet, Ko. I've heard that some of the bugs in this contest are super rare. As we made our way to the contest area, I couldn't help but feel a little excited myself. I mean, who wouldn't want to spend? A day surrounded by all sorts of weird and wonderful bugs. When we arrived, we were greeted by none other than my good friend Shino from the Aburane clan. His clan was the organizer of this year's contest and he was decked out in his usual dark clothing and sunglasses. Ah, Kaushin, Shino said in his monotone voice, though I could sense a hint of enthusiasm. I'm glad to see you and your team are here to help, why? Because we need help. I clapped him on the back, grinning. Wouldn't miss it for the world, buddy. You know I've always been a fan of your creepy crawlies. Naruto chimed in, his eyes wide with excitement. Yeah, Shino. We can't wait to see all the bugs you've got lined up for the contest. 
Shino nodded, a small smile hidden behind his high collar. Very well. I'll show you where to start. As we began setting up the contest area, Naruto couldn't help but tease Shino a little. So, are there any bugs that even you find too gross to handle, Shino? He raised an eyebrow, his voice as dry as ever. Naruto-san, I am an Aburain. There is no such thing as a gross bug to me. They are all fascinating creatures. Blondie laughed, shaking his head. I figured as much, but it was worth a shot. Hinata, who had been nervously eyeing a particularly large beetle, finally spoke up. Shino-san, will we be handling poisonous bugs? Shino assured her, no, Hinata-san. While some may look intimidating, they are all harmless. The contestants will be wearing protective gloves, just in case. With Shino's guidance, we set up various stations for the contestants to catch and observe the bugs. There were nets, jars, and even little habitats for the more delicate insects. As the contest began, we were responsible for keeping an eye on the contestants, making sure they followed the rules and didn't harm any of the bugs. Naruto was having the time of his life, practically bouncing from one station to the next, while Hinata slowly grew more comfortable around the insects. At one point, a particularly feisty beetle managed to escape its enclosure, and Naruto sprang into action. Don't worry, guys. I'll catch it. He chased the beetle around the contest area, much to the amusement of the onlookers. With a triumphant shout, Naruto finally managed to catch the runaway bug, returning it to its proper place. As the day went on, more familiar faces began to appear at the contest. Sakura and Kiba, along with their Jounin sensei Kurinai, came to support Shino. Hey, Naruto. Sakura greeted him cheerfully. I didn't expect to see you guys here. Hello, Sakura-san, Naruto said with a small smile, we've a mission to help Shino with this contest. Kiba laughed, patting Shino on the back. Yeah, it's not every day we get to see Shino so. Excited. Shino just raised an eyebrow but said nothing, a faint hint of a smile on his lips. Ino and Shikamaru soon arrived with their sensei Asuma as well. Naruto immediately asked, hey, where's Choji? Shikamaru pointed at the field, where several children were trying to catch bugs. Choji, almost twice the size of the children, was attempting to catch them too. We all facepalmed, and Shikamaru explained, the award for first place is a week-long food ticket at a barbecue joint. So, Choji wanted to participate, much to our annoyance. Naruto laughed, shaking his head. Classic Choji. With all our friends gathered, the atmosphere at the bug-catching contest turned even more fun and lively. We continued to help the contestants and monitor the event, all while bantering, teasing, and playfully mocking each other. At one point, Ino approached me, a mischievous grin on her face. So, Ko, how are you enjoying your glamorous D-rank mission? I laughed, rolling my eyes. Oh, it's just fantastic, Ino. I mean, who wouldn't want to spend their day surrounded by a bunch of creepy crawlies? She smirked, leaning in close. Well, at least you have some good company. True, I admitted, with a small smile on my lips. Your addition did make it more enjoyable. We continued to exchange playful banter throughout the day, our friendship growing stronger with each laugh and shared moment. As the contest drew to a close, we all gathered for the award ceremony. The winner, a young girl with an impressive collection of rare butterflies, was ecstatic to receive her week-long food ticket. Choji, on the other hand, looked absolutely crestfallen. I can't believe I didn't win, he mumbled, his eyes welling up with tears. Shikamaru patted him on the back. Don't worry, buddy. There's always next year. With the contest officially over, we all pitched in to help clean up the area and return the bugs to their proper homes. Although it had been a long and tiring day, I couldn't help but feel grateful for the time I'd spent with my friends and teammates. As we headed back to our respective homes, Naruto gave me a nudge. You know, Ko, that was actually pretty fun. I grinned, nodding in agreement. Yeah, it really was. Who knew a D-rank mission could be so enjoyable? Clone Great Explosion Jutsu has been learned, Bringer of Darkness technique has been learned, Multiplying Explosive Tags has been learned, fucking finally. I sighed as I looked at my Jutsu library. Raitun, Lightning Beast Tracking Fong Raitun, Lightning Ball Raitun, Lightning Zap Katan, 
Fireball Katan, Phoenix Fire Technique Katan, Dragon Fire Technique Kage Bunshin Jutsu Kage Shuriken Jutsu Jutsu, Roof Tile Shuriken Raisingan Clone Great Explosion Jutsu Bringer of Darkness Multiplying Explosive Tags Demonic Illusion, False Surroundings Technique Demonic Illusion, Tree Binding Death. Multiplying Explosive Tags is a crippled version of mutually multiplying explosive tags. It doesn't copy the explosive tags infinitely and creates several copies depending on chakra. Still, it is pretty useful. The last two techniques are what Kakashi promised me. 1C and 1B rank Jinjutsu. False surrounding technique is not really great, but it has its perks. When used right, it can create wonders. One such example is what I'm doing right now. Hokage Tsunade was sitting behind her desk, and Tazuna, a worn-out-looking bridge builder from the Wave Country, stood in front of her. Team 7, consisting of myself, Kaushin, Naruto, Hinata, and our sensei, Kakashi, were lined up in the room, awaiting our mission assignment. Hokage-sama, did you ask for me? The drunken old man asked while looking around, bewildered. I did, customer-san. Tsunade said and cleared her throat, Tazuna-san, your request stated that you needed a team of shinobi for a simple escort mission. Is that correct? Tazuna nodded, yes, that's right. I need to be escorted back to my country safely. Tsunade nodded sagely, I wanted you to meet with your escort. We smiled at the old man. He looked with scorn and berated, these brats. I asked for a shinobi, now wet behind the ears, kids. I assure you Tazuna-san, my team is more than enough for the mission. Kakashi didn't like others to undermine his team. He was proud of us, so he got mad. And I am a Jounin of Kanoha. Whatever you have trouble with, I shall deal with it. If you say so. Tazuna reluctantly accepted it. Maybe you are not comfortable with us kids because you are hiding something. Naruto asked with great wisdom. His wise blue eyes locked on Tazuna, searching for his soul. What are you talking about? Tazuna nervously sweated. Just bandits. Are you sure? Hinata asked with puppy eyes. It might end with our demise. You heard them, old man, say it. Is it a simple mission as you said? I pressed. No. Fuck no. Tazuna fell to the ground as he held his face in pain. Tsunade played along, feigning concern, Tazuna-san, you must tell us the truth about this mission. Is there something you're not telling us? Tazuna hesitated, beads of sweat forming on his forehead, I. I can't afford a B-rank mission. All I can pay is C-rank. I just hope any shinobi you send can deal with whoever Gato sends. Do you know the man known as Gato? He asked with his face sour. The underground boss of Wave Country? Kakashi asked. Tazuna sighed, finally revealing the truth, Gato is an underground boss in Wave Country. He's causing our people to suffer from starvation by depriving us of food so we couldn't resist him. Our only hope is the bridge my team and I are building, but Gato learned about it and threatened us. He killed those who resisted. I smirked and caught Tsunade's eye, giving her a subtle nod. She caught on immediately, and I deactivated the demonic illusion, false surroundings technique. The room shifted, and everyone appeared to be in a different part of the room. Tazuna looked around, confused, what's happening? Tsunade frowned, why didn't you tell us this from the beginning? Tazuna looked at the ground, ashamed, I didn't think you'd help if you knew the real danger. I win, Hokage-sama. I cheekily smiled. The talk happening between my team and Tazuna was my genjutsu. You did, brat. She sighed and pointed at me. This brat noticed you were lying about the mission description. He came to me and said my shinobi are slacking off and wasn't assessing missions correctly. Of course, I didn't believe it. Tsunade explained as she showed me. He bet with me. Said he would prove you were lying, and you would come clean even if it costs you your country. How did you know? Tazuna asked. I guess I'm just a good judge of character, I shrugged. Tazuna sighed, what now? Now, we will accept the mission, I smiled. Naruto jumped in excitement, yes. Finally, a mission that isn't just boring D-rank stuff. Tsunade looked troubled, I'm still not comfortable with the idea. This mission is far more dangerous than a C-rank mission. Kakashi raised his hand to placate Tsunade, don't worry, Hokage-sama. 
we'll make sure to keep Tazuna-san and the rest of the team safe. Tsunade sighed, finally relenting, fine. But be careful, all of you. Gato is not someone to be taken lightly. It's gonna be fine. Who could Gato find on such short notice? An S-rank missing mean? I said while Kakashi looked at me with a weird, penetrating gaze. Did I raise a flag or what? We all bowed and thanked her for her trust, and then we set off on our mission to the wave country. As we traveled, I couldn't help but feel giddy with my new techniques. I can't wait to use them on those fuckers. Oh boy, how will they look when they realize they have nowhere to run? Kakashi noticed my excitement and approached me, Kaushin, remember to stay focused. It's good to be confident in your abilities, but don't let it cloud your judgment. I nodded, taking his words to heart. Understood, Kakashi-sensei. Our first test came sooner than we expected. As we traveled along a dirt road, Hinata activated her Byakugan and spotted something unusual. As she was about to speak, she saw Kakashi signaling her to not, so she nodded slightly, and looked forward with a small blush on her face. As we approached the suspicious puddle, Kakashi deliberately didn't alert us to the imminent danger, probably wanting to test our preparedness. I mean, this time, Tazuna explained everything so there was no need to see who demon brothers were after. He just walked by without giving anything. However, with Hinata's Byakugan, my knowledge of the situation, and Naruto's heightened awareness, we weren't regular genin who would fall for such tricks. Just as we passed the puddle, the demon brothers sprang into action, dashing out with their deadly chain weapons. Fuck, this is annoying. Kakashi still feigned his death, using the Kawarimi no Jutsu to replace himself with a nearby log. He watched our fights from a safe distance, his single eye narrowed in concentration. Naruto and I launched ourselves at one demon brother each, while Hinata stayed back, focused on protecting Tazuna. Naruto and I engaged our respective opponents in fierce combat, our blows fast and furious. Naruto's improved skills were evident as he expertly dodged and countered the demon brother's attacks, forcing him on the defensive. I, too, found myself pushing my opponent back, my newly learned techniques giving me the upper hand. Should I just go rin on them and steal their hearts? Nah, no need to traumatize our sensei. As the battle raged on, Hinata remained vigilant, her Byakugan active and her body tensed, ready to defend Tazuna should any threats come their way. Tazuna, for his part, looked both awed and terrified as he watched the young shinobi fight. After several seconds of intense fighting, Naruto and I managed to subdue the demon brothers, leaving them battered and defeated. It was evident that our teamwork and individual skills had improved significantly since our days of struggling with D-rank missions. Kakashi finally revealed himself, a proud smile hidden behind his mask. Well done, all of you, he praised. Your abilities have grown, and your teamwork is impressive. Naruto grinned, pumped with adrenaline. That was awesome. We took those guys down like it was nothing. Hinata blushed at the praise but nodded in agreement. We were prepared and worked well together. As we made our way towards the wave country with Tazuna in tow, tension was palpable. Cannot blame the kids, after all they had just learned that the man they are trying to protect might be killed any time. Me? Well, I hardly care. We had managed to deal with the Demon Brothers way more efficiently than the original Team 7 ever could. With Hinata's Byakugan, Naruto's newfound skills, and my new techniques, it was easier than breathing. But the trouble was yet to come. I don't know what is the deal with Kakashi in his weakness at the beginning of the series, but since he feigned death against Demon Brothers, there is a good chance that he will be caught in water prison, although it is extremely stupid. As we approached a large lake, a thick mist rolled in, obscuring our vision. It was eerily quiet, and our senses were on high alert. It didn't take long for us to realize that we were in deep shit when none other than Zabuza Momochi, a rogue ninja from the hidden mist village, appeared out of nowhere with his massive sword, Kobikurabocho. Joke, he is just a man with a big sword. I mean, who even put this man in the same category with Kisame? Who is that sinner? The dude is seriously ugly though. Anyways Kakashi wasted no time engaging him in battle. However, despite Kakashi's impressive skills, he was caught in Zabuza's water prison jutsu. Shocker. Naruto and Hinata couldn't believe it, their badass sensei was trapped in a giant bubble of water, and we were left to fend for ourselves. How? 
Just how? You are a Kage level shinobi for fuck's sake. I know Zabuza fed his chakra to the lake and prevented Kakashi from using it effectively. Zabuza couldn't even deal with the original Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura. Any team Sakura is in games, efficiency. Kakashi, however, was not as thrilled. I fucking hate you, Kaushin, he said, shooting me a glare that could kill. But I knew he was secretly impressed. You and your big mouth. Oops. I raised my arms and said weakly. Run. Kakashi shouted from his watery prison. His water clone can't separate from the original body for too long. If you run now, you still have a shot. But there was no way we were leaving Kakashi behind. I sighed and exchanged glance with Naruto, and we knew what we had to do. Sorry, Kakashi-sensei, I said with a smirk, pulling out two kanai from my holster. It was time to put my newly learned techniques to the test. With both kanai in hand, I threw them simultaneously and formed hand seals. Kage Shuriken Jutsu. My two kunai multiplied into eight, then sixty-four, as they flew towards Zabuza's water clone. The bastard tried his best to deflect them with his oversized sword, but some managed to slip past him. At the same time, Naruto dashed towards the original Zabuza and threw his Fuma Shuriken, casting his own Kage Shuriken Jutsu. In an instant, a storm of kunai and Shuriken rained down on Zabuza. He managed to block most of them with his sword and evade the rest looking like a total boss as he did so. But just as he thought he had avoided our attacks, all the Fuma Shuriken transformed into Naruto clones, and the Kanai became me. Clone Great Explosion Jutsu, Naruto, and I chanted in unison, and a massive explosion rocked the area. When the smoke cleared, Zabuza was heavily injured and looked like a trapped animal, while Kakashi was free from his watery prison, completely unscathed. Water prison is sort of a shield after all, so in a sense, Zabuza protected Kakashi, yup I can tease him with that later. As for Zabuza, he was whizzing like an old dog at a corner. That is what you get for being cocky. Dumbass. With Zabuza weakened and our sensei back in action, the tide of the battle had definitely turned in our favor. We continued to press our advantage, working together as a seamless unit to keep Zabuza on the defensive. Naruto's furious attacks and my right hand techniques proved to be a deadly combination, while Hinata provided support from the backlands, ensuring Tazuna's safety. Kakashi, still slightly pissed about the whole situation, joined the fray, attacking Zabuza with a renewed ferocity. It was clear that he wanted to make up for his earlier weakness. Can't say I blame him, nobody wants to be stuck in a giant bubble of water like a goldfish. Welp, except maybe a goldfish. As we continued to corner Zabuza, Kakashi couldn't help but marvel at our teamwork. We were like a well-oiled machine, with each of us anticipating the other's moves and adapting accordingly. He was having his wet dream. Our relentless assault forced Zabuza to step up his game, and he began using some seriously advanced techniques. He summoned a massive water dragon that barreled towards us, threatening to wipe us out in one fell swoop. But we didn't flinch. Instead, we countered with our own powerful jutsu, creating an epic clash of water, fire and lightning. The battlefield turned into a chaotic spectacle of elemental forces. Water and lightning crackled in the air, creating a symphony of destruction that was both terrifying and exhilarating. Through it all, the secret watcher had never appeared. Finally, after what felt like an eternity of exchanging blows, Kakashi managed to land a decisive hit on Zabuza. His doton-covered fist connected with his chest, sending him flying back and crashing into the ground, defeated. He was panting after using so many jutsu, exhausted from the battle, but there was a sense of elation around Naruto. He was beaming with pride. Kakashi looked around at us, his gaze lingering on the team for a moment. Well, kids, I have to admit, you've got some skills, he said begrudgingly, but with a hint of pride in his voice. You're not so bad yourself, sensei, I replied, smirking. Maybe next time, you won't get stuck in a water bubble. He just rolled his eyes and shook his head, but I knew he secretly appreciated our help. He is just too shy to admit it, I know. Water mist jutsu, Zabuza folded and created a mist so thick, not even our nose could be seen. Too bad for him, I could still track him with my map, and we had a damn Hugo with us. In his defeated and injured state, he thinks he can escape from us, how cute. Heh, he probably thinks Haku can save him. 
o'clock, Hinata reported dutifully. Thanks, I smirked and arrived in front of him in a flash. I cast Bringer of Darkness and all of a sudden the opening turned into abyss hell. No one beside me and those I wanted could see around. What is this? Zabuza looked around in horror. He thought he got us and could slip away in the mist, while in fact, he was trapped in my web like the bug he was. Oh, I am glad you noticed. Yes, I don't like Zabuza. I never did. Self-righteous prick. Just after Haku dies he decides to become a great man. My ass. And Haku? Same shit. I can see where he is coming from, but he should have some balls. Since he claims to have them. Kakashi appeared near him and defused him for good this time. Zabuza lay paralyzed on the ground. Good job team. Kakashi praised as he looked at the missing meme. Why are you after the bridge master? Are you working for Gato? Bite me. Zabuza howled. He just might. I chuckled under my breath. I heard that. Kakashi looked at me with a stink eye. Are you that deep? Before Kakashi could finish, five senbans flew through the air and stabbed the side of Zabuza's neck. We all dashed back and looked at the person above the tree cautiously. Kiri's hunter Neen. Kakashi nodded to the masked Neen. I was looking for missing Neen for quite a while. Thank you for capturing him. The person said. Kakashi walked to the Zabuza and checked his pulse. Dead. He confirmed. I will be taking my leave then. Thank you. Hunter Neen said and walked to the body. He grabbed the body over his shoulder and was about to go away. Then he looked around and formed a seal. Kai. The scene in front of him changed. The body he was about to carry vanished and the original Zabuza appeared elsewhere. What is the meaning of this? He turned to ask me. He realized I cast the Jinjutsu. Sensei, what is the standard procedure when Hunter Neen kills a missing Neen? I asked while looking at Haku. Kakashi looked shocked and said slowly, cutting off the head and destroying the body. Right. I nodded. I don't think Zabuza is dead just yet, nor do I think this person is Kiri's Hunter Neen. In the next second, another Kakashi appeared behind Haku and chopped his neck, with a strong attack, knocking him cold. That is right. He nodded. That should make things easier, I commented as I walked to the big ass sword and sealed it in a scroll, while Kakashi folded some seals. Summon Jutsu. Yo. With a smoke, a pug appeared. Pakan, can you take this to Hokage-sama? Kakashi wrote a message quickly and gave it to the dog. Cool. What is this dog? Naruto commented from the side. Pakan rolled his eyes. I am out. He grabbed the letter and with a cloud of smoke, vanished. It is a summon, Naruto-kun. Hinata started to explain. Through blood connection, you can call a helper to your aid. Though you have to sign a contract with the pack before you can summon them. Kakashi-sensei, can I sign your contract? Naruto shouted in excitement. You are not a dog person, Naruto. Kakashi sat on the ground as he leaned on a tree. You should find the most compatible animal with you. How would I do that? Naruto asked eagerly. Time will tell. Just wait. Kakashi I smiled. Meh, waiting is boring. Naruto sulked. What now? We wait for ANBU to arrive and take these two. Kakashi nodded towards two enemies on the ground. Again, waiting is boring. Naruto further pouted. How about we train while waiting? I suggested. I am too lazy. Do whatever you want. Kakashi closed his eyes as he said. All right then. Let's go, Hinata, Naruto. I said and took them to the lake where Kakashi was captured. What kind of training are we gonna do, Ko? Naruto asked. Remember the tree walking? I asked. Coolest thing ever. Naruto chirped happily. Now, we are going to walk on water, I smirked. Yes. Naruto exclaimed while Hinata too looked happy. Same principle. Move chakra to the sole of your feet, and try to balance yourself on water. Different from tree walking, water is not solid, not stable. 
It moves with your every move, so you have to increase or decrease the amount of chakra required all the time. But in return, your chakra control will get better and better. I explained as I demonstrated. I already started to practice this exercise for a few months now and was getting pretty good at it. Chakra control is boring. I do it to stay on top of the water, not for chakra control. Naruto said as he jumped on the water to plunge in the next second. And that is why you are a wet idiot, I commented. Hinata too tried and succeeded in her first try, although her ankles were dipping and raising constantly. Good, Hinata. You are almost there. Thanks, Kokuin. She smiled happily. Kakashi opened his eyes slightly to look at us and smiled before closing it again. We practiced it for hours and Hinata mastered it after an hour. Naruto, on the other hand, tried for hours. He created hundreds of clones and practiced for almost five hours before he succeeded. Good job, Naruto. Right on time. With Kakashi's sentence, two ANBU appeared in front of him. Kakashi-san. One with the cat mask said. Cat, how is life? Pretty good, thanks for asking, cat answered as she looked at us. Your team is good. Thanks, they make me proud. Kakashi smiled too and explained the situation. In no time at all, two ANBU took the prisoners and left. Welp, to be honest, he didn't need to call ANBU at all. He was tired, and too lazy to move. Otherwise he could have taken them with a clone or some other way but I am not going to expose his little ploy. He earned it. Alright, let's continue. Kakashi looked at us and ordered. I, I, Sensei. A quick announcement, starting next month, I will be adjusting the checkpoint system to a weekly schedule. This means that there will be a certain number of extra chapters every week, depending on the total amount of Patreon earnings. For $50, one extra chapter every week, eight weekly chapters instead of seven, with an extra four chapters per month. For $150, two extra chapters every week, nine weekly chapters instead of seven, with an extra eight chapters per month. For $300, three extra chapters every week, ten weekly chapters instead of seven, with an extra twelve chapters per month. For $500, four extra chapters every week, eleven weekly chapters instead of seven, with an extra sixteen chapters per month. You can still subscribe to different tiers on my Patreon page to read up to twenty advanced chapters ahead. The extra chapters will not affect the twenty chapter gap between this site and my Patreon page. The next few weeks were quiet. I mean we took the big boss before we reached the end, so although Gato would try something to kill the bridge builder and demolish the unfinished bridge, it was still fine. As far as I remember, only cannon fodders left to kill. Of course, things were different this time, since I staged it as such. I made a deal with Tsunade before we took the mission. Because unlike Hiruzen, Tsunade wouldn't succumb to Naruto's whims to take a C-rank mission so early, so why did I stage it? To take the mission so the plot would be the same. Fuck no. Fuck the plot. I destroyed it long ago by only existing, then I pulverized it by killing Sasuke, making Itachi kill Danzo. I did it so I can have a high ranking mission in my chart. Like my first mission really. After all, completing higher level missions were giving us better merit points. The said points could be exchanged to learn high rank jutsu. So, I exploited Tsunade's weakness. When Naruto threw a tantrum, I nudged her to not trust her underlings. She was of course furious. After all, who would like to hear that their underlings were slacking off, or they weren't competent enough to notice it? After using my speech skill to the max, I tricked her to accept the bet. If I could prove to her that there was a mission much harder than it was recorded and ANBU screwed up the grading of the missions correctly, my team would be allowed to take it, and the mission would earn Kanoha a big amount of money. How so? Of course through Gato. Kanoha wants Gato to attack the bridge. We were all ready to take him down as soon as he attacked, because if he didn't, Kanoha couldn't go and take his base down. It would look bad if Kanoha ANBU invaded another country and stole the money of the people of Wave Country. But if Gato attacked Kanoha Shinobi, as the defender, Kanoha could infiltrate and assassinate the threat. Of course Tsunade, as a good-natured person, decided to use most of the money on Wave Country and let her stand on her feet once again, but Gato was filthy rich. The rest of the money was still enough to earn Kanoha a lot. 
And as the person suggested all of this, my contribution to this mission was massive. No, of course, I wouldn't get any monetary reward, but the merit points alone were satisfying enough. There were some small risks but even the Team 7 in anime could handle Zabuza and Haku. Now with me, better Naruto and Hinata over useless Sakura, we could destroy them. And destroy we did. How is the training going? Kakashi asked over his book. He was following Tazuna to the bridge over the weeks while I was following his instructions to train the team. Of course, a Naruto clone was following him just in case. It is going great, Sensei. I nodded excitedly. They are learning their jutsu just fine. Great, I trust you don't delay your own training. He said while looking at me with one eye. No, sir. I am learning both jutsu while teaching them. I smiled sheepishly. Great, I shall take my leave once again, Kakashi said as if he was doing us a great favor while he was just being lazy. Kakashi was a lazy individual after all, and after he saw how I could train the team, he ditched his responsibilities on me and read his perverted books all the time in the name of protecting the bridge. I wasn't complaining though. No offense, but Kakashi was a shitty teacher. The man was a fine shinobi, one of the best, but when it came to teaching, he had no idea. Not his fault, no. He was a genius, years ahead of his team. So when he was in a team of his own, he already knew everything his sensei would teach. So naturally, he missed the learning period. I, on the other hand, am a great teacher. I know every detail about the anime and saw the teaching method of many different people shown in the show. Other than that, I know Naruto and Hinata better than themselves. I saw their past, present, and future. I know what they can and can't do. I can prepare them for their fated selves. Ko, are you sure this will work? Naruto asked with the rubber balloon in his hand. He already completed the water balloon training. Naruto, I promised myself that I wouldn't help you every single time, but I will break this promise once, so listen carefully. I sternly said as his back straightened. If you can't do it in one sitting, do it in a thousand. And try to look left and right at the same time. What is that supposed to mean? He angrily huffed but I ignored him. He had to learn how to use the brain of his. I wouldn't be there to help him in every stage of his life, after all, I could but I wouldn't. Kaushin Kuen, am I doing it right? Hinata asked where she was working. I made her start on gentle fist and water release. She was kind and hated hurting people. So, I made her develop her own taijutsu that was even softer than gentle fist. How? Easy really, adding water to her fists, she can reduce the damage of the attacks and bound enemies by locking their tenketsu or just locking them in water prison. You are doing great, Hinata. Your chakra control is already spectacular. All you have to do is feel the flow. Feel how chakra is moving inside your body, and try to imitate it without using hand seals similar to how you use gentle fist. Hyuga are geniuses when it comes to moving the chakra. You can already use revolving heaven, it means you can use your tenketsu to release chakra. Now, when you use the seals, the chakra will move in your body, and when it is near your tenketsu, I want you to release the water elemental chakra to form your taijutsu with water element. I explained slowly. Here, let me demonstrate, I said and started to gather chakra in my hand. In the next second, the chakra started to crack with lightning. It wasn't chidori, nor any jutsu of the said element. It was something I came up with, whelp, kinda cheated my way to it, but anyway. Elemental body, this perk cost me 60 perk points. It allowed me to change the pure chakra to elemental in slash on my body. Kinda similar to Rakage's lightning chakra mode but different. I could do the same with the fire element as well, but the problem is, I cannot release chakra from my other tenketsu as finestfully as a hyuga. After all, I am not a hyuga. And I wasn't proficient enough to release enough chakra to coat my body through releasing from my hands. But, I still could use a few tricks. For example, like how Rakage did, I could change the nature of my chakra to enhance my reaction speed. After all, even if I couldn't release it from all my tenketsu, the chakra in my body could be turned as well, unlike Rakage. I also could release lightning elemental chakra from the sole of my feet to increase my speed. Yes. Lightning flicker baby. Or fire flicker. Can you see it? 
I asked Hinata. She was looking at my hand with awe. Naruto too appeared by her side and looked at me. My hair was fluttering with the sheer power of my chakra while both of my hands were covered with destructive lightning chakra. The sole of my feet was also cracking. It was loud but fast. I am releasing chakra, and changing it to elemental at the same time. Then. I said and vanished from where I was standing and appeared in front of Hinata with my fist raised. It was moving like a lightning strike moving towards her face. Her pupils constricted to the limit, while panic surfaced on her face. In a matter of less than a second, her chakra left her body and covered her surroundings. She raised her two hands and started to revolve on her soul. At the same time, my fist clashed with her forming revolving heaven and sent both of us flying back. Naruto too, sent flying by her revolving heaven. I thought you could add water element when you are forced to but your instinct still forced you to use revolving heaven. I mused as I moved towards them. We have to work on them. Sorry, Kaushin Kuen. Hinata apologized as she gazed at the ground. Don't. It is not your fault. I smiled as I said. You just have to get comfortable with using it. Ko, that was awesome. Naruto got up from where was blasted off. He looked at me with his eyes shining. I will teach you too when you learn Rasengan and increase the chakra control, I answered sternly. Despite being able to walk on water, Naruto was still lacking. His control over chakra was weak. I know Kyuubi was influencing his chakra coils and preventing him from controlling efficiently, but he has to. He has to find a way around it. Ah, man. He whined. I suck at it. That is why you should work over it. I sighed. Without controlling the flow of chakra, you cannot form these cool things. But you are not helping at all. He pouted. How can I look right and left at the same time? Would I ask you if I wasn't certain you could? I asked. No, but, no buts. Just think about the jutsu you can use and their usages. I said with anger as his eyes dilated. You mean? He asked. Fucking, finally. Oh no. Naruto exclaimed all of a sudden as we were training. It was our last week of the mission, and it didn't look like Gato would come anytime soon. The bridge was about to be completed and our training was coming to an end. Hinata almost mastered the elemental chakra taijutsu while Naruto could form Rasengan with a clone but I forbade him to use a clone and he had to get used to using it on his own. What happened? I asked calmly. Probably Gato arrived and the clone following Kakashi dispelled itself to let Naruto know what was happening. We were close to the bridge anyway. I was waiting for this. The enemy. Naruto stuttered. Calm down. They are probably cannon fodders. I answered as I stretched lazily. The hell are you talking about? Naruto exclaimed in distress. Two enemies in black cloaks with red clouds, like Itachis, arrived and they are battling against Kakashi. Sensei ordered us to run away as soon as possible. Fuck. I shouted as I dashed towards the bridge. Naruto and Hinata were following but I was too fast and I couldn't wait. Why? Akatsuki had nothing to do with this mission. Have I fucked things too much? I formed a clone and sent it to Naruto's side. Naruto, what did the enemies look like? Not the clothes, face, and other distinct features. Um, one of them looked like a mummy. Up to chin and ears covered by bandages, red tattoo over his lower face. Naruto described. And a really tall man, even taller than Kakashi, with short brown hair and a mustache. Broad nose, slightly wrinkled face, and small black eyes. Maybe. Okay, you and Hinata stay away from cloaked guys and protect Tazuna. The clone said and dispelled itself. The fuck? I exclaimed as the information filled my head. The first one is probably Juzo. Itachi's first partner was later killed by the fourth Mizukich. When I saw the big ass sword Zabuza was using, I thought it was the same in the anime. But obviously not. And the second one sounds like Kakuzu's partner. He wasn't even named. I know nothing about him. But he is a Jounin level opponent for sure. I arrived at the bridge in a few minutes and looked at the scene in horror. Kakashi was wounded, and one of his arms was critically injured. On the other side, 
two men with cloaks were standing. One of them, Juzo, was carrying a katana. Next to him was the man with small eyes. Kakuzu's supposed partner. Juzo was Itachi's partner, where is Itachi? Are Kakuzu and Itachi around here too? Sensei, leave the mummy guy to me, I shouted as I arrived with a lightning flicker. Juzo was supposed to die in his battle against Mizukich. Even if he isn't dead, he must have been injured badly. He probably has half of his strength. Get out of here. It is an order. Kakashi said with a no bullshit voice but I ignored. No can do, I smirked as I looked at Juzo and threw a kunai. He dodged as if it was nothing. You are from Kiri right? I asked. I was. He smirked. I have this big ass sword I stole from Zabuza. Want it? I asked. I knew he did. It was his sword before, it was a great allure to him. Without waiting I dashed away. Koz, Kakashi wanted to follow but was stopped by the small-eyed man. Let them solve their own battle. The man answered with an evil grin. You are my hunt. Kakashi looked devastated but there was nothing he could do. He decided to handle the enemy as quickly as possible, then go and help his students. Then let's start. He said and formed Chidori without a seal. His Sharingan beamed as he ran towards the man, but as an Akatsuki member, he wasn't weak either. He dodged the attack and formed a wind blade with his arm. He could use wind like an extension of his body. That was how he injured Kakashi in the first place. Water mist jutsu, Kakashi shouted as mist covered his form. When the man dispelled the mist with a great wind jutsu, Kakashi was already behind him. His hand covered with chidori was aiming at the man's heart. The man turned around and grabbed Kakashi's hand with great finesse, and the wind ball in his arm dispelled chidori. You lost. He smirked but in the next second, he was shocked. Literally. The Kakashi he was holding turned into lightning and stunned him. The real Kakashi appeared behind the man with Rasengan twirling in his hand. Are you sure? Kakashi asked as he attacked. Where are you running to, you brat? Juzo shouted from behind. But I didn't stop. I am not delusional. I know I can't beat a Jounin level shinobi no matter how weakened they are. I wanted to separate them and chose Juzo because of the elemental advantage, but he is still above my grade. Where is the sword? Give it to me and I will let you go. He shouted again. I sealed it on a seal with a password only I can open. If I am dead, it will simply vanish. I shouted back. Of course, I was bullshitting. There wasn't such a thing, but I hoped Juzo would buy it. As if there is such a seal. Unfortunately, he didn't. I mean there is such a seal, but if he doesn't know it, I can't trick him. Now, give it to me. As if I would give it to you. Without that sword, you are just a regular Jounin. I taunted as I continued to run. Why you little shit? He shouted as he increased his speed. He was playing with me before now he was a lot faster. Even with my lightning flicker, I couldn't outrun him. You will regret it. As his two hands were about to catch me, I jumped into the air, parallel to the ground. My two feet blazing with fire, kicked his open palms. Where they meet, an explosion born and launched me away from him. You slippery slug. He clenched his fists and ran even faster but I was getting further and further away with fire flicker. Each step was akin to a rocket, exploding with a great force. It was wearing my body down but it was taking me further and further away. But all of a sudden, a tsunami formed and covered my body. In the next second, I was nowhere to be seen. A clone. Juzo looked in disbelief as he turned back in anger. When? Asked Kakashi in terror. After his lightning clone dissipated and he appeared behind the small-eyed man with Rasengan, the man dissipated into a water clone as well. The original man appeared behind Kakashi with Kunai aiming at the latter's heart. You are not the only one who made use of the mist. It was a dumb move, Kakashi of the Sharingan. Mist blocks that cursed eye, doesn't it? Hee <laughs> hee. Asked the man with a grin. Now you die, and I will go to kill your little genins as well. Gato should have killed the bridge builder by now. You have lost. Kanoha has lost, huh, shut the fuck up. 
A voice cut the laughter as a kunai plunged deep into a small-eyed man's gut from behind. Kakashi didn't miss the opportunity and turned to kill the man in less than a second. The man looked at his back in disbelief. In his small mind, he couldn't comprehend how a genin appeared behind him without him knowing it. You want to know right? Kaoshin asked with a devilish grin. Man's eyes were begging. Begging to know. Too bad, you will die without knowing it. The small genin finished as the man died. You motherfucker. A roar reverberated as Juzo came back, but it was too late. Its partner had already died. You will pay. He, a wounded dog, ran away to lick his wounds, barking loudly. Where is your famous sword? Kaushin asked. Kakashi's eyes glinted as he looked at the duo, but didn't say anything. Learned anything? He only asked. Swaytun Main. Above Jounin Chakra level. Without a sword, he is a regular Jounin level and speed is average. Kaushin briefed and started to heal his sensei. How about Plan C? Kakashi asked while soaked in the comforting itch growing on his arm. How about Plan Double C? Kaushin asked with a grin. Kakashi copied him and grinned as well. Let's go then. Naruto Kuen, there are so many of them, Hinata whispered in terror. Don't worry, Hinata chan. They are just regular thugs with no chakra at all. Also, I am here, aren't I? Naruto comforted her by standing in front of her. The reassuring smile washed away gloomy clouds on her face. Hinata looked at the childish shoulders of Naruto and gained back her confidence. Let's do it then, we have to protect the old man. Naruto shouted as he formed his favorite seal, multi-shadow clone jutsu. Hundreds of Naruto appeared all around and looked at the ever-approaching thugs with the myriad of weapons in hand. As Naruto was about to beat the shit out of them, Gato with a tattooed man appeared in front of them. The tattooed man was holding Tsunami and Inari, the daughter and grandson of the bridge builder Tazuna. Fuck. Naruto cursed as he looked at the short man. Let them be. I shall if you give me the old man, Gato smirked triumphantly. It is my win, Kanoha Shinobi. I hired two strong men after you defeated useless Zabuza and Toyboy of his, and I abducted two hostages. Now, if this isn't a checkmate, what is? I am sorry, Tazuna, but you have to go. Naruto looked at the old man with a sigh then moved him forward. I know. Tazuna sighed sadly, as he looked at his daughter and grandson. I am sorry to cause you trouble, Inari, Tsunami. Dad. Grandpa. Don't cry. Tazuna smiled brightly. This is not the end. But both cried anyway. As Tazuna approached them slowly, one of the thugs approached to check his body before he let the old man approach their boss. Tazuna walked to the short boss at the forefront and looked down on him. You piece of shit. Now that you got me, let them go. Tazuna said with spits flying all over Gato's face. Not so fast. Let me kill you in front of them first. Gato smirked and pulled out a blade. He aimed at the old man's gut to kill him slowly and painfully. The blade moved, but before it could reach the target, a cloud of smoke covered the surrounding area, and in the next second, the tattooed man fell to the ground cold. Inari and Tsunami appeared near Hinata with another Naruto. What? Asked Gato in disbelief. You piece of shits think you can battle against Shinobi? How ludicrous. One of the Naruto's said and in the next second, all of them charged forward. Double Chidori, 10,000 Bird Symphony. Kakashi and I shouted together, as two hands covered with lightning pierced through Juzo. He looked at Kakashi and me in disbelief and tried to understand what had happened. It wasn't that complicated really. Plan C was for the team to distract the enemies while Kakashi to assassinate them with Chidori. The distraction was mostly Naruto with his loud and flashy personality, while Hinata acting weak and vulnerable. Me depending on the situation. But this plan was never made for Jounin level opponents. Kakashi would never allow us to battle against a Jounin, let alone an elite one. But since the situation forced us, Kakashi was willing to take the risk. When he was suggesting plan C, he meant to be a distraction, but when I suggested plan double C with a glint in my eye, Kakashi, luckily, realized what I wanted to do, and went along with it. Now, tricking an unexpected enemy is easy. 
at least relatively. But an enemy who had fallen on a trap once would be suspicious of his own shadow and would be almost impossible to trick them once again. Almost. Still, I had all the advantages, while the enemy only knew I was good at cloning Jutsu to trick him. He still didn't know what else I was hiding under my sleeve. I know, overused, but isn't inorganic henge genius? It fucking is. I don't know why they didn't use it anymore after Naruto got Sabuza with it, but all in all, it is one of the most useful jutsu in all anime. Might be nip and tuck with harem jutsu. I used it at the beginning of the battle too. When I first arrived, it was my clone. And the kunai he threw and dodged by the enemy, that was the real me. The one Jozu was chasing after was a clone, and when Kakashi was in danger, I cancelled the henge and appeared behind the enemy. Now, for plan C, there were few steps to be taken. First, distraction. It was easy. I folded the seals quickly while Kakashi finished his. His newly acquired Suetun, Water Dragon Jutsu appeared from his back and flew towards Juzo. Water technique against Akiri Nin, not wise at all. Smirked Juzo as he formed seals of his own. Surprisingly, he took control of the dragon and stopped its movement. Not to the level of sending it back, but it was still a feat to be proud of. Next, my jutsu unleashed. Katan, great fire annihilation, oh right, after the Uchiha clan was destroyed thoroughly, and since there was no air left, all the jutsu interpolated into the village library. I seriously considered using the eyes in my inventory to claim the heritage of one of the founder clans, but in the end, logic prevailed. Long story short, this majestic jutsu was lying in the library for me to take. Not me per se, but I could ask Kakashi to teach me. When fire clashed with the stationary water dragon, vapor covered the area around Juzo. Heh, what is this? Imitation of hidden mist. I can feel your chakra, you know. He could. Of course, he could. We were forming high-level jutsu and it had an impact on the atmosphere. But that was the plan. In the next second, Kakashi appeared behind Juzo only to be countered by a sword. While I charged straight but since he turned to intercept Kakashi, I was on his back. I did mention the greatest perk ever right. Elemental body, now, not only this perk allowed me to change the nature of my chakra while it was in my body, but it also allowed me to cover my body with it. It sounded average, I know. But why was it too hard to change the nature of the pure chakra jutsu, such as Rasengan? Because it was tedious to change nature while forming the attack simultaneously. But did I need that? My chakra was already elemental, and it flowed as easily as pure chakra. So, what would happen if I used elemental chakra and used Raisingan? Elemental Raisingan baby. What else? Fire Raisingan. I shouted with gusto as I aimed at Juzo's back. He was still in a tug of war with Kakashi, and couldn't defend in a short time. The ever spinning ball of fire approached Kirinin, but it never hit. Calm down, it never meant to. You see, he could dodge this attack. This was a single layer of a great plan. A mere distraction. Remember the first step. This was it, the opening jutsu of water dragon and great fire annihilation were mere greetings. Now for the next step, covering the enemy's eyes. When the fire Raisingan was about to hit Juzo, he used body replacement without any hand seals. But we were already expecting this, like I said, the fire Raisingan didn't mean to arrive. In the next second, I used fire flicker and blasted the tree branch I was standing on and appeared near Juzo. The fireball in my hand was about to dissipate, and Kakashi was still far away. Juzo smirked as he approached. Remember Hinata's role? Baiting? Yeah, I was the bait this time. Although he wasn't sure, he was quite positive I had the big ass sword he wanted. Kakashi was away, and I was in the open. He could kill me easily and gain his weapon back. Or, so he thought. When he was in front of me, I let go of fire Raisingan and started to fall back. The third step, hooking. Seeing my retreat, he was even more anxious and flickered behind me. But that was his last mistake. As soon as he did, two Chidori plunged deep into his chest. One from Kakashi, and the other from me. Mine was fake, it was just my hand covered with lightning, but it was still enough. A little fish pulled you to the den of sharks. And you die because of your greed. 
How stupid. I sighed as I looked at the character meant to die anyway. Good job, Hinata, Naruto. I shouted as I arrived and saw all the thugs were beaten and bound by seals. Naruto was taking few injutsu classes with me. And being Uzumaki helps with seals. Although a little idiot, Naruto learned quite quickly. A simple seal to bind simpler thugs was nothing for him. Good job guys. Kakashi I smiled as he patted Hinata and Naruto. Sorry, sensei. I couldn't bring myself to kill them. Naruto stared at the ground as he said. I know I have to, but I just couldn't do it. It is fine, Naruto. You will get there. Kakashi nodded. He knew naiveness would kill a good shinobi on the battlefield, but against thugs, Naruto had the privilege to spare them. We needed Gato alive anyway. You mongrels defied me. The god of this pitiful country. Gato shouted from the high stage. A bodyguard with a blade was near, protecting him. Poor people of Wave Country were watching with hatred and desperation. You want to build a bridge, huh? Without my, your gods, will. Shouted the short man. You, behind my back, hired shinobi from other villages with the money I bestowed upon you. For this. I will shred all of you into the pieces. I will kill your children in front of you to teach you that you shouldn't defy your gods' wishes. Poor citizens shivered in terror, as the guard walked down from the stage to pull one of the children. You shall not touch my kid. The child's father shouted as he jumped on top of the guard. The man was weak and feeble, but the fire in his eyes was hotter than hell flame. He is alone, get him. The father who had jumped on top of the guard shouted while wrestling with the guard. Citizens rallied with newfound hope and started to dash at Gatto. Gato reeled back in fear but too afraid to run away. In no time at all, he was swallowed by the angry citizens. Punches, kicks, jabs rained on his short body. After ten minutes, Gato was lying on the ground, bloodied and dead. Well done, Kaushin, Kakashi said from not far away. Thanks, Sensei. Kaushin gazed at the relieved citizens and the killed Gato on the ground. In the beginning, he was playing Gato and rallied citizens, awakening their will to resist for one last time. The guard was just a clone while the angry citizen who jumped on him was Kakashi. After rallying the citizens, just when he was about to be drowned by hundreds of angry mobs, he switched places with Gato who was tied to a tree not far from him. The rest was easy. After struggling this long, citizens were more than happy to kill this vile man. Of course, Naruto and Hinata weren't there. They were still too soft to scheme something like this. Seems like it is my turn again, Kakashi said lazily and henge into the angry father once again. My fellows, Gato is dead. He shouted with gusto. Yeah. Citizens copied his zest and shouted too. He raised his hand to quiet down the people. Now that this vile man is dead, we should get what was ours back. He shouted. Yes. Citizens cried. His base is not far from here. Let's go and take the money and valuables. Then we gather here in the city center to present them to Tazuna-san. He was the only one with the guts to battle against this vile man while we were all scared and hidden like beaten dogs. Yeah. People of Wave Country. Please take note that, Tazuna-san has shinobi with him, beaten all of Gato's men. It was them who gave us this opportunity and shall protect us until the end. But let me warn you, if you try to steal from your fellow citizens, it is the vilest thing you can do, and I personally punish you. Let's go. Tazuna-san, you can move to the city center. People went to ransack Gato's base and will return with his riches. It should help you get on your feet once again. Kakashi explained. From the beginning, Tazuna was taken away. When Naruto arrived, one of his clones took him away from the battlefield, just in case he died from a stray shuriken. He didn't see Gato and his men getting beaten, nor did he see the play staged in the city center. Thank you very much, Kakashi-san and the kids. I am sorry that I undermined you when we first met. You were great heroes who saved the whole country. I will always be grateful. Say nothing of it. It was our job. Kakashi smiled. Jennings too smiled brightly. It felt nice to help people. All right, let's go and finish the mission. Kakashi led them to the city center and by now, 
citizens were carrying everything they could to the center and were greeting Tizuna. They dropped whatever they were carrying, be it money or valuables in front of him. We have won. Tizuna cried as he looked at the people's smiling faces. Yes. Citizens shouted all together. We will be here until the bridge is finished, so Tizuna-san, please gather everyone can help with it. Kakashi reminded people that they were there because of Tizuna. All right. Tizuna nodded and talked to his people. In no time at all, people gathered their tools to move towards the bridge. Kakashi-san, we found 21 bases spread all around the country. The main base cleared out of weapons and illegals. We left money and food as you ordered. From the other 20 bases, we were able to gather more money and drugs. An ANBU appeared from Kakashi's shadow and reported. Good. Take them all to the village. Kakashi nodded. Yes, sir. The ANBU vanished as if he was never there. With it Kakashi left the wall he was leaning on and walked toward celebrating mobs. A week after Gato's death, the bridge was finally completed. With the help of other citizens, the almost finished bridge was completed very quickly. After the mission ended, there was nothing else Team 7 had to do, thus they left. Tizuna-san, what should we name the bridge? asked one of the citizens. Hmm, Great Bridge of Seven. Tizuna nodded after thinking for a while. He wanted to name it after two genin saved him and his family, but the other two risked their lives to battle against those strong enemies. Fine name. Citizens agreed as they continued celebrating, finally back. Naruto shouted as we entered the village. The mission was long, longer than a month, but it was worth it. Yes, fucking worth to risk your life for, why? Because. Congratulations Team 7. Tsunade said with a smile. You once again found yourselves in a mission much harder than graded. Even after Kaushin cleared the earlier trickery, you in the end had to battle against Akatsuki. That is why I grade this mission as S rank. The pay is 2 million Rio. You can share it as you wish. Tsunade added and waved her hand. Dismissed. Kaushin, stay back with Kakashi. Ah man, why can't I stay back? Naruto whined as he left with Hinata. Kaushin. Yes, Hokage-sama. Is there something you would like to explain? Like what? I asked with surprise. From the reports, I can deduce that you knew the member you led away was the previous owner of the sword you acquired. We learned from Zabuza, the captured missing Nin, that the sword was in Juzo's hand before Mizugake battled with him and almost killed him. But how did you know this? Tsunade asked with a squint. I didn't. I just asked because if he was a Kiri Shinobi, I answered calmly. Seeing her non-believing eyes, I added. If a Kiri Shinobi asked you if you wanted the Sword of the Thunder God, would you refuse them? Even if you were a missing Nin, you would want the national treasure of your village. Instead of the enemy holding it, wouldn't it be better for you to hold it? Hmm. It makes sense. Tsunade muttered. I just offered to pull the enemy while Sensei was dealing with the other. I honestly didn't know if my opponent used to own the blade. I don't even know the name of the sword. I just said if he wanted the big ass sword we took from Zabuza and hoped he would fall for my taunt. I said, as I passed the scroll to Tsunade. I didn't need that stupid sword. I got it for extra reward. Speech increased to 72, alright, fair enough. Tsunade nodded. Inoichi already gathered enough evidence from Zabuza, that was how she knew the sword was owned by Juzo before Zabuza. But how could I know that? Of course I can't. But is there for me to know for me to act the way I did? Your performance was exemplary once again. You were able to lure away an S-class missing mean and helped your sensei to beat two of them. It was sensei who killed them. I was just a mere distraction. I humbly added. Still. Standing against two Akatsuki members and leaving alive is worthy to brag about. Without you, Kakashi might have died. Tsunade praised. True. Before you arrived, I was injured and had no way of winning. Kakashi smiled. Thank you then. I accepted their praises. So, normally this falls on Sensei to decide but you are almost half-captain and I wanted you to be here too. Tsunade started, Chunin exams will start in a few weeks, and Kakashi wants you to participate. 
what do you think of it, Vice Captain? First of all, thank you for asking, and thank you Kakashi Sensei for trusting us. I answered, I believe we have a good chance to reach the finals. As a team, we have a great collaboration. And our expertise covers all grounds. With Hinata being the scout and Naruto as the distraction, no team should be able to threaten us. Same as Kakashi said, Tsunade smirked. How about yourself? I am more of the brain of the team and heavy damage, I smirked as well. Show me your last jutsu, Tsunade asked. I raised my hand and a swirling fire formed an ever-spinning ball of chakra in my hand. Katan, Raisingan, amazing. Tsunade praised. I didn't believe it at first, but you actually did it. It was thanks to the idea that I taught Hinata. I humbly said, she didn't want to hurt people so I suggested that she add the water element to her taijutsu to soften her attacks while at the same time binding them. Then I was teaching Naruto how to form Raisingan. Then it dawned on me. What if I mixed both ideas? This is a plus plus jutsu, Tsunade concluded. For creating new jutsu you can take two a rank jutsu, anything you want or would you like to decide first. You can sign the Rashomon contract with this. Before I sign the Rashomon, I first would like to discover my own summons. I shall visit you later for two jutsu if it's okay. I answered. I want to try summoning to be reverse summoned to my fated animals. After that, I will sign Rashomon. It is fine. You are dismissed then. Rookie Genin team captains, step forward. Kakashi, Asuma, Kurinai, Genma, Iroha. Tsunade ordered as she looked at the Jounin standing in front of her. Team number order, present your answers. Team 3 led by Iroha, Genin Sai, Shin and Yuyu. I, Hyuga Iroha, recommend these three to take the Chunin exam. Team 5 led by Genma, Genin Shiro, Kafu and Kiku. I, Shiranui Genma, recommend these three to take the Chunin exam. Team 7 led by Kakashi, Genin Kaushin, Uzumaki Naruto, Hyuga Hinata. I, Hataki Kakashi, recommend these three to take the Chunin exam. Team 8 led by Kurinai, Genin Haruno Sakura, Inazuka Kiba, Aburame Shino. I, Yuhi Kurinai, recommend these three to take the Chunin exam. Team 10 led by Asuma, Genin Nara Shikamaru, Akimichi Chuji, Yamanaka Ino. I, Saratobi Asuma, recommend these three to take the Chunin exam. All rookie teams recommended. This is rare. Commented people in the background. Been years since something like this happened. Hold on a second. Irika jumped into the conversation. What is wrong? Asked Tsunade with her eyes squinted. Forgive my bluntness but those genin were my students. I know what they are capable of. I admit they are pretty good, but it is too soon. Irika said with gusto. So? Kakashi asked unimpressed. Did you know Kaushin battled against an S-rank shinobi and saved my life twice? What? The room descended into disbelief and silence. It is impossible. It is what it is, Kakashi said with a little bit of irritation. My team is more than enough to take this exam and every one of them. Not only Kaushin. Naruto is excelling as a seal master. Hinata has learned something considered impossible even by her clan. I know you taught them in the academy but they are my students now. I understand your sentiment, Irika. Tsunade slapped the table, but this is my age now. Old monkey's time ended when I kicked his ass. Asuma twitched when he heard her. Under me, the academy changed. All genin no ten elemental jutsu. Chakra control exercise is much better. All of the fifteen genin can do tree walking, most can already do water walking. Of the fifteen are from noble clans of Kanoha and have their clan techniques. And even those without them learned either Fuin Jutsu or Healing Jutsu to graduate. They are not an excuse for a genin you use to graduate. All of them are fine kunoichi and shinobi of my village. Hokagesama. Irika wanted to say something but Tsunade stopped him. That is final. Team 3, 5, 7, 8, and 10 will participate in the exams. Drop the kid. Naruto shouted at the weird-looking Suna Shinobi. What if I don't? Ask the guy. You are a Suna Shinobi. Since you are walking freely, 
it means you are here for the Chunin exams. Naruto deducted. So what? Kenkuro asked. If you don't drop the kid, I am permitted to attack you. We can even take your right to participate in the exam if you refuse to cooperate. And who are you to decide that, smelly brat? Kenkuro smirked. If Naruto was a haughty young master, he could say he was a council member despite his age, and could banish his fat ass from the village, but since he was humble, he chose not to. You asked for it. Naruto started to dash towards the guy, full of openings. Kenkuro grinned evilly as he moved his fingers. His chakra threads attached to the running blonde's feet and he pulled them. The blonde fell on his buttock. You are weak. Is this the standard of Kanoha Genin? He raised his hand evilly, wanting to punch the small kid in his hands. I want to break this kid no, you are miles away doing that in my presence, Naruto commented as he placed the kanai in his hand on the guy's neck. The earlier blonde that fell to the ground vanished with a cloud of smoke. Clone. Kenkuro asked in shock. Drop the kid, Naruto asked in anger, but in the next second, a shuriken stabbed into the guy's hand that was holding Kanoamaru. Arg. Kenkuro screamed in pain, as he looked to the source of the shuriken. There stood a teen with blonde hair and purple eyes, smirking at him like he was a circus animal. Next one, we'll stab you in the neck, Kaushin said while playing with shuriken in his hand. Get lost. You bastard. Kenkuro shouted in pain. I hate your kind most. I hate you. I will destroy you. He reached out to his puppet fastened behind him. The girl near him tried to stop him, but he didn't intend to. As he was about to unleash the puppet, a voice arrived to stop him. Kankuro, stop that. You are an embarrassment to our village. Said Gara, standing upside down. Kaushin Long felt his presence. He was watching from the shadows. Fine shinobi, for sure, but his bloodlust was too thick. Kankuro tried to apologize in terror, while Gara ignored him and turned to Kaushin to apologize. Fine, fine. You can go away. I will see you in the Chunin exam. He waved his hand lazily as he dismissed them. What is your name? Asked Gara, with his eyes burning with killing intent. Kaushin. He answered with a smile. Last name? Asked the teen with the lamest tattoo. No last name. I don't belong to a clan. He answered once again. With it, the trio left. Kaushin turned to look in another direction as he flicked a middle finger. You three too, get lost. I shall see you in the exams. How? The sound trio looked in dread. They were far from them, watching the show. But the kid was able to see them. He is not simple. Hinata, Naruto. I greeted my teammates after leaving the scene. Naruto said goodbye to Kanoamaru and others after we were away from Sound 3 and Suna Genin. Ko, are these people here in the village really because of it? Naruto asked, shivering. What else? I smirked. Chunin exams are about to start. Yes. Naruto exclaimed in excitement. When is it? This weekend, I answered as I passed out two papers, one each. Fill out these forms and we will meet at classroom 301 at 1500 hours. We are finally going to become Chunin. Naruto was on cloud 9. You have to impress the people watching, otherwise it doesn't matter how strong you are, or you may never become one. I sighed. What do you mean? Asked Hinata. So basically, there are several stages of the exam. Only the last phase is in front of the public and kages from other villages. Jounin and Hokage will evaluate our performance and will decide if we have Chunin material. Do take note that power doesn't necessarily mean promotion. Even if you lose in the first fight, you can still become a Chunin. Or even if you win the tournament, it doesn't guarantee that you will become one. Oh, what should we do then? Naruto asked with confusion seeping out of his face. You have to show your tactical mind, knowledge about your opponents, jutsu, and other capabilities, I answered. How can we have knowledge about our opponents? We will meet them randomly right? I don't know everyone. Naruto asked. Yes, but the final phase usually takes place two to four weeks after fights are decided. As a ninja, you should gather information. 
I smirked. When the people moved to the finals are decided, there will be 8 to 10 people you should learn about. That is doable. Hinata nodded. It is. Naruto too agreed. All right, see you at the weekend, I will go to see my pumpkin. It has been more than a month since I last saw her. I waved and walked away. Pumpkin Chan. I entered the flower shop with excitement. To my surprise, Ino was with her parents, looked super embarrassed. Kaushin Kuen, welcome. Ino's mother, Yamanaka Aima, greeted me with a bright smile. Hello, I'm Asama, Inoichi Sama. I greeted back. Pumpkin Chama, hello. Can you stop acting all lovey dovey in my presence? I have the pride to protect. Inoichi protested under his breath. Ha! Huh. grunted Aima, as she looked at her husband. Nothing, dear. Inoichi caved in, as he looked at me with gritted teeth. If you are okay with it, father-in-law, mother-in-law, I shall take my pumpkin to a date, I said with a grin. You kids have fun, Aima answered as she pushed her daughter towards me. Kid, are you taking the exams? Inoichi asked. Of course, I shall become Chunin and officially ask for my pumpkin's hand, I answered. Why you? Inoichi looked furious but calmed when Aima coughed. Take care of my little. Pumpkin. I suggested. Take care of my princess, you bastard. He shouted as I chuckled. It is for sure. I would never let anyone hurt my sweet pie. I nodded earnestly as I took Eno's hand and left the shop. Do you have to embarrass me every time? Eno asked after we left the shop. The pout on her face looked super cute. What? I asked dramatically. You are embarrassed by me. This is not what I mean. She protested but the fine tears in my eyes made her panic. I really didn't mean that way. But you never show your love to me. I fake cried. But. Her brain boiled as she looked lost. Here, I will prove it. She said as she reached out to kiss my cheek. A timely shift and our lips meet. Hmm, yummy, I licked her lips. You. You. Bully. She cried as she ran away. Ha. Huh. I chuckled as I ran after her. Wait for me Pumpkin Chama. Ino ran through the streets of the village, her cheeks flushed with embarrassment and anger. I sprinted after her, laughing like a madman, but also feeling a warm sense of happiness and contentment. Our playful banter, the teasing, the heartfelt moments between us, they all just felt so right. Slow down, Pumpkin Chama. I yelled, struggling to keep up with her surprisingly nimble legs. Not a chance, she huffed, her eyes sparkling with mischief. You're gonna have to work harder if you want to catch me. I grinned, my heart swelling with affection for this incredible girl who had somehow managed to capture it completely. Challenge accepted, I muttered under my breath, picking up the pace. As we dashed through the village, people stopped to stare, but we paid them no mind. We were wrapped up in our own little world, and nothing could break the connection between us. The wind whipped through our hair, our laughter echoing through the air, and for a moment, everything else just melted away. Eventually, I caught up to Eno, grabbing her hand and pulling her to a stop. She panted, her face flushed from the exertion, but she couldn't hide the smile that played at the corners of her mouth. You finally caught me, she teased, her eyes twinkling with delight. Of course, I replied, smirking. I never give up, especially when it comes to you. Eno rolled her eyes, but her smile never wavered. So, what now, Mr. Smooth Talker? All right, Miss Sassy Pants, I said, playfully nudging her shoulder. How about we head to that little place near the river? You know, the one with the killer dango? Eno's face lit up at the suggestion. You remembered. I absolutely love that place. How could I forget? I replied with a grin. I mean, it's where we had our first date, after all. We made our way to the quaint dango shop, hand in hand, enjoying the comfortable silence between us. The sun was setting, casting a warm golden glow over the village, and the air was filled with the scent of cherry blossoms. It was the perfect backdrop for a romantic evening. As we settled into a cozy corner booth, I couldn't help but feel incredibly lucky. Eno was not only beautiful but also strong, intelligent, and kind. She was the perfect partner, 
both on and off the battlefield, and I was determined to prove that I deserved her. So, tell me, Eno said, breaking the silence. How do you plan on acing the Chunin exams? Well, I replied, leaning in conspiratorially, I've been working on this new jutsu that I think will blow everyone away. But it's a secret, so you have to promise not to tell anyone. Eno pretended to zip her lips shut and threw away the key. My lips are sealed, Ko. I grinned and leaned in closer, whispering the details of my new technique in her ear. Her eyes widened with surprise, and she let out a low whistle. Wow, she said, impressed. That sounds incredible. If you can pull it off, I have no doubt that you'll make Chunin in no time. I hope so, I replied, my voice suddenly serious. I want to become stronger, not just for myself, but for you and our teammates. I want to be able to protect the people I care about. Eno reached across the table and squeezed my hand with a brilliant smile. Why are you so lame sometimes? I shot her a mock hurt expression. Hey, I'm being serious here, Pumpkin Chan. Yeah, I know, she giggled. But you've got to admit, you can be pretty cheesy sometimes. Only the finest cheese for my pumpkin, I replied with a dramatic bow, burning an eye roll from Eno. Anyway, I continued, I've got another secret weapon for the exams. Oh really? Eno raised an eyebrow, a playful smile on her lips. And what might that be? Well, I said, leaning in closer, I've got the most amazing, beautiful, and powerful girlfriend on my side. Eno blushed, but she didn't look away. You're such a dork, Ko. But I'm your dork, I replied with a grin. Yes, you are, she agreed, her eyes sparkling with affection. But seriously, I'll be rooting for you and supporting you all the way. We'll both become Chunin together. I squeezed her hand, grateful for her unwavering faith in me. You bet we will. Team incredibly good-looking and talented all the way. As we walked home, hand in hand, the stars twinkling above us like tiny beacons of hope, I couldn't help but feel a surge of giddiness. And as Eno leaned in for a goodnight kiss, her lips soft and warm against mine, I knew that no matter what the world throws at me, I can deal with it. Good afternoon, Kaushin Kuen. Hinata greeted. Good day, Hinata. How was your week? Learn the new jutsu. I asked while we both were waiting for Naruto. Hmm, I made good progress, and only short of mastering it. Hinata nodded with confidence. She was learning a jutsu that would help her apprehend her opponents without hurting them, what else could she ask? I am glad. I smiled. Thanks to you, I mastered my jutsu as well. And it was true. Although I would probably get it sooner or later, seeing Hinata training gave me lots of ideas, and cleared out confusions. You are a genius, Kaushin Kuen. You helped both me and Naruto. You could have done it without me. She praised while looking down, depressed. Don't sell yourself short. You are a prodigy too. It is just that your character is not favorable in combat. I commented. When I noticed her face was sour, I added. I don't mean it is bad. You are a kind person and I respect that. In this twisted world where murder is the norm, you are a kind spirit. I wish you always stay as you are. Hmm, thank you, Kaushin Kuen. She smiled brightly. Man, Naruto doesn't deserve you, I commented as he appeared. Just then, Naruto showed up, looking a little confused. What's all this about me not deserving someone? You gotta up your game and pamper her more, Naruto. You are too dense for Hinata. I shook my head. But I already do. Naruto protested. Just yesterday I gave her a Chiraku 50% discount coupon. I facepalmed, held myself back from thrashing him around. Discount coupon for ramen? Really? Naruto's face went red, but he stubbornly defended his actions. Hey, it's the thought that counts, right? I just shook my head, chuckling. Whatever you say. Let's get to the exams. After scaling the stairs, we stopped at the second floor. Two, Jenin, were waiting in front of the classroom, while Rock Lee was getting his ass handed to him. I looked at Naruto and Hinata, as we slipped through them. Team 8 was there, with Rock Lee already in the middle of a heated argument with Kiba. I smirked, imagining the hilarity that would ensue once he would challenge the dog boy over Sakura. 
Shino was aware there was a Jinjutsu but he was too stoic to remind others, so he was just watching. Ha! Huh. I guess Lee will fight against Kiba or Shino for Sakura instead of Sasuke and Naruto. Should be fun to watch. But we will not meet with Guy this time. We didn't mind them and moved to the third floor. There, Kakashi was waiting for us. After wishing good luck, we walked in. It was just as it was in anime. Lots of people, heavy atmosphere. Pumpkin Chan. Where are you? I shouted as soon as we entered. Everyone was looking at us and Hinata looked intimidated. So I wanted to dispel the gaze on them. Now, all the people in the room were looking at me weirdly. Sweet pie. Please stop, Shikamaru said as he walked towards me with Ino and Choiji. Oh, lazy ass and fat ass. I smiled at them. Been a while. Yo, smart ass, what's up? Choiji greeted. Troublesome. Shikamaru muttered under his breath. Ko. Ino greeted silently. No, no. I shouted. What did we talk about a week ago? What are you going to call me? She looked super red. As if her mind was churning and her brain was about to explode but after a while, she muttered barely. Prince Muffin. She whispered. I didn't hear you. I shouted. Prince Muffin. She shouted back. That is my pumpkin. I hugged her. Disgusting. The rest of the class looked at us with disgust. Meh, single dogs. Die in envy. I commented. If it isn't rookie of the year, Sai commented as he walked toward. Oh yeah, he was in our class too. After Danzo died, a lot changed. Pale ass. I greeted. And twin pale ass. Fuck you too, Shin commented as he walked with Sai. The girl beside them chuckled as he greeted us. Yu Chan. How is life? Besides taking care of these two emotionally impaired brothers? I asked. Well, as usual. She shrugged. Learning jutsu, kicking asses. Nice, Naruto commented as others arrived as well. Kiba looked a little staggered. Probably Lee knocked some sense in his head. Dog smelling ass and Shino. Hello, Kaushin san, Shino said while looking at Kiba. He is a little shaken. But nothing to worry about. That's fine too. Hello, everyone. Naruto. Sakura walked towards the group and said hi. Sakura san. Naruto greeted back as cold as ever. I love what I did with him. The old Naruto would be all over her and she would beat him as if she owned him. I hated this pinket. Sakura looked at Naruto, Hinata, Ino, and me as she sighed and moved back. Hey, Hinata-sama, everyone. Niji and his team approached us, their expressions friendly and open. Since Naruto and I had pranked Hayashi, Niji had undergone a complete transformation. Now, he was much more respectful towards Hinata and the rest of us, and it was refreshing to see. As the minutes ticked by, more and more familiar faces arrived. Among them were members of Team 5. This team, like Sai's Team 3, consisted of orphans. But Sai and his crew were snatched away by Danzo at a young age and only after his demise, had they been liberated. The members of Team 5, however, had always been in the orphanage, and our interactions with them had been less than pleasant in the past. When we were younger, they would often give me the cold shoulder and outright bully Naruto. Despite the hurt they'd caused, Naruto had found it in his heart to forgive them. Unfortunately, due to the lingering influence of the matron who had raised them, their interactions with us were still somewhat frosty. And I didn't give a fuck about them at all. They were near us but didn't talk from beginning to end. We didn't talk to them either. After idly chatting for a while, a man with glasses walked to us. As soon as I saw him, something exploded in my mind. What the fuck Kabuto is doing here? I have begun publishing my new novel, High School Chronicles, The Otherworldly Harem. Please add it to your library. It's a great read, and I hope you will enjoy it as much as I do. Take a look and let me know your thoughts. Hey, you guys! Cried out Kabuto from afar. You shouldn't make so much noise. Fuck off. I smiled at his face while killing intent covered the room. 
I hated this guy. I hated his guts, I hated his face, I hated all his existence. If there was an overly pampered character with no worth at all it was this shithole. Tragic past. Fuck it. The guy was looking for excuses to kill all the elemental nations for nothing. No revenge, no goal. And how did he lose? The fucking loop showed him the value of his name. For fuck's sake. That is not Nick, Sakura started but I turned to look at her with an even more vibrant smile. Fuck off. I, Sakura froze on her feet. But I didn't care. I looked at Kabuto and removed my kunai. Go away or I will kill you right here right now. I meant it. Not that I could kill him. I knew I couldn't. But nor could he. He was a spy. Acting weak and useless. Welp, he is useless, so he is acting weak. If I try to kill him, he will use minimal force to deflect it, but I am positive I can kill him in surprise. But he can't. He can't reveal his strength or he would die. You will not be able to participate if you kill me, Kabuto smirked. Do I look like I give a fuck about this exam? I asked with a tilt of my head. Fine. I am going away. He turned back and walked away. Ko, what is wrong with that guy? Shikamaru asked with a squint. I didn't like the vibe he was giving. Be careful if you see him. I warned the others. All five teams nodded and a small episode of conflict ended with it. Ibiki arrived and told us to quiet down. In the next second, the exam began. I was seated next to one hidden chunin and Aim Kunoichi. But I couldn't care less. I didn't fill in from the start. I put my head on the table and dozed off. Kabuto's arrival pissed me off royally, and I was in no mood for a silly test. In no time at all, I was fast asleep. I was shaken awake by the fake Chunin. I turned to look at him. I was about to lash out when Ibiki's voice reverberated in the room. Why are you sleeping? I am sleepy, I answered nonchalantly. How about the exam? He asked with anger. How about it? I asked with a smile. Now that the time has ended, how do you intend to pass? I put all my money on the last question, I smirked. He looked at me with a squint but ignored it for the next second. When he declared that those who took the last question and failed to answer would be banned from taking the exam ever again, people started to leave. Since Naruto was a lot different, the small scene in the anime never happened, and more people left. And after a boring scar displaying session, Enko arrived to take us. Boring stuff. A total of 24 teams passed. We went to the entrance of the Forest of Death to take our scrolls. Again, no Enko scarring Naruto and Orochimaru appearing with his ugly mug scene happened. I went to take the Heaven Scroll and placed it in the inventory. Now no one beside me could take it even if they wanted to. As we were waiting for other teams to take their scrolls, I pointed at a redhead at a distance and said, Naruto, that girl is an Uzumaki? Huh. Like the clan I have you told me about. Naruto looked shocked and excited. Yup, one and only. Can't you feel any kindredship? He nudged him, doesn't her blood beckon yours? None of that. Naruto tilted his head, though, I feel something. Oh, it is just gas. Burp. Dumbass. I muttered. Though it probably was something. Either Kurama or Kushina in his stomach acted out. What can I do? She is from another village. Naruto sighed helplessly. He knew politics were fickle. We will see. If we get a chance, you can go and talk to her. I just shrugged my shoulders. As soon as we entered the forest, my mood drastically changed and the air around me turned heavier. Naruto, create as many clones and send them to every direction. Always keep a circle around us. I ordered. Hinata, activate Byakugan and keep an eye out. If you see massive chakra let me know. We will walk to the outer perimeter of the forest and meet with Team Ten first. Let's go. All right. Naruto exclaimed and created 250 clones and sent them around. Hinata too nodded and started to look around. Since Kabuto is here, it means Orochimaru is here too. Why? What is their angle? I was suspicious when I saw Suna Trio. 
After all, without a plan, Kazakage wouldn't send his children to another village. But it was just a hunch. Why did Orochimaru attack Kanoha? He wanted to give Sasuke a cursed mark and he attacked in passing. That was what I thought. But now that he is here, it means he has another goal. Did he really want to kill Hiruzen? Why? He is just a clown now. No one besides Naruto respects the old man anymore. So why? He wouldn't try to kill Tsunade, right? But now that I fucked the plot, not regretting it at all, I don't know what else can change. Any news? I asked as we walked for more than ten minutes. I can see Eno and others are moving towards us. Other than that, nothing. Hinata reported. Clones dissipated. One encountered the guy with the tattoo. It died immediately. Rest, I didn't even see. Probably an enemy in ambush. Naruto too reported. It is fine. I nodded and kept on walking. Soon we met with Team 10. Hello, guys. Sorry to drag you but I promised my father-in-law that I would protect my pumpkin. I stated. It is fine. With you around, things should be easier. Shikamaru lazily said. Choji nodded. It is good then. Let's hunt some poor bastards. I smirked. What scroll do you have? Earth. Ino showed. Good, we have heaven. Now we can hunt both scrolls. I nodded as we started to move. We walked all around the forest for two days, moving towards the tower. Fast enemy with a huge chakra approaching, Hinata reported when it was our third day. We already had two sets of scrolls and were going to the tower. Where is he heading? I asked warily. To us, directly. She answered with terror. ETA. Ten minutes. Fuck. Let's split up. I sighed. Five of you move towards the tower. He can't act wantonly there. After stalling, I will catch up. No. Five of them answered at the same time. This is not a request, you know. I shook my head. I am the vice captain of both teams. How are you our vice captain? Shikamaru said in annoyance. Welp, my pumpkin is your vice captain and I am her hubby. So that makes me vice captain too. You are not my hubby, you asshole. Eno scoffed. And as the vice captain, I refuse to leave you here. Oh, come on, guys. I am great at running. You all know it. I promise I will be fine. After trying to convince them for more than five minutes, they finally decided to move and ran away. Go that direction. I pointed in a direction, and with that, Naruto and the others quickly retreated. I looked at the direction where the threat was coming, as I prepared my cards. I hope I can survive this. Naruto didn't understand why Kaushin had sent him this way, but he trusted his brother. As he sprinted through the forest, he suddenly heard a scream. He didn't hesitate and sped towards the sound, only to find a girl with bright red hair about to be slashed by a massive bear. Naruto's eyes caught a flash of red. It was Karen, and she was in trouble. A bear was about to slash her, and without a second thought, Naruto leaped into action. He managed to swipe just in time, saving Karen from the bear's claws. In a swift motion, he carried Karen away in a princess carry, their eyes locking for a moment. Isn't this the girl Kaushin showed me? He thought to himself. He always wanted to find more about his mother's clan, and now that he encountered one, he couldn't help but feel close to the girl. Karen's heart raced as she stared into the eyes of her savior. The deep blue eyes looking down on hers, made her soul quiver, butterflies flutter in her stomach. Her heart started to beat up. Her senses were going haywire. The chakra he was feeling from Naruto was so warm, so accommodating. So amazing. Naruto couldn't help but glance down at Karen in his arms. You okay? he asked, concern lacing his voice. Karen blushed, her heart still pounding. Why yeah, thank you. No problem. Naruto grinned, not realizing the effect his smile had on Karen. By the way, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, and Kaushin told me you're an Uzumaki like me. That's so cool. We're like. Family or something. Karen's blush deepened. Yeah, I'm Karen Uzumaki. 
Nice to meet you, Naruto. I think you can drop her now, Naruto-kun. Hinata at this time appeared next to Naruto with a bright smile but underneath was jealousy and threat of painful times. Why yes, Hinata-chan. Naruto shivered, as he put Karen down, and they started to listen to her story. Karen was left to die by her team, and feeling Naruto's chakra, she started to spill everything. How her mother was killed by Kusa village, how she was always abused and they used her ability to heal. Her body was filled with bite marks, and she didn't want to go back. You should come with us, Karen-chan, I will speak with Grandma Tsunade and we will take you in. Don't worry. Naruto said indignantly. He was royally pissed at those assholes. Really, Naruto? You do that for me? Karen asked, her eyes shimmering with hope and gratitude. Of course. No one should be treated like that, especially family. Naruto declared, puffing his chest out proudly. And since we're both Uzumakis, that means we're family. Hinata, though feeling a bit jealous, couldn't help but smile at Naruto's kindness. That's right, Karen-chan. We'll all help you. Karen's eyes welled up with tears, and she hugged Naruto tightly. Thank you, Naruto. Thank you so much. Naruto blushed, caught off guard by the sudden hug, but patted her back gently. No problem, Karen-chan. Just doing what's right. As the group continued on their way, Karen couldn't help but steal glances at Naruto. She felt something warm and comforting emanating from him, and it made her heart flutter. She knew she had to protect that feeling, that warmth, no matter what. As I stated before, starting this month, I will be adjusting the checkpoint system to a weekly schedule. This means that there will be a certain number of extra chapters every week, depending on the total amount of Patreon earnings. For now, my total earning is $58, and I will be publishing one extra chapter every week. Thank you all for the support. For $50, one extra chapter every week, eight weekly chapters instead of seven, with an extra four chapters per month. For $150, two extra chapters every week, nine weekly chapters instead of seven, with an extra eight chapters per month. For $300, three extra chapters every week, 10 weekly chapters instead of 7, with an extra 12 chapters per month. For $500, 4 extra chapters every week, 11 weekly chapters instead of 7, with an extra 16 chapters per month. You can still subscribe to different tiers on my Patreon page to read up to 20 advanced chapters ahead. The extra chapters will not affect the 20 chapter gap between this site and my Patreon page. Why is Orochimaru here? Why? I can't see why he would follow them. For Naruto. Orochimaru is not a fool. He knows Akatsuki would go medieval on his ass if he tries to play with their prey. So why? Now I had no other choice but to intercept him, so I moved to his path and waited for him to arrive. In no time at all, he was in front of me, but he didn't even stop a second. He was about to kill me with one move to continue his chase. Unfortunately for him, I had to stop him. Unfortunately for me, I am not strong enough. I looked at the approaching claw and used the latest technique I mastered from the start. I had no other technique that could hurt Orochimaru. Fire chakra left my hand and formed a spinning orb. The orb then shifted into an object thick at the base and thinner at the tip. From afar, it looked like a drill. A spinning, fire blazing drill. Katan, Rasen drill. When claw finally arrived, it clashed with the fire drill in my hand. An explosion reeled back my feeble body. To my surprise, Orochimaru too was sent back flying. He walked out of the trees and looked at me in disbelief. I wanted to kill you right off the bat, but what a surprise. He licked his lower lip. Interesting technique you have there. Thanks, I worked hard for it. Lies. I purchased Elemental Body Perk and spent another 50 perk points to max Chakra Control Perk. Now with the perfect Chakra Control, I could easily change the shape of my attacks. And with Elemental Body, I could infuse any element without effort. So it wasn't hard to create S-rank Jutsu like Raisin Shuriken. Although I was lacking Chakra, I could still technically form them. Ross and Drill, on the other hand, wasn't as destructive as Raisin Shuriken. It wasn't weak by any means, but it wasn't as strong. It is not an easy technique, I can see that. 
Orochimaru nodded. You must be Kaushin. You know a lot, I asked, trying to stall more. I do. He nodded with a smirk. He was wearing his flesh disguise, so it looked disgusting. Not that his real self wasn't, but it looks even more disgusting like this. Oh, by the way, I love Orochimaru. In the whole anime, only he has a real purpose and will to follow it. He wants immortality and chases after it. Killing innocent, experimenting on babies, fuck them. He does what he has to. He is the true villain. No sad past, no bullshit stories. He wants to live forever, master all jutsu in existence, and create even more. I respect that. But, I can't let him go after my pumpkin and friends, so I am standing against him. How about a little spar, and maybe I can give you a little something. He offered. Sure, but can you tell me why you are after my team? I asked, not sure if he would answer. Why not? He stretched his chin as he took the posture of a dashing snake. I am after the blonde in your team. He said. Why? I couldn't help but blurt. Hee hee, that is something above you, so stay out of it. He smirked as he vanished. With it, I felt death on my neck. He was damned too fast for me to even react. But by instinct, I crouched and a claw swipe missed my head. I high kicked his guts, but he was slippery. His torso moved like a wiggling snake and dodged my unimpressive kick. Unfortunately for him, it wasn't as useless. A raisin gan formed under my foot and exploded outward. What? He exclaimed as he switched with a log. Who says we can't use it with our feet? I smirked. You are truly remarkable. He grinned as he dashed once again. This time I was prepared so I used a lightning flicker and moved back. From where I was standing, a clone appeared, covered with explosive tags. Multiplying explosive tags, the clone used the technique and tens of explosive tags multiply to hundreds. Clone Great Explosion Jutsu, he then sacrificed himself. And in less than a second, a great explosion covered the opening. Orochimaru was dashing at me, so he was just above where I was, too close to my clone. He he he. Wahahaha. Ha. He laughed madly. His figure appeared as smoke dissipated. His figure was now scarred and his face was half melted. Under melted skin, was another pale one, with weird makeup. You are too good. Does it mean you won't kill me? I asked. I will not of course. He smirked as he opened his mouth wide. From within, a new Orochimaru appeared, this time without disguise. Orochimaru! I exclaimed in surprise. I could feign ignorance but I am known with my knowledge, so it would be worse than not recognizing. After all, the man in front of me is super famous. You know me? He asked with a smile. One of the three Sanin. Traitor of Kanoha. I nodded as I explained. You know your stuff. But I have to move now, I am on the clock. He said as his neck stretched towards my neck. It was too fast for me to dodge, but I wasn't meaning to. Why would I refuse free power? Take my mark, and feel my power. When you are ready, come and find me. I will bestow even more power to you. He smiled as he moved away. But I was in too much pain to care about him. We battled and talked for more than half an hour. It should be enough for Naruto and others to arrive at the tower. Although they can't enter without me, it should be enough protection. And from Orochimaru's lackadaisical attitude I can say he is after Naruto against his will. He shouldn't try his hardest. In the next second, the notification I was expecting appeared in front of me. You have been cursed with cursed seal of heaven, s rank cursed seal. Cannot be disenchanted. You have been cursed with Soul Carrier Seal of Earth, A rank cursed seal. Cannot be disenchanted. Hee <laughs> hee, I was expecting this. Disenchant Superscript 2 slash 4, there goes all my savings. I sighed as I spent 60 perk points to activate the second tier of the perk. You have been cursed with Cursed Seal of Heaven, S rank cursed seal. Cannot be disenchanted. You have been cursed with Soul Carrier Seal of Earth, A rank cursed seal can be disenchanted. And I just did that. While the curse was complicated when viewed as a single seal, it wasn't all that much when it split. 
I could separate them and disenchant them one by one, so without breaking the main body, I could disenchant the curse holding Orochimaru's soul. Seal disenchanted. Soul carrier seal of earth curse learned. Disenchantment broke the curse as well, so Orochimaru's soul just vanished. Now, I don't know if Orochimaru can feel it, but I guess he can't feel that part of his soul has just died. But I was too lazy to care at this point because a screen appeared in front of me. New skill tree acquired. Curse mark. Yes. Yes. I opened it immediately and looked at the perks. Second form, damn, even the second form perk costs 30 perk points. Too expensive. Free transformation, fucking 200 perk points. Are you fucking kidding me? Though, I would gain Yugo's ability. Senjutsu, total of 500 perk points. You know what, it makes sense. To change the curse mark to Senjutsu would be pretty awesome. Okay, now let's see what this baby can do. Oh, why haven't I dropped unconscious as Sasuke did? Must be because of game stuff. I willed it, and tattoos started to cover my body. Unlike Sasuke's, my curse mark appeared in the shape of a dragon on my back. And when it was spread, it looked like scales. Good to know. I covered my whole body with black looking scales and felt the power within me raising. No hatred, no bloodlust. It means I was right. The negative effect of curse mark comes from Orochimaru's soul, not the mark itself. I mean, I know Yugo was getting volatile when he used this mode, but it was probably because of something else. After all, Kimimaro, the only person with the cursed seal of earth, also wasn't as bloodthirsty. He was all in all a good guy. That is another power up. I laughed like mad as I made my way towards the tower. Naruto and others should be okay. I hope so. As I was moving towards the tower, I heard clashes not far from where I was. It was probably Anko and Orochimaru but I wasn't going to sweat over it. Now I had to reach where Naruto and Hinata were waiting for me. Ino probably didn't leave either. I sighed but then noticed something on my map. Three red dots appeared and they were moving fast. I turned to look at them with a grin. Here to test me. I smirked. You said we would meet in the exams right? Dosu, the leader of the sound three answered. I looked at them all, as I pulled out a kunai. Let's do it then. I activated curse seal as I dashed out. I know, it had to be secret, but the dead man tells no tale. Dosu stepped up as others were shocked. Dosu was only a little better. They knew what that seal meant, and were analyzing their situation. Orochimaru sent them to die. Dosu attacked with a punch, which was the same in the anime. If I didn't consider the sound wave, it would hurt my insides, but since I knew it, I just dodged the fist and flickered with katan. With an explosion, I appeared behind the girl who was preparing to send out bells around. Before she could, I punched her head from behind with katan raisingan. She sent forward flying with lots of blood and the red dot disappeared. You bastard. Zaku shouted as he aimed at me with his palms. Shadow clone jutsu, I shouted. Four copies of me appeared in front of me in a single line, holding each other against the incoming airwave. The first, second, third, and finally fourth clone dissipated but the air current was also spent. I walked in front of the poor bastard and plastered him with an explosive seal. Get it off. He shouted in panic but I completed the jutsu while scales on my body were dancing excitedly. Multiplying explosive tags, five others covered his body. Dosu too dashed at me from behind, so I moved behind Zaku and kicked him towards incoming Dosu. In a matter of a second, an explosion covered both of them. The red dot of Zaku vanished while Dosu's was still there but in a distance. Heh, you kawaramid huh, not bad. I smirked as I dashed to his destination. He was ready to defend, but what he didn't expect was. Raitun, lightning beast tracking Fong, from the ground, a serpent flashed out in lightning and surrounded his body. It was still attached to my hand, so I coiled it around Dosu while dashing at his location. He was convulsing rapidly, and couldn't fight back at all. Please let me go. Dosu cried in pain. We were just sent to our death. Then you should be a good underling and die, I smirked. In the next second my favorite jutsu appeared in my hand. Raitun, Rasendril. 
the Catan version of this technique was strong. Way too powerful but also unstable. But the Raitan. Man, the most penetrative jutsu in Kanoha was now mine. The drill entered Dosu's chest and came out from his back in less than a second. His chest had a hole and his heart had been destroyed. You shouldn't follow evil people if you are weak. Otherwise, you die in vain. I sent him to the afterlife. I hate when bad people beg for mercy under the pretense of abiding by their evil boss. If you know they are bad people, either stay the fuck out or die. Bad people can't have a tragic past. It is fucking unacceptable. Alright, time to go back. Orochimaru is done with Enko too, so I cannot take my time. I dashed at Naruto and others with my maximum speed and in less than 15 minutes, I was beneath the tower. And as I expected, Ino and her team were there with Naruto and Hinata. Ko. You are okay. She ran to hug me. I hugged her back as I patted her. As I looked at the new addition with them. Pumpkin, I am fine. I soothed her. What took you so long? She asked as others arrived too. We are still not safe. Let's move. I said and held her hand. Naruto copied me and held Hinata's hand, much to the latter's embarrassment. Choji looked at Shikamaru. Don't fucking think about it. The lazy genius snorted as they two moved towards the tower. Inside, there were weird shitty riddles but all were unnecessary. What now? Asked the fatty. We will open two scrolls at the same time, I said and grabbed two of ours. Ino, with full trust, removed hers as well. I threw them both at the same time and Irika appeared, much to my surprise. From our side, Ino passed each scroll to her boys, and let them open at the same time. From within, Kotetsu appeared to take them away. Since we were early, we had a day and a half off until the exam was over. We were taken into a big hall with many rooms, and our rooms were given. In the hall, I saw many familiar faces. Such as Gara and his team. Sakura, standing near Lee, Niji, and Tenten -ten with her team. It was probably Lee who helped them pass the exam. Not that Kiba and Shino need help, but Sakura pulling them down, passing wouldn't be easy for them. Sai, Shin, and Yu Yu were also there. The other team wasn't here yet. Kabuto and his team also are not here, probably looking for me. Sound 3 died. Karen is saved and nothing else I should care about. I will go to Grandma Tsunade with Karen. Naruto said, as he walked away. Hinata plastered to his side. After exchanging pleasantries, I went to my room with Ino in tow and jumped on my bed lazily. Come on Pumpkin-chan. Let's get some rest. I called her while lifting the blanket. She looked like breathing fire for a second as she dashed out of the room with a yelp. Too bad, I was going to show her my dragon. Listen carefully, everyone. Anko the lame shouted. Hokage-sama will explain some stuff. If you will, fifth-sama. Hmm. Tsunade nodded as she looked at the genin who passed the second stage. Brats, before explaining the third stage, there is something we should clear out. The true purpose of this exam is. Allied forces conduct joint chunin exams because, raising the level of the shinobi in friendship among allied nations, yes. But the true reason is to see the power of all nations, microscale but yeah. But it doesn't mean these are trustable, as it can be seen, not all villages sent their best teams. Tsunade explained with a sigh. Unlike the anime, Tsunade was a lot blunter. She talked about intimidating the other nations with power and stuff. But she still mentioned how important it was to fight in finals, as daimyo from neighboring nations would watch the exams. About missions and more useless stuff. Since the number of teams passing the second exam is over the limit, we will call the weak. She then blurted out. What? Kiba exclaimed. We battled so hard with tears and blood and we may not even participate in finals. Yeah. Tsunade nodded with a shrug. If you want to battle in finals, battle hard and win. Stage is all yours, Hei 8. Yes, 5th Sama. Hei 8 kneeled as he acknowledged. Nice to meet you everyone, those who are not in top shape and want to withdraw, now can do so. With it, Kabuto forfeited and stepped back while looking at me murderously. I stood straight and calm, 
without even glancing at him nor Orochimaru hiding under disguise near Tsunade. Only seven teams passed the exam, my team, Sai's team 3, Shino's team 8, Pumpkinchan's team 10, Lee's team 13, Kabuto's team, and Gara's team. With Kabuto forfeited, we had 20 people who could fight in the preliminaries. Soon, the first fight was decided, and to no one's surprise, it was Yoroi versus yours truly. Orochimaru wanted to test me of course. There are no rules in battles. You can use any weapon. You will fight until one side dies, collapses, or admits defeat. I, as the prosecutor, can stop the battles any time if I deem so. Please admit defeat if you don't want to die. Right, step up, Kaushin san Yoroi-san. Hello, Hayate-san. I greeted with a smile. He returned it. I looked at my stoic opponent standing indoors with sunglasses. This guy deserves to die. He had a smirk under the veil of his, I am certain. Start. Hayate ordered as Yoroi dashed towards me. As expected, his orders were to draw out my chakra so I would use the cursed seal. Too bad for him, I am not Sasuke. As soon as he appeared near me, he raised his two hands to grab me. I crouched down in a swift movement and kicked him in the chin. His body started to float in the air, and I jumped behind him. I held onto his back as I swung my one leg. He blocked it, but it was fake anyway. I rotated my body mid-air and punched him in the face. While he was falling, I somersaulted and with the back of my foot, I kicked him in the gut just as he was about to hit the ground. Ryu Rendan. I shouted dramatically as my opponent cried in pain. Heh, it feels good. What did Sasuke say when he used this combo? Oh right, he said it was time for his original moves. Right. Yes. Original. I used my originals too. Not that I saw Lee or anyone else using Shadow Dance, but with my Taijutsu so high, I don't need to. I can easily copy such a move. You did it, Ko. Naruto shouted. Hinata too looked excited while Ino looked on heat. But one person was truly wet, Orochimaru. Winner of the first match, Kaushin. Hayate announced. Thank you, Hayate-san. I bowed as I walked towards the waiting area. The second match, Sai vs Shino. It was an exciting match. Way too even. Sai was good with his drawings but Shino wasn't to scoff at. He was actually a lot stronger than I thought, in the end, he lost. The third match, knock off Luffy vs Kenkuro. Same in anime, Kenkuro won. The fourth match, Sakura vs Ino. Of course, my pumpkin won. It was a lot different from anime. Although Sakura 2 was better, she was still nowhere close to my pumpkin. Gotta admit though, with her chakra control being so good and Kurinai as her teacher, her genjutsu talent was off the roof. But Ino not only had me as her boyfriend, but she also had me as her teacher. I knew what she could become and what not. She won easily. The fifth match, Ten Ten vs Temari. Same shit. Guy was an idiot. He swore to teach taijutsu only, so Lee wouldn't feel bad, but it didn't suit Ten Ten. He never even bothered to teach her anything. If Ten Ten knew one katan jutsu, she could turn the tables, but no. You know what, I don't even care. They can all go and die. The sixth match, Shikamaru vs Yuyu. Gotta admit the orphan Kunoichi was good. Too good. I don't know if she was part of Root as well, but she had a damn talent in katan. By creating or removing shadows, she played Shikamaru like a monkey in the bar. But in the end, Wits won against Chakra. Despite her talent, her Chakra reserves were pitiful and she lost. The seventh match, Naruto vs Kiba. Couldn't be easier. Kiba was a bloated egomaniac. His Alpha Syndrome is pitiful. He always thinks he is the hot shit in the room but he is just a useless dog piss. I love Akameru but hate this kid. Naruto of course mopped the floor with him. He could easily take out Akameru in the beginning, and then beat the shit out of the dog boy. The eighth match, Hinata vs Niji. It was. Different. Niji was respecting the princess of Hyuga but couldn't just forfeit. Hinata on the other hand didn't want to hurt his cousin. In the end, it was Niji who won. The ninth match, the match I was expecting. 
Now, I don't mean I was looking forward to seeing Lee battle spectacularly, no no. I was waiting for Lee to have what he deserved. Holding back. Proving his ninja way. Opening gates to battle with a genius. Fuck off. Hypocrite son of a bitch. All he did was underestimating his opponents by wearing weights and talking about honesty. Bullshit. He deserved what had happened to him. And guy. Stupid son of a bitch, not stopping the match because Lee was proving something. Only if Lee died would it be awesome. The tenth match, Shin vs. Choji. Shin won. Easily. Unfortunately for the fat ass, he wasn't on my team of students, yet. I was too lazy to deal with a shy boy who was too afraid to hurt his opponents. No, it is not fucking same with Hinata. Hinata was constantly oppressed by her father because of her nature, while Chuji was always supported. His weak nature is who he is. Hinata was forced into it. And when people she cared about were truly under threat, she was the only person to jump in front of God to battle. While bitches like Sakura only cried for help. Sigh, impudent people wishing more than they deserve. I hate these kinds of people. Sasuke for example, acting though, disregarding everyone. Now, lying six feet underground. Fucking disrespectful prick. To everyone who has advanced to the final round, congratulations. Hey, it took me out of my stupor. Tsunade then explained the final rounds. In the finals, you will be able to show your worth in front of daimyo and citizens. You will represent your villages, so do your best. Final round will commence a month later. Why a month? Naruto asked. Daimyo and guests from other nations will travel long distances. There are also preparations to be made. Tsunade smirked, your advancement to Chunin rank depends on your performance, so up your skills and show your worth. You will not have a second shot. Then we drew lots. The matchups were, not bad, I guess. Naruto vs. Sai Kankuro vs. Ino Shin vs. Niji Yours Truly vs. Garatamari vs. Shikamaru, in the final round, everybody has the chance to become a Chunin and there is also the possibility of all you failing. It all boils down to your performance. Impress the leaders and your future customers and you can have the title. Alright, we will meet again in a month. Disperse. Yes, ma'am. Hey there folks, I have some news to share with you all. One of our beloved patrons has dropped their support. Now, don't get me wrong, I am still super grateful for past contributions, but the unfortunate side effect is that our total amount has fallen back and the first checkpoint is missing $5. Support my Patreon to read ahead up to 20 chapters and for more extra chapters. Thanks for being awesome and keeping the dream alive. Peace. Kakashi Sensei, please train me for the exams. Naruto ran after Kakashi with excitement. I already have a teacher in mind for you, Naruto, but sadly I am not a great teacher for you. Kakashi sighed. It was true, Kakashi's weakest element was wind, and I don't remember seeing him using one ever before. Kaushin, do you want to train with me? He asked much to my dismay. I had other plans. Sensei, I. I looked at him. He looked dejected. I want to find my summon. It is too dangerous. He looked serious all of a sudden. I know, but I don't want to sign without trying, I answered. I was also thinking of Naruto to do the same. It is impossible. Tsunade-sama would never allow it. He answered. I know. That is why I will not tell her. I smirked. Why did you tell me then? He asked with a squint. I don't want to lie to you, sensei. I want you to know where we are. I honestly answered. Kakashi was many things, a bad teacher, lazy ass, depressed beyond belief, but he was a good person. He tried to do his best, but he failed one after another. But he was trying to do his best for his students. Thank you, Kaushin. I will let Hokage-sama know after you are gone. But I will put the blame on you. He smiled. That is for sure. I grinned too. Let's go, Naruto. I pulled him away. That leaves two of us. Kakashi looked at Hinata with an eye smile. Got the hand seals? I asked. Naruto nodded. Now, draw some blood. 
we will barge into Tsunade's office and use the jutsu. I reminded him once again. All right, let's do it. Naruto nodded. We started to walk calmly. Naruto Kuen, Kaushin Kuen, would you like to see Hokage sama? Secretary outside asked. Yes, Hanane, Naruto answered. All right, she just arrived so she shouldn't be too busy. She nodded and let us pass. As we walked towards the gate, Naruto bit down his thumb while I cut my palm with a kunai. We barged into the room much to Tsunade's shock and folded the hand seals. Summon Jutsu, both Naruto and I shouted, as Tsunade looked at us with terror and tried to stop us, but it was too late. Shit! She exclaimed in anger. Shizun! Where am I? Naruto looked around. Everywhere he could see was a mountain range covered with forest. Thick plants were drowning the earth. He was at the top of a mountain. Strong wind currents were flying all around him. Not far from him, a statue was standing. It was at least thirty meters tall. It had two wings and a mask over its face. The nose was long. On top of the statue, stood a creature much like the statue itself. Wings and nose. A human. It spoke, as it looked down on Naruto. Ah! A Tengu. Naruto cried in shock as he looked at the red-skinned Tengu with wings. Fucking thank you, mate. Tengu jumped down as he looked at Naruto as if it was, wronged. Did I say, ah? A human? I merely stated. Ah, sorry. Naruto realized he was disrespectful and Kaushin taught him about the importance of respect. I was expecting an animal land since I used summoning jutsu. I didn't mean to offend you. Please excuse me. It is fine mate. We are used to it. Tengu said as he checked Naruto up and down. I am surprised though. Not many try to summon without signing a contract. It's pretty rare and stupid. My brother said I could only find my fated companion through this. I don't want to follow others' paths. Naruto grinned as he added, sorry, forgot to mention. My name is Uzumaki Naruto. Oh, an Uzumaki. No wonder. Tengu muttered. You don't have red hair though. What now? Naruto asked in surprise. Uzumaki the first was also our contractor. It must be destiny. Tengu smiled under his mask. I'm Jutengu. Since you are summoned near me, I will be your main summon. If you pass the test that is. Wait, wait. You say my ancestors were also your contractors? Naruto asked in excitement. This was the first time he heard about his ancestors. Kaushin told him about his clan, but he didn't know much either. Yeah, Jutengu answered. The great elder should know more. Well, we have to go there for the test anyway. So why don't you follow me? All right. I will best the test, believe it. Why am I not surprised? I sighed as I looked around. It was blazing hell with many other galaxies nearby. It wasn't a big giveaway, but the energy in this realm felt so familiar. I jumped onto my feet and started to walk away. Not more than five minutes later, I saw a shadowy figure, standing nearby. Looking at me with great interest. Yes. I exclaimed as I moved towards it. It had red eyes and an abyss body. Shadow mirror. Oh right, I am in oblivion. How? Don't fucking know. Shadowmere approached me as she brought her nose to my hand. I started to caress her mane while she licked my palm. Good girl. I praised as I hopped onto her back. My small stature was a great contrast, but it was still not bad. How about you take me to the boss around here? She neighed and dashed away. Her speed was great. Almost speed of sound great. It was unexpected and also reasonable. Shinobi was much faster than horses. It would be useless if she were to be slow. In no time at all, we were in front of a palace. After I realized this was oblivion, and the environment was blazing in fire, I deduced that I was in Maroon's realm. But after I entered the palace, it was a servant who greeted me. She looked like a human and Deidre mix with brownish golden skin and same colored eyes and hair. Hello, chosen of Akatosh. She bowed. Hello, um. I am but a servant of this realm. Hello then, 
servant of this realm. Can you take me to your god so I can sign the contract? I asked. Things are complicated. She started, this realm, the whole oblivion is nothing but a copy. We were waiting for thirteen years and didn't know who would come until you arrived. At first, we thought it was Shiagarath who was pranking us, but it turned out it was not. Later, we all gathered to summon the divines to guide us, and when we tried, a message appeared in our brains. It said a chosen one would arrive soon to sign a contract with us. And we were to abide by him. So to say, after I sign the contract, you all will be my summons. I asked in disbelief. That was how it should have happened. But there are contrarians refusing to bow to your sovereignty. You have to tame other realms, but the Deadlands is under your command. She bowed once again. Deadlands, Maroon's Dagon's realm. Not bad. Which Deidre lives here? I asked. There were a few I could name but not all. Scamps, Flame Atronax, Frost Atronax, Storm Atronax, Spider Deidre. She answered. Not bad. Where can I sign the contract? I stood straight as I followed her. She took me to the palace, and into the Dagon's room. There, a table with a bowl was standing ritually. This is the summoning bowl. A drop of a willing servant has to be mixed with yours for you to be able to summon creatures under that realm. I am the boss of this realm, and I already added my blood, please drop yours to summon any servant in this realm. She explained. Later, when you conquer the others, you have to bring their blood here too. All right, it is acceptable. I walked towards the table and dropped my blood. When my blood touched the dark red liquid in the bowl, it shone for a few seconds and dimmed once again. Congratulations, Master. She kneeled this time as she smiled. Servant of this realm, you can rise. I regally waved my hand. Thank you, Master. She bowed her head. All right, I don't know how time moves, so I will go back for now. I will visit later. I let her know, as I used summon jutsu once again, and with a cloud. Of smoke, I was back to Tsunade's room. But it was a lot different than when I left. Kaushin. You are back. Tsunade and all the council looked at me in dread. They looked around me to see if Naruto was back too but sadly he was not. Shit, this will come back to bite me in the ass. Why did you do that? She then asked. I wanted to have a summon of my own instead of settling with any from the village. I already told you this, Hokage-sama. I answered honestly. Yeah, and I thought you would do it when you were at least Chunin level. Tsunade looked pissed. With all due respect, Fifth Sama, we all know I am at Chunin level. I humbly stated. Everyone in the room had disturbed looks but they couldn't refute. Fine. Tsunade slapped the table. What about Naruto? Well, he learned what I wanted to do, and wanted to try it himself as well. I shrugged. How can you? She shouted in rage. You know who he is. I know for sure he is Uzumaki Naruto, my brother. I looked at her coldly. I think that was what you told the village and you first took the hat. But in your time under that hat, I see that you start to morph into your old sensei and his best friend. How dare you! Inazuka Tsum shouted in anger. Remember who you are talking to. I am talking to a person with a muddled head, I stated a matter of factly. She looked furious but the lost look on Tsunade's face showed me that my words were effective. Uzumaki Naruto is not a weapon or tool that you can use on a whim. He is not your prisoner, nor is he the demon that destroyed this village. Uzumaki Naruto is the hero of this village, the container, and the only thing standing between you all and the demon fox. Despite being just a newborn, he was sealed with the demon and kept it away from all of you. He will continue to do so in the future. If any of you mistake the bright young hero for the demon he is keeping, I shall punish you with my own two hands. If any of you dare to scoff at him because of his identity as Jinshuriki, I swear on the name of the god of Shinobi that I will cripple all of your members. And I mean all. These were the exact words Tsunade said after she took the hat. She forced the village to apologize and kneel in front of Naruto's house to repent. She made sure that no one would treat Naruto as nothing but himself. When I finished speaking, Tsunade's pupils dilated to the limit and looked towards me. You are right. 
She then muttered. Hokage-sama, don't be naive. Inazuka Alpha shouted. Shut up. Tsunade fumed. Naruto is a person of his own. He is free to do anything he deems is right. If he decides to reverse summon to find his destined pack, it is his right to do so. As you say, Hokage-sama. Dog woman answered, wronged, as she gazed at the ground. You return quite quickly, Kaushin. Tsunade then turned her attention to me. How was your journey? There is some internal strife going on in the realm I was summoned to. But the pack I first met was eager to sign the contract with me. In return, I will help them to end the internal war. I honestly answered. It is acceptable. How is their power? She asked. Oh, they are perfect for my taste. I grinned as I looked at her. She copied mine, and her lips curled upwards. Meeting ended. Kakashi, stay back, rest dismissed. She sent the rest of the council away as he looked at me. Can you summon it here? She asked. Genin chakra was limited, so in her opinion, anything I could summon was at best still could fit in the room. It is better to do that outside. My summons are, kinda unique. I chuckled. She nodded as we moved towards training ground 7. Well, show us. Kakashi looked excited. Sure, here goes nothing. Summon Jutsu. I placed my palm to the ground and in the next second, floating rocks started to form a humanoid figure without limbs. The rocks were still revolving around its main body while lightning was cracking on the body. Storm clouds like smoke were covering its body. The Atronach took half of my chakra, but it was acceptable. After all, this baby could fire lightning and fight melee. What is this, a golem? Tsunade asked with great interest. It is an Atronach. Atronach? Kakashi rolled the word in his mouth. Weird name. It is, I smirked. Want to test it, sensei? Sure, let's test how strong this summons of yours is. He too grinned. Stormy, attack my sensei. Show him what you can do. Roar. It shouted in reply. In the next second, a bolt of lightning left its hands. And attacked Kakashi. Kakashi's pupil dilated as he dodged. He hastily opened his Sharingan as he kept his distance. I walked Tsunade's side and watched how Kakashi would battle against an Atronach. Are they alive? Tsunade asked in academic interest. Sort of, I muttered. They are sentient, but not organic. Strange. Yup. Kakashi used various evading jutsu to dodge Stormy's attacks. But whenever he used Kawarimi, Stormy would lock onto him in the next second. Kakashi was baffled. He couldn't get rid of this guy. Even when he moved underground, Stormy would blast the ground with lightning or its fists. But Kakashi never attacked back. He was always in defense to see the attack power of the summon. And after ten minutes, the summon turned into smoke and vanished. Kakashi walked out of the trees in shock as he looked towards me. Kaushin, this summon of yours is, powerful. Thank you, Sensei. I laughed. I was lucky. I doubted his luck, Tsunade said as she looked towards the Hokage Tower. I wonder what Naruto will find. Naruto Dano, we are pleased to inform you that. Jitengu looked at the excited blonde. Yes. Naruto asked in boiling tension. That you have. Jitengu once again stopped dramatically. Tell me already you long-nosed bastard. Naruto exclaimed in anger. Wow, so uncalled for. Jitengu looked away with a not-cute pout. Stop that. You are not a little girl, it doesn't look cute. Naruto started. Whatever. Jitengu now looked offended. You passed the test, happy. Hell yeah, I am. Naruto jumped in the air. I told you I can do it, believe it. Yeah, yeah. Now come, the great elder will let you sign the contract. It has been almost a month since Naruto arrived in this strange land. On his first day, Jutengu took him to the great elder, which in a literal sense was great, to take the test. The great elder, also known as Chief Tengu, had a red monkey-like face with a long nose. Its two wings were black in color and it was at least 30 meters tall, 
at least taller than the statue outside. Its name was Kanoha Tengu, quite to Blonde's surprise, and it was much more mischievous than the Blonde himself. When he first stood in front of the giant red-skinned monster, he was shivering with fear and excitement, but in the next second, a bucket full of water fell on top of him because of the trigger he set off by stepping on the plate. Sadly, the bucket was in Tengu size, and full of it was enough to crush Naruto and almost drown him. Luckily, he had a tough body and he survived. A few days passed with healing. Tengu had unique and powerful healing arts supported with herbs. With the help of Kyuubi's chakra, Naruto was on his feet in a few days. After that, the test began. The chief wanted him to prank at least half of the Tengu population to be accepted as their contractor. Naruto had a smile showing he was up to no good. The test had to be time-consuming, but with the help of Shadow Clone, Naruto pranked the village brilliantly. After all, Tengu had a closed community and didn't know much about the outside world. Especially after their first contractor died, their way of the outside world closed until then. After only a few days, Naruto passed the test and started to train under Tengu. All Tengu knew how to use a sword, and it was a must for their contractor. Naruto first taught how to wield the ancient weapon, and then learned the katas. Shadow Clone was helpless against physical training, as it had no help when it came to muscle memory, but they were still great partners in sparring. Naruto spent the rest of the month learning their sword art and was quite proficient in the first level. The second level was using moves with the wind element to increase the sharpness of the attacks. Naruto was delighted to learn this as his main element was the wind. Sadly, he had to go back to the village for the exams, so he couldn't stay to learn more. But he learned the ins and outs of the second and third level, he could practice on his own. When Jutengu and Naruto entered the chief's hall, Naruto looked around with his eyes wide open. He dodged the plates he deemed suspicious and tried to step on Jutengu's footsteps. After a tiring small walk, they both stood in front of Konohatengu. Good job, little prankster. You dodged almost fifty traps. Old Tengu smiled. I counted fifty-one, Naruto smirked. Ah, right. But you didn't dodge the last one. Smirked the chief. In the next second, a plate full of the cake was plastered on the blonde's face. Fuck you. Naruto shouted in anger. How? Ho ho ho. There is much to learn when it comes to pranking. It was wise to follow little Jutengu's footsteps, but I can tweak the seals so they would only react to your chakra. Red-skinned Tengu looked quite amused, a great contrast to bemused blonde. Seals can do that? Naruto asked in disbelief. Oh they can do more than that, but it is not the time. You are late, so let's sign the contract and send you back. With it, Naruto signed his name with his blood. The scroll had only two names now. One was ancient. It read Uzumaki Hina. The first Uzumaki was a woman. Naruto asked in disbelief. All life born from mothers. The chief answered seriously, unlike his usual self. Sorry, I didn't mean it that way. It is just. If she was summoned here, she must be a lot like me and you, so she must be a prankster as well, right? Naruto asked. She was quite a handful. Old Tengu gazed afar in reminiscence. Hee hee, I must be carrying her blood then. Naruto proudly answered. You sure do, little rotten. Old Tengu smirked as well. That reminded me. Bring the sword. From inside, an old Tengu with an avian face carried a blood-red sword ceremoniously on its two palms. It knelt in front of the chief and passed it to Naruto. This was her sword. She left it for the next summoner. Coincidentally, you are her kin. Sorrow Cutter is a unique sword with seals no one in the world nowadays can figure out and have the wisdom of its own. You should explore it and use it well. Thank you, chief. I promise I will honor it. Naruto took it and tied it to his back. He was quite short to carry it on his waist. After saying his goodbyes, he vanished with smoke. Kaushin Kuen, is there anything? Tsunade asked as I entered the room. It has been a month since we reverse summoned to find our packs. I returned the same day, but Naruto was still missing. I believe Naruto will arrive soon, I answered her question as I looked here the blonde was a month ago. Exam is tomorrow, no way in hell he would miss it. 
I hope so. She muttered silently but I heard her. I was, kinda feeling guilty. I forced Naruto to follow his own path, and it might have backfired. He might have died. He may never learn Senjutsu. Lots of other things. I am not saying I am regretting my decision, it is just I am uncertain. Luckily, the next minute among a cloud of smoke, the blonde I know appeared, although his clothes were a lot different. With my intervention, Naruto got rid of all the orange stuff he used to call clothes and started to wear dark blue and black, stylish clothes instead. But now, he was wearing a dark red kimono with black sandals. He also had a blood red sword on his back. All in all, he looked, fuck, he looked cool. Welcome back. I hugged him as I looked at the sword in the meantime. Sorrow cutter sword forged by Chief Tengu and carved seals by the Uzumaki ancestor. Sword has the judgment of its own and can be duller than a dildo and sharper than anything. Weight, changeable, value, dash, what a weird sword. It has no value or it is priceless and weight can change. Probably something like Mjolnir. Only the worthy can carry it. Strange. So, Tengu Ha. Huh? I asked with a smirk. How did you know? Naruto asked in surprise. Hunch. I smiled mysteriously. Actually, I wasn't sure. I only knew the sword was forged by Chief Tengu. It didn't mean it was still in the hands of Tengu. Yeah. Naruto smirked as he showed his clothes and sword. It was amazing. Thank you Ko. Why do you thank me? It was your fate. I smiled back. If it wasn't for you, I would sign a contract with any other animal in the village and be done with it. I wouldn't learn all that cool stuff and more. He really looked grateful. Ahem. Tsunade cleared her throat. Welcome back, Naruto. Thank you Grandma Tsunade. I take it your journey was without any trouble. I am glad you are back safe. She stated. It was awesome. Tengu are great. I used to be afraid of them but it was all a misunderstanding. They are pretty nice. Naruto nodded. It is good you have a path of your own. Tsunade too smirked. How was your training? You didn't waste a month to chat and prank with Tengu now, have you? Naruto sweated as he heard his question. Have you? She asked this time quite ticked. Ahaha, here and there. Naruto laughed as he started to explain. Turns out, after the test, Naruto spent the majority of his time paying back to Chief Big Time. He slowly but confidently created the greatest prank ever. According to Naruto, there was one thing Chief loved doing most. Drinking tea in silence while watching the sunset. And the little blonde set a trap that would go off exactly this sunset to ruin it for the Chief. I can't believe you spent most of your time devising that, Tsunade whined with a facepalm. It is not all bad. I learned a pretty sick sword art and a couple of wind jutsu even the sand wouldn't know. He added. Oh. Tsunade looked interested. Let's go to the training ground. Alright, I will show you my progress, Naruto shouted in fire. Soon in training ground 7, Tsunade, Kakashi and I stood against hugging Hinata and Naruto. Can you stop hugging, please? It is disgusting. I muttered. Don't be jealous, Kokuin. Go and hug your girlfriend. Naruto commented while showing his tongue. Enough. Tsunade commented. Now show us what you learned. Alright, who should I fight with? He asked. Can I have the honor? I asked with a smirk. I want to remind him of our status quo. Bring it on. I shall be the big brother now. Naruto held the hilt of his sword as he copied my smirk. In the next second, I vanished with lightning flicker and arrived in front of him, but the sword cutting from his back to where I was standing stopped my advance. I stepped back hastily and formed a katan, rasen shield to block the attack. Oh yeah, I trained to improve the Rasengan last month. After rasen drill, I thought of a defensive mode of Rasengan and came up with rasen shield. It was super hard. After all, Rasengan has to, whelp spin. The shield that was constantly spinning was quite hard to maintain. But I succeeded. Now, in my hand was an ever-spinning round shield with the fire element. When the sword clashed with it, it exploded outward and pushed Naruto back. 
new version. He asked with stars in his eyes. Cool. You have to teach me. Sure, sure. Now let's get this over with. I started to dash at his location. With the perfect chakra control, came many advantages. Now that I could control my chakra in a most perfect way, I could use it to do more than just stick around. For example, sliding on the ground by covering my feet with chakra and turning it into slippery. It took some time to get used to, but it increased my speed at least twice. In no time at all, I was in front of Naruto. I raised my hand and folded the seals required for Chidori. Kakashi finally taught me the jutsu after I taught him Raitan, Ross and Drill. Mine was A+, plus, his was only A rank. I wanted Naruto to use the wind jutsu he had learned. That is why I used Chidori. He didn't disappoint me. The next second, the wind started to gather beneath his feet and he vanished in front of my eyes. Wind flicker. His speed was almost faster than my lightning flicker. After all, his body was stronger than mine, and he could easily increase his speed of flicker. I answered with my lightning flicker and dodged the incoming sword. He sheathed his sword back and folded hand seals. The wind started to gather on his body and started to revolve around him as if he was the eye of the storm. A regal air about him looked intimidating. Be careful Ko, I am too fast in this mode, and can't even control to the fullest. He smirked. Bring it on. I shouted as lightning started to cover my body. It was the first time I used this in public because I sensed what Naruto was doing. He vanished the next second and on his open palm was swirling white chakra. Futon, Raisin He shouted. Katan, Raisin I shouted too, as the lightning around my body disappeared. Two Raisin clashed and exploded. I was sent flying and Naruto wasn't any better. Only after a few minutes, the cloud of dust settled and we both appeared once again. Tsunade, Kakashi, and Hinata all had dumbfounded expressions on their faces, while Naruto and I were laughing madly. You have grown, Naruto, I commented. Still you are the big brother though. You held back a great deal. He sighed. So, wind cloak and lightning cloak, Tsunade commented with a squint. I see how Naruto learned it, but Kaushin, where did you learn that jutsu? I came up with it myself. I honestly answered. After I mixed Raisin with lightning and learned lightning flicker, I thought I could enchant my reaction time by stimulating my nerves. You know I am a medical shinobi too. It is too dangerous. She shouted. It is, but I had trust in my abilities. Although I can't use it for a long duration, small spikes are much appreciated. I shrugged. How about yours, Naruto? She asked. Mostly using wind element to increase speed. Reaction time is still something I should train on my own. Naruto explained. Good, both are high level techniques and not to be trifled with. If you can't follow your speed, you can die before realizing it. So before I let you, you are not allowed to use it in combat. You can train them and after you think you are proficient, you can come to show me. She ordered. Yes, Hokage-sama. Yes, Grandma Tsunade. Naruto and I stood beside the rest of the contesters and looked at the stage. There were thousands of people watching this event and the blonde energy ball was getting excited. Ko, all these people will watch me beat all of your asses. How many times I have to beat you to put sense in your thick skull? I sighed. One more time. He smiled and I copied. You should stand straight and orderly. People sitting there will decide your destiny today, cough cough. So do your best. The proctor Heiate said while showing the VIP area. How the hell is Heiate here, you may ask. Well, I always hated when he was forgotten in the fanfics. I mean, why has no one ever cared about this poor man? I especially like this guy. One of the reasons why I was so heavy-handed against Sound 3 was because of this. I thought maybe if I removed them, it would change things a little bit, but to no one's surprise, Heiate still went after Kabuto and saw him meeting with Suna Jounin, Baki. Lucky for him, I knew the place where they would meet and prepared something to save him. When they met, Heiate was about to approach them to listen in on their conversation, unlucky for him, this time they realized there was something wrong with the place and moved away right away. 
So despite Hayate seeing Kabuto with Baki, they couldn't put any blame on them, as in this version, Kabuto never clashed with Kakashi over Sasuke's life, nor came after me. After all, despite giving me the cursed seal, Orochimaru didn't want my body at all. The only suspicion on Kabuto was his odd behavior. But I was glad about what I had done. Hey 8 was alive and kicking and banging the hot ANBU. The man deserves respect for banging that chick, so I had to save him. Don't judge me. Thank you for the reminder, hi 8 san I smiled at the man and he returned it on his own. As we were looking around goofily, Kazakage blessed the arena with his presence. At this point, I have no idea who is under that veil of his. After all, Orochimaru doesn't have enmity towards me and doesn't show on my map. On a side note, Kabuto does. I must have pissed him badly. Anyways, I am not sure if Raza or Orochimaru sat near Tsunade at this time. After exchanging whatever they talked about, Tsunade raised from her seat and walked forward to give the speech. Thank you for gracing us by coming. She started. It has been some time since the exams were in Kanoha, and it is my first ever since I took the hat. The audience went mad as they cheered for her. We shall now begin the final round of the exams for the ten who made it through the preliminaries. Please enjoy it until the end. After another round of claps and cheers, it was time for us. Hey 8 turned to us and informed, the rules are the same as the preliminaries. Until one side admits defeat or dies, the matches will continue. I can stop the match if I decide the winner beforehand. Cough cough. Is that clear? So, the first match is Uzumaki Naruto and Sai. Step forward. The rest of you lot can go to the waiting area. Good luck, Sai. I waved my hand. Huh? Shouldn't you wish Naruto good luck? He asked, dumbfounded. The rest of the genin also turned to look at me. Oh, he doesn't need luck. As it is, he will kick the shit out of you. I smirked. Naruto copied my smirk and gave me a thumbs up. We will meet in the finals. Sure we do. No one else can beat you now. Pumpkin-chan, let's go. I held Eno's hand and walked towards the walls. Ko, the stairs are that way. She pointed out. Too bothersome. Let's climb the walls. We are ninjas for fuck's sake. I whined. She smiled cutely as she climbed with me. The audience cheered loudly. Ha, huh, how did you get up here? Shikamaru asked when he arrived. Hee hee, lazy ass. For a genius Nara, you sure are slow. I smirked. Fuck. How did I not think of that? He lamented. Because I am smarter than you. I chuckled. Whatever. He lazily shrugged. Pumpkin Chan, are you ready for your battle? I asked as I put my arm around her waist. More than ready, Muffin Chan. She answered with a smile. You disgusting couple. This exam is serious. Stop doing this. Tamari barked from the side. Her face was flushed. Don't be envious, girl. Go and make out with Shikamu. I said cheekily. What? She cried out scandalously. Why me, you idiot? Don't drag me into this. Shikamaru lazily commented. It's not like there is anyone else in here, I said as I looked around. Those two are her brothers, so no no. Shin is gay, and Niji. I am not sure. I am not gay. Both Shin and Niji exclaimed at the same time. Look, I am not God. I don't care if you are homosexual or not. You can go and fuck each other. I seriously added. As long as the other side has given their consent. I like women. Niji lashed out. You love men, though, I added. He looked really pissed. Fine, fine. It was a joke. When you battle with Shin, don't wrestle though, alright. Fuck you, Niji shouted. Dude, you just said you were not. What is going on up there? Sai asked as he looked above. Ko must have pissed off everyone. Naruto sighed. What now? Asked Sai. Now, round one starts. Hey 8 shouted. Sorry, Sai. I need to show my abilities to get the promotion. 
Naruto grinned as he created five shadow clones. Five stood around him in pentagram formation, as he stood in the center. Next second, all five clones folded hand seals and shouted at the same time. Futon, quick feet. It was a discount version of Chakra Cloak, only increased speed a little. Without waiting for Sai to respond, five clones started to dash at Sai. The first to arrive punched him on the chin to send him flying to complete the rest of the combo, but with the punch, Sai turned into ink and dissolved. Naruto looked at the ground as he folded hand seals. As soon as Sai left the ground, Naruto started to blow wind from his mouth. Futon, wind cutter. Wind gathered like a great scythe and moved toward Sai. The latter released a scroll from his pocket and from within, an eagle dashed out. Sai jumped on it and flew into the air. While airborne, he delivered more paintings. Animals of all sizes left the scroll and flew towards the blonde, but Naruto and his clones already finished their next jutsu. Futon, Great Breakthrough The giant attack delivered six times toppled down all the drawings and destroyed the bird Sai was standing on top of. Sai was free-falling from the sky, but he wasn't without a solution. He drew out another scroll to summon another eagle, but sadly, Naruto wouldn't let him. One of the clones grabbed him and sent him flying towards the falling Sai. When Naruto was flying, he created a clone and used it as a stepping stone. With it, his momentum increased and he reached Sai. He kicked him on the chin and broke his jutsu. While falling, the other four clones jumped to kick Sai to both slow his descent and to knock him out. While one of the clones jumped to break Naruto's fall. Original Naruto used the clone to slow down and landed on his two feet. Is that really Naruto? Shikamaru asked in shock. You better believe it, lazy ass. While you were lazing around, we were all getting stronger. I commented. Didn't hold my punch at all. He had to realize his flaws. Why you? He looked irritated but I ignored him. Following battles weren't as exciting. Kankuro, I guess thought Ino would be an easy opponent and didn't forfeit at the start. But after battling for a while, and getting a punch of his own on his face, instead of using the puppet, he withdrew from the battle. Niji vs Shin was, heated. Niji was different from the anime and still a genius. With a different attitude towards the main branch, and more open uncle, his battle techniques soared swiftly. In the anime, he learned revolving heaven on his own but this time, he was able to learn it with the help of his uncle. That saved him lots of time. In that time, he learned more advanced Hyuga techniques. Shin, on the other hand, has great aptitude in sword arts. His strikes were swift and decisive. But unfortunately, Hyuga are bane of Taijutsu techniques. Despite his power in sword, Shin lost the battle. But he struggled against the rookie of the past year. And was able to display most of his abilities. His chances of promotion were not low. The next match is, Kaushin of Kanoha. Hei shouted and waited for the audience to cheer. And Gara of Suna. Please come to the stage. I walked towards the wall and jumped down without any hesitation. The opening of the waiting area was at least 20 meters tall, so the audience went mad when they saw me jumping off. Just as I was about to fall, a ball of fire appeared beneath my two feet and exploded onto the ground. With the force of the explosion, I somersaulted and landed on my two feet with grace. Needless to say, the crowd went ballistic. Only after a few minutes Gara arrived from regular steps and was greeted with boos and jeers. Start. Hey 8 gave the signal as Gara looked at me with bloodlust in his eyes while I smirked playfully. I will penetrate your ass. Wait, that sounded wrong. 